block your ass, bitch. Steve Shaz will block you. Steve Shaz will block you. Does he even have control of his Twitter account? Come on, guys. You know his wife. He doesn't have control of anything. His wife controls him. Online harassment. Her it's hand is up his ass right now. Minimized. Okay. A survey by the Pew Research Center released last year found that 73% of internet users have witnessed someone being harassed online. And 40% have experienced it. it themselves. And yet, so often, online harassment is reduced to an unavoidable but insignificant aspect of life on the internet. Uh, yeah, that's an app description. Yeah. Why would it be huh. characterized that way? Oh yeah, because it is. Who gives a shit what some moron on the internet says? I got. I'll, I can fucking open up a fucking any inbox I have right now and find people. Fuck you, bitch! You most worthless pile. It should die. I don't care. Who gives a shit? What's the matter? It doesn't. Get on with your fucking life. Let's eat some Belgian fr frights. Frights. Eat some frights. 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 Ooh, frights. Yeah, they're frights, bitch. <laughs> what you gonna do about it, Belgium? What you gonna do when frights come for you? Something <laughs> that doesn't warrant a serious response and is just best ignored. What people who hold this view don't realize or willfully deny is that the damage done by online harassment is not limited to temporarily wounded egos or hurt feelings. It should be. It causes real harm. Real fucking harm. The amount of emotional damage caused by online harassment varies okay. depending on the person experiencing it. And what sort of harassment it is. If it's just someone but, saying, I, you know, you're a shithead. But the beautiful thing about the internet is, like, unlike real life, like, let's say you have a real life bully, you know, that, at your job or, uh, you know, at your school. You really can't avoid them. On the internet, you can just go, man, these people really hate me. Unplug from this. Block. I mean, yeah, there, I've had people that have harassed me, and it's like, I'm just like, oh, okay, well, fuck off, bye. You know, I, I usually don't even engage them. I just block them. It's like, cause what am I going to do? I'm going to be like, no, please actually like me. It's like, they don't like me. And the they crazy thing me. is, Steve Shives obviously knows about this blocking technology since he's one of the most liberal users of it. Yeah. I mean, if people are bothering him, it's just... Fucking don't don't fucking associate with them Here's, in any way. Don't engage them. No, really. Like if 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 you're so fucking delicate and sensitive that you can't handle the least little negative pushback against you, which really only happens when you offer up your fucking opinion on something. If you think you can just have an opinion on the internet and no one's gonna fucking disagree, you're a moron. And if you can't handle people calling you a moron, then you shouldn't be on the fucking internet. You should be go go to a safe space somewhere, you know. Close your go to a away college campus in your bedroom and watch old movies and eat Cheetos and cry. With Steven Seagal. Steve. Let's watch what Steve Shives is farting out. What is this? This, this intro. This absurd early YouTube <laughs> intro. Puke. Oh god. Oh, there it is, the ball and chain. Get the, the brain fuck out of here. David Bowie died. Oh god. And just a few days after that, Shit balls. Alan Rickman died. And okay. both of these deaths uh, yep. struck quite a blow for quite a few people. Okay. Because they you know were what you do, Steve? So Steve, pause the video. Such pause it. You know what you should do, Steve? Do your next video in front of your background on your on your on your on your uh, your PC, but change it to the pillars of eternity. People will associate you with science. <laughs> he is very scientific. Okay, honey. I just find it very sad that there's a lot of people uh, marginalized and oppressed people suffering. And of course, uh, he wants to highlight two. Uh, white males deaths, which is just, just disgusting. Some privileged white males died. You know, oh, who really fucking cares when there's so much yeah, else going he, on in the world? He might actually be going there with this, Scotty. I hope he is. <laughs> That's, that might actually be the direction he takes it. He is that bad. Let's take a look. Uh, well-respected and, and well-remembered bodies of uh -huh. work. Right, yep. But one thing I noticed in the aftermath of Bowie's death mm -hmm. was in addition to the the fond remembrances and the celebrations of him and his music there were also quite a few people who were raising a note of protest and were saying oh. uh, let's not celebrate David Bowie too much or, or let's not pretend that he was a perfect person because let's not forget that he was a rapist and what they're referring to is uh, an incident in the 1970s where at least one time. It was the 70s, dude. 
Come on. I wanted to say the same thing, but I held it back because I thought, nah, people won't buy that. But yeah. It was the 70s, man. Yeah, it was a long shit time ago. Shit happened in and the 70s. And you know what? A lot of crazy shit. My parents were like teenagers and, and 20s in the 70s. And like, they have stories of shit. Yeah, man. It doesn't the 70s was crazy fucking times. You don't even know what the 70s were like, Steve Jives. It doesn't. Rape was just like shaking hands yeah. back then. Every once in a while in the 70s, you rape somebody. It was just done. All right? Yeah, that's just the way you got your wings as a as a young man in, in high school in the seventies. It's true. Just grab that a girl we know and rape her. Of, that we have reason to doesn't have to be a girl. To oh, believe um, well, that's true. Uh, David Bowie had sex with a fifteen year old girl. The age okay. of consent in California where this took place at the time that it took place, and I think even today, mm -hmm. uh, was eighteen mm -hmm. and the girl was fifteen. Okay. Um and then also in the late eighties there there was a rape allegation made. So, I mean, no, no, none of these people, when David Bowie was alive and famous and shit, were really bringing this up too much. Yeah. But now he's dead, so it's like, don't celebrate him too soon, because back in the 70s, he's a he, rapist. He, he, well, he's a rapist and he's evil. You remember that dark turn uh, that, that Bowie's career took when he served 25 years in prison for statutory rape? You remember that? No. No, no, neither do I, because it never happened, yeah. because he was never convicted of rape. There was an accusation made. There was an accusation made. Maybe it was true. The person, the person clearly went on with their life and lived long enough to make an accusation against him. It's in the past. Why fucking, why, why does that diminish? Like if I were to make an accusation against Steve Shives, like Steve Shives, I think your wife is running your YouTube channel. Does that make it so? Actually, maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> oh no, that, that is that a solid case, theory. Yeah, you know, against David. Bowie I don't know. That, it's that, not. It's not that she runs his YouTube channel. It's just that she runs his life and by proxy his YouTube. <laughs> well, channel. yeah. So never went to court. He was not indicted, and and he denied it uh, vociferously. But nonetheless, this is something else in his background that people who are uh, victims' rights advocates, people who are advocates for. Uh, rape awareness, rape prevention. Well, people do they have any evidence that, rape. Okay. He, that he people did who it are, then? People who concern themselves with baseless accusations <laughs> <Yeah>. from the <laughs> 70s. <laughs> you know, people people of real repute. <laughs> All right, I was going to say it, but you beat me too. Yeah. Sorry. More seriously uh, and not let people off the hook who are rapists or possible rapists. Uh, they, they had if issues. If you're a possible with, rapist. You know, so we should, should we let you off the hook? I mean, you, uh, anything right. a possible rapist. Well, just to prove any that, person is a possible if, rapist. If you're a girl out there, uh, make just claim Steve Shives raped you, because apparently any accusation is true. So you're, yep. you can't possibly lie about it. So how well, can he possibly object? Guilty you until proven <laughs> innocent. Any girl out there, so just admit Steve Shives raped you. You probably just repressed the memory. It probably happened. Yeah. Look at him. He did it. I mean, just look. Guilty. That's, that's the face of a rapist. Guilty. At least a possible rapist. A Come possible on. Possible rapist. Yeah. That guy could possibly have raped. He's a potential at some rapist one point. for sure. Potential, definitely. But anything with a penis is a potential. Well, rapist. yes, of course. He's de definitely potentially a rapist. Yeah. He's horrible. We we shouldn't listen to a word this potential monster says. Yeah. People, you know, celebrating David Bowie when a a widely admired, beloved person dies. But this person has some skeletons in their closet, or has a less than perfect past, or uh, has things that they did that they shouldn't have done. So pretty much any fucking just... human. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so if you were like a human being <laughs> who you know made mistakes and stuff, you know, like everybody on Earth does, then you know we gotta we gotta look at you from this perspective of I'm a fuck. What is this? <sighs> Troubling. About this guy, them. man. Uh, we have this struggle of how do we deal with that? How do we reconcile the parts of them that we admire with the parts of them that we cannot admire? Ugh. And that's what I want to. Like, is this, is this really like a big challenge in your life? Like, how do I reconcile the parts I admire with the parts <laughs> I don't? Like, the same way you would do with anybody. I mean, do you like every aspect of every person you fucking know? God. I mean, How, like, what, a, what a boring, homogenized world we would live in if people like Steve Shives ran things. Like, like if, if everybody that I like, there are things I dislike about them intensely. Yes. That's what makes them interesting to me, Steve, is the things I don't like about them. 
And all he's talking about here is a baseless fucking accusation. Okay, no, but you exactly. did, David Bowie should have an untarnished, perfect reputation. And it wasn't and like David doesn't. Bowie was flippantly like, yes, I fucked a 15-year-old, so what? <laughs> you know, he was like, he was like, he, to his deathbed, he was like, I didn't do it. She was a crazy fucking fan bitch. You know, it didn't happen, Steve. Probably. And even if it did, who fucking cares, Steve? Why, why should that, why should him fucking a 15-year-old in the 70s as a rock star traveling around with groupies following him around like they did in the 70s? Like, why would I let that diminish his art in my eyes? Even if I dislike that he did it. Amen. Talk about, because I have some thoughts about that struggle. Good. And uh, I have share your some things to share about thoughts. ways in which I have struggled with these sorts of things. <sighs> Not just with David Bowie, but with other people too. Some folks who are dead, some folks who are still alive, and some things that aren't folks at all. Um, <laughs> So I have some thoughts to share on that. Uh, it's not really in the form of advice, but I couldn't resist framing this video in the form of one of those uh, pamphlets that you might pick up in the doctor's office, especially if you happen to be in a Simpsons episode. And I mean, I'm, I'm, it's hard to believe, like, because I watched Steve Shive's videos back when, you know, he was actually making good videos, like, occasionally. I wasn't a, a huge Before fan. he was neutered, basically, is what you're saying. And, like, what the fuck happened? I mean, it's not even just, like, his opinions have changed. Like, everything about him is, like, castrated and diminished yes. as a human being. Like, the life... And the energy and the passion think, and the fire in his gut. I think his like wife might have him like totally a, extinguished, gone. Dude, he, he's obliterated. on estrogen. He's on estrogen right now. He's this middle mandated by his feminist master. Fence humping, milk toast, like yeah, like you said, castrated shell of his former self. It's hideous. Like some succubus who I shall rename nameless has descended upon his life and just sank its fangs into him and like <laughs> sucked out everything of meaning and beauty and left behind this flaccid Yeah, like an empty bitch fucking man. homunculus of a fucking <laughs> being. <laughs> oh, I it's love that hideous. word. Homunculus. Yeah, dude. Oh, Jesus. He's like a desolate, soulless Steve. fucking void. Steve. Take stock, dude. Look at your old video. Go watch an old Steve video. <coughs> and then watch this video and look at how fucking flaccid and pale you are. What, like you're a doctor or a Simpsons episode. You, the, what? It's, it's just it's dumb. No delivery. The, deli the timing is just nothing. It's like like a Simpsons episode. It's like, Is the okay. angle right? Is my angle right against the pillars of eternity? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Steve. You are facing a, a particular issue or a particular struggle. So for that, for those particular purposes, uh, we're going to call this video, <laughs> So Your Fave is Problematic. Uh, oh my god, we're only getting to the title? Oh Jesus. Rate me with a fuck. This is like an eternity. David Bowie would be the most recent example okay. of this for yep. the reasons uh -huh. I discussed a minute ago. Because Another of baseless accusations be made against John him Lennon. by somebody in the 70s. Yes. Who, like Correct. Bowie, was a beloved musician, was an undeniably significant and uh, just widely praised and celebrated musician. And yet David he Bowie. had these very dark parts of his personality and of his I past. Like he was accused multiple times of domestic abuse. Another example would be David someone like Woody Allen. Okay. I think it was about John, who John has or a John very, Lennon. very okay. troubling, unpleasant history of accusations of of rape and and interest in underage people, child molestation. Once none again, of which has been like definitively proven. Yeah, That's, isn't that the key point? That like, shouldn't that be like it's not yeah. definitively proven? Like, why huh. don't you even talk about it? Like it hasn't been definitively proven, but I'm still gonna try to like you know nail it on. It, well, them, you know? well, in the That's feminist the mind. That's the absurdity of this SJW mindset, yeah. though. That's it in capital. The look on his face one second ago that when he pull when he recoils in horror at the stupidity of what he's saying like baseless though they may be <laughs> You know if we can if we can freeze him right there That would be the perfect Steve Shive screenshot because I'm sure someone will do it. It's fucking horrifying We're not gonna try to go back No, fuck but that. there's a lot of very unpleasant 
uh, accusations and rumors surrounding rumors. What? It can make it very God, difficult. God, how, how can you defend this shit? You're defending rumors and baseless accusations. Yeah, like, didn't you used to be an atheist? Wasn't your whole thing like I heard a rumor that, evidence? Yeah, no. I, I demand evidence of things. I before I believe something, I want to see some proof. TJ, and I was like, no, nah, these accusations, unproven they may be, do tarnish these men's. Yeah, I heard a rumor from because uh, you know. TJ, I heard a rumor from this guy, uh, Brett Keen, that you just kept all the not productive <laughs> money. You know, I heard a rumor, so you know. Well, you remember your reputation is fucked, dude. As a guy that built a channel around uh, atheism, you spent a lot of time talking about the merits of rumor. And innuendo. I did. I was like, you know, the best form of evidence really is rumors. I find that to be true. I heard that's the whole reason I'm an atheist, honestly, guys. Like, I was I was walking through high school. I overheard someone saying, "There's no God." I'm like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's the rumor going around." And I'm like, "Holy shit!" And I became an atheist from that moment, dedicatedly, because you know, basing basing your beliefs on just rumors that have happened and you know accusations thrown around by people with agendas, that that's like the solid basis for reasoning. Right. You, you're smart, Steve. You're real fucking smart, buddy. This video is evil. <laughs> um, you know, it's amazing. Like th you're like a case study at this in the, at this point in the banality of evil, Steve. Because you're both incredibly boring, and what you're saying is, like, reprehensible. I mean, you're saying really reprehensible things, but in such a boring, uh, Paul's word was milk toast way. Milk toast, yeah. That it, 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 it's, like, scary. It's, it's frightening that you, ha that you have this, like, capacity to say evil things while simultaneously being as d dull as, like, paint drying. Why is rumor and innuendo problematic to you, Steve? Think about that. Because I'm with TJ. Like, you used to make... I used to watch you back in the day. You used to make reasonable... I, know, I was never a big fan, but you made reasonable videos. Like, think about it. Why would a rumor about, some, about something that probably didn't happen between David Bowie and a 15-year-old in the 70s diminish him in your eyes? Why would you need to make a video? Why would you want to make a video? Directed at people who have a problem with that. Rumor. Base rumor. You've said it. We're not putting those words in your mouth. You've said them. There are rumors. And, you know, they may be, you know, baseless accusations, though they may be. Listen to yourself, man. You guys want to watch? Man, I know I already did a video about please, this. Dude, but, you, uh, you, you know what about this guy, though, Paul? This is like a clear example of ideology over evidence. It's like, oh, my ideology says this, so I have to go with this. Fuck evidence. So he's just, I mean, he's religious at this point. Yeah. In a sense, I would say, yeah. Um, do you guys want to watch the... We'll take a leak real quick. I'll be right back. Do it. Hey, here are five oh, stupid things guy. I've noticed about Islamophobia. It's poorly named. I'm referring to the subject of this video as Islamophobia because that has become the most commonly used term for the unjustified and irrational fear, hatred, and or vilification of Muslims. It's also been used to describe the double standards we often use when thinking or talking about Muslims and Islam. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not pouncing on anything yet. I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. Better term might be anti-Muslim bigotry, and in fact, that is the preferred term of many folks, um, Muslim. And well, that's kind of a longer, more ungainly term. I mean, we already, we already kind of have a precedent for doing this yeah, phobia thing. Super descriptive. I mean, we already use homophobic and transphobic and other things, so Islamophobic is fine. You could be Christianophobic or atheistphobic, I guess. I don't know. Um, those aren't like popular terms. I mean, like I think that some of the fear of Islam is justified. <laughs> I don't think that uh, you know. No, it's totally irrational. It makes no sense. I don't think it should be considered bigotry to notice that these people, like people who belong to this religion, have a lot of really extreme beliefs and are very comfortable with violence on a large scale. Um, not all of them, of course, but just like a big solid chunk. So You're racist, TJ. Yeah, that's gross. That's racist. It should be called anti-Muslim bigotry. Yeah, even though that makes no sense, but yeah, that's fine. And I'm sure that anybody who says anything <coughs> about Islam uh, whatsoever... Yeah, the, the real problem in the world is not the, uh, the crazy Muslim extremists. It's really the people that are speaking up or saying anything about it. They're actually the problem. Yeah, man. Anyone who yeah. actually talks about that is the real villain. 
You Steve know. Shimes is looking real haggard lately. Have you noticed? Like, look at this guy. It's because he lives with a fucking evil that. succubus that, like, drains him of his, like, vitality on a daily basis. Have you seen, like, what she does to him? Like, he's talking like, about, <coughs> she's sitting there talking about, like, your book collection is very problematic. It's like, Jesus Christ, you've shacked up with, like, some Orwellian demon that wants to control your very existence. Like, look at the way his lips blend into his face. Isn't that like a sign of fucking dehydration when your lips aren't colored? Like, is she denying him water until he makes this video? The only liquid you get is what you take from my vagina. Non-Muslim alike, but no matter what you call it, prejudice against Muslims and their religion. He also looks really gaunt. <coughs> yeah, he does. Like, does he have cancer or something? Maybe we shouldn't be talking about him. I don't know, it just looks like he hasn't slept in a week. and very, very real. He's so troubled by Islamophobia, dude. I'm sorry, anti-Muslim bigotry. He can't sleep. And that last bit is an important one to remind people of when discussing Islamophobia, because its existence is frequently denied. Uh -huh. Islamophobia is easy to see and unfortunately quite... I mean, I don't see how you could deny it. I mean, there's definitely people out there who are yeah, fucking sure. anti-Muslim to, like, crazy extreme, like, fucking kill all the Muslims. Like, that's definitely Islamophobic. <laughs> I mean, I don't see how you could deny it. I wouldn't really say it's a common point of view, though. No, I mean, it's not that common. I mean, de there's definitely... It's a, not some, unheard of. There's definitely those people that go around like, we should just nuke the whole Middle East, put a stop to all that shit. <laughs> Paul, unless you're drinking more. You, back, when you were down here, I couldn't even get you to drink. Now you're just like, glug, glug, glug. is it because you can't find no green? Yeah, man, I can't get no green here, man. I'm, I'm gonna, I have, I have a few lines, but it's just, it's taken me, it's taken me a while to find a guy. I'm about to stand on a corner somewhere with like, like a sign that says, do you know a guy or something? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what else to do. <coughs> do you know a guy? I don't know. You might get the, you might be sending the wrong message there. <laughs> commonplace in our culture. It exists across a wide spectrum from violent hate crimes committed against Muslims to the ways in which many of us think and talk about Muslims and their religion. And yet there are still those who insist with apparent conviction, despite all evidence to the contrary, that Islamophobia doesn't exist. That it's an invented term referring to a non-existent problem. That's really funny Some because you guys deny that there's, there actually is any problem with Islam. You always claim, oh, those are people that have perverted the religion. They're not really true Muslims. So there's no problem with Islam at all. Or it's like very, like very church, like, oh, well, there, there's some, you know, conservative beliefs, you know, and stuff like that. But it's no big deal because we just have to understand they're a different culture. Yeah, I mean, like, if you, if, if Steve Shives made the kind of videos he made against Christianity towards Islam, he would be Islamophobic under his very own fucking definition. And that's the truly ironic and sad thing. These folks resort to pedantic deconstructions of the term itself, insisting that Islamophobia means fear of Islam. But I just think Islam is false. I'm not afraid of it. Others rely on... Well, so you're literally saying that people who just think Islam is false, but aren't afraid of it, are you're saying that they are Islamophobic? Yes. So you think Islam is true? Are you a Muslim now? I'm kind of confused. You think Islam is false, right? The already trite excuse of Islam isn't a race. Right, of course. It's, it's not. It's not. It's a religion. So, yeah, once again, are, 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 are you talking about Muslims? The adherents of Islam? Is, we have, is that what you're going for, sir? We have a bunch of black Muslims here. And not, not the Nation of Islam, but like... Somalis. Somalis, yeah. yeah. I wish we had some Nation of Islam, man. Oh, uh, well, if, if you go up north, we, because the, uh, the Nation of Islam started in Detroit, so there's like a lot of them like up in Michigan. Yeah, me and Louis Farrakhan are uh, pen pals, so... Because... Oh, that'd be hilarious. Stereotyping and mistreating people on the basis Get of their religion is perfectly fine. Isn't that how that works? But by far the most common form of Islamophobia denial is this next one. It's disguised as legitimate criticism. Ah! I have oh, it's disguised as legitimate criticism. Ha 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 ha. It's not itself legitimate criticism, it's just hatred. It looks like legitimate criticism, and when you put it up to scrutiny, it, you know, it seems as if it's legitimate criticism based on logical deduction and stuff, but... We all know it's really, you know, not according bigotry to, and yeah, stuff. Not according to these SJWs, it's really just a hate, it's, it's hate speech, it's an attack. 
And just real quick, earlier on he said that we, we, some people treat Islamophobia like it's a made-up term. It is. Here, according to this, this uh, according to Wikipedia, it entered common English usage in 1997. So somebody made it up. Steve? Yeah, maybe someone made up every term at some point. Uh, I guess so. I have nothing against Muslim people. Like Shakespeare invented like 800 words or some shit. Well, I am criticizing Islam, the religion, and its ideas. I have to be able to criticize bad ideas, don't I? Yeah. This is the mantra of many Islamophobes, or perhaps I should call them anti-Muslim bigots. <laughs> wow. Anybody that critiques Islam or has a problem with the tenets of Islam is an Islamophobe. That's the way it is. Yes. And if, they, if, they're, if, they're, if you're cri criticizing anything about the Muslim faith, you're just couching your, uh, your criticism. You're, you're using your criticism as a front for your deeply held bigotry <coughs> and Islamophobe. Okay. So he here's, like, here's like the part I don't get. So Steve Shives is not a Muslim. He is an atheist. He does not believe in Islam. So... How, how is it that you don't believe in an ideology yet have no criticisms of it? That doesn't make sense. There's a reason you're not he part of it. respects their beliefs. I mean, even if you respect the beliefs, you still have to have some criticism. Otherwise, you would, if you were just like, wow, this philosophy is flawless. Of course you would embrace it, it, it at that point. You know, it's flawless. It's just he has a different philosophy. That's all it is. Both philosophies are probably right. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> he's, he's making a self-defeating fucking argument here. And the thing well, is... There is Even such his, a thing. His philosophy is is that the the god of Islam doesn't fucking exist. Is that Islamophobic, Steve? It is. It is. For you Steve to assert Shives that you don't is believe. Islamophobic. Steve. Any, it, any of the three people of left? Any of the three people left that haven't been blocked by Steve Shives? Let him know that he's Islamophobic. Billions of Muslims all over the world, Steve, believe deeply, spiritually, fundamentally in their hearts that Allah created the earth and you don't believe that steve how dare you like erase the experiences of billions of hard-working muslims you islamophobic bigoted piece of shit you're an anti-muslim bigot steve shives as legitimate no wonder you can't sleep at night criticism of islam of course there is like every other religion ever invented by humans, Islam is fair game. Its arguments can be countered, its claims can uh -huh. be refuted, and... But anyone who actually does that, you call an Islamophobe, so... Yeah. And cultures it has influenced can be rebuked for their excesses and abuses. The hmm. insidious thing about Islamophobia is that many of those who practice it will insist that they are actually engaging in legitimate criticism of Islam. And who's the arbiter of what? Who's the arbiter, Steve, of what Steve criticism is, is legitimate? Steve is, of course. The SJWs. Steve, well, actually, no. Steve isn't. Steve's wife Steve's is. girlfriend is, yeah. yeah. His wife? Girlfriend? What is she? Whatever. Whatever she know. is. His, his, the she-demon that he allows to siphon his overseer, away his you vitality mean? and energy. I would say she, she qualifies she as the final overseer. authority. Oh, uh, honey, is this criticism of Islam okay? No. That is anti-Muslim bigotry. Burn it and never speak of it again. Sometimes that pretense can be very convincing. Islamophobia isn't always practiced by angry, blatant, foaming-at-the-mouth bigots. Those are easy to spot. But in addition to them, it's practiced by people who ought to know better. Including, I'm sad to say, some of the most prominent public figures of right. the atheist movement. My fellow atheists can be some of the most stubborn of all Islamophobes because they don't see double standards and vilification, they see an extension of their quite rational rejection of religion <coughs> in general. Mm -hmm. Never mind that here in the U.S. at least, Christianity as a whole is not implicated when someone cites their Christian beliefs as justification for some horrible act of uh, violence. Or what? Beliefs. Yeah, it is all the time. What are you talking about, Steve? What? <laughs> Christianity as a whole is never implicated? What are you fucking talking about? Yes, it is. He, he was just talking about the atheist critique of, of, of Islam. Like, atheists don't fucking rally behind... Like, when, when, when some crazy Christian goes and shoots up a fucking abortion clinic, like, atheists aren't like, See? This is fucking Christianity. This is what it leads to. Like, like they don't give the same critique. The problem is, Steve, is that Islam gives us a lot more opportunity to make that criticism than Christianity does. 
there are a lot more Muslims out there blowing people up than there are Christians. Sure the fuck does. Unless, Paul, and, it's offensive that you're observing reality and reporting back what you see. That's a, I find that to be offensive. Paul, we're going to give you a list of approved criticisms of Islam, and then you'll know where the line is. Yeah, I'm waiting, I'm there waiting are not for calls to, to that video alter security exactly measures to, to about protect Islam. us from Christian terrorists. In fact, we hardly ever refer to such people as terrorists. <laughs> Always. Uh, okay, Always. So... Is Every there... time somebody with a with a Christian <laughs> uh, background or a Christian motive shoots up a fucking but they're not school or shoots though. up a yeah yeah every we call them terrorists though we call like I do most I'm sure of the, like most it... of the most of the atheist community that I know isn't isn't shy at all about saying Christian terrorism when, yeah but when it's they not present like, like, it, is Christian terrorism on the same level as Islamic terrorism <laughs> no no not even close it's not even a contest. So, I mean, like, what, what a false fucking dichotomy. It, it's like, you know, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, Christianity has been violent through the ages. We're not talking about the ages. We're talking about now. And, yeah, there's still some fucking, I'm sure there's still some Christian violence going on. And, sure. of course, I, I think that their Bible is full of reprehensible teachings and shit. It pales in comparison. But, like, there's not, like, giant, you know, evil, like, Christian organizations beheading people and shit right now, or doing car bombings or suicide bombings and shit. Like, that just doesn't happen, at least not as much. At least not as much. Right. It's understood, even by those of us who hold it to be false, that Christianity is a religion of great ideological and theological diversity, and it would be unfair to judge the whole by its angriest and most regressive members. Yet all too often we fail to treat Islam and Muslims the same way. This it's funny to hear Steve Shives use the word regressive because I've heard him <coughs> be called a regressive many times. Why, who, ben? <laughs> Who's calling Steve Shives a regressive, Ben? Who do you think? Hmm. If this is he already shall not be named. <coughs> Well, it's stupid to even say this because no one is sitting there saying every single Muslim is bad. I mean, maybe so, maybe a small minority of people, but most rational people are sitting there going, yeah, it's obviously there are some Muslims that don't want to do that. That's pretty obvious. They just want to live normal lives, and there's other ones that, for in large numbers for some reason, don't want to. I mean, there, you, there's a lot of reasons why, but that's definitely happening. I mean, look, it, 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 there's no exact estimate, but it's like probably at least... 10 to 25 percent of Muslims are Islamists, which I've looked up the <laughs> meaning of that word recently. It is a real word. Islamism. Islamism. Yeah. It's a fun word to say. It is a fun word. Islamism. 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 Yeah. Islamism. Islamism. But what it means is that basically you want to, you're not only a Muslim, but you want uh, Islam imposed on the entire world. Anywhere you go, you know, you spread Islam. That's sure. the objective. A, 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 a giant Muslim is caliphate that, and shit. I mean, would you say that's a new term like within the last... It's probably a newer decades. term. Yeah, it's probably a newer term. It's it's a political term. It's right. not a, a term of the faith or anything. Right. Um, but yeah, that's basically and, and, what it means. And and hear, it, that's, that represents like being... 20 fucking percent well, or you, so. You don't see me suggesting that we, you know, go vacationing in like, you know, Muslim countries. Yeah, I mean, like, a, you know, if we went to <laughs> Steve know? Shives and be like, hey, Steve, you want to come to us with to fucking Qatar or something, man? You want to go to Saudi Arabia with us? Yeah, we figure, you know, since you don't have no prejudice against Muslims or anything, we're going to take you on a, we're going to pay for you a ticket to Saudi Arabia, Steve. So you go on down there, have yourself fine, do, do, do some sightseeing and shit. Fuck that, just take him to Syria. He wants to go there. Yeah, man. That, that's like, you know. Set them anywhere. Yeah. It'll be an exciting Go to vacation. Iraq. You know, it's safe now. The Bush administration did a good job. Yeah, they fixed everything. Everything's know. good. Yeah. I hear I hear the, the atheist community, if you could call it that, criticizing Christian dominionism all the time, which I think is the Christian counterpart to Islamism. <laughs> yes. Right? I, hear, I hear it all the time. The problem, Steve, is that there aren't a whole lot of Christians beheading fucking journalists and shit and uploading it to Insta Instagram, okay? Like I said before... Islam gives us a whole lot more opportunity to critique its violence than Christendom, Christendom does. Yeah, not only that, but like, that, there, you, don't, there's not, you don't get this knee-jerk liberal reaction every time you fucking criticize Christianity. I mean, they're fine with it, pretty much. You sit there and be like, I fucking shit in Jesus' face. They'll be like, yeah, freedom of speech, good job. But you're like, I shit in Muhammad's face. Like, 
well, you're disrespecting their culture. Oh my God, you're so racist. You're so yeah, Islamic. Yeah, you're an they, bigot. They always run to racism. That's really the first, that's really they always say like, oh, that's white people you're criticizing when you're criticizing, criticizing uh, Christianity. So that's fine. But if you criticize it, 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 that, oh, you're criticizing all these Muslims, all these brown people, you're racist. Whatever. There's a lot of Christian black people that I've known. You know? Yeah, me too. Because I remember that, that was the big thing on... Uh, so, like, with, you know, that's... They're ridiculous. Yeah. Christian, like, Christian ridiculous. black people are Uncle Tom's. That was... Isn't that Dusty? That was Dusty. Yeah, that's yeah. Dusty. Yeah, he did say that. Good old Dusty. <laughs> Doesn't change the fact that there's a lot of them. There are. <laughs> I know, uh, I know some in very interesting black Christians, honestly. Beyond G-Man, even. G-Man. <laughs> Beyond G-Man. I know a guy that's uh, actually like more of a character than G-Man that's like a, a black Christian guy. and uh, Really? Yeah. Wow, get them together. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, he's not, but he, this guy's not like super Christian. He's not always oh. talking about God and stuff. It's like very incidental to him. He wouldn't be able to deal with <laughs> G-Man then. Yeah, he'd be like, he'd probably be sick of G-Man's shit in about two minutes. But maybe not. Sort of thinking is not only biased and inimical, worse yet, what sort of thinking? it serves the aims of extremists. Okay. Get I think you serve the aims of extremists by fucking acting like Islamic extremism is not a big deal, and anyone who tries to point out that it is a big deal is somehow uh, an anti-Muslim bigot. So I think you're the one that's enabling extremists, you fucking owned and bought and paid for fucking piece of shit. You know, you know. At least you're gonna sell out, sell out to a corporation, a big corporation for some fucking money. Don't sell out to some frigid bitch for her ice box of a pussy. You oh. fucking goddamn twerp. <laughs> Jesus, twerp. he's a oh, fucking God. twerp, dude. Look at his face. Right he is now. a twerp. Like an '80s movie villain now. He's a fucking twerp. You're dude. a twerp. You're a fucking. He's a twerp. Look at him. <laughs> he really is. Let's see. Does it? Does it not fit? And he acts like the people that point out the violence inherent in, in uh, extremist Islam are somehow supporting the terrorists. Look at this. Like, like yeah, yeah. us <laughs> pointing out that, that Muslims behead people way more than Christians do. Muslims car bomb people way more than Christians do. Muslims blow up candy shops with bombs strapped to 10-year-old uh, little boys way more than Christians do. We're actually helping the terrorists, by the way, by pointing those facts out. Yeah, they love it. It's just free yeah. PR to them, man. Yep. Right, of Islamist the terrorists like Daesh, the so-called Islamic State, want Muslims to be singled out and alienated in secular societies. They want Islam in general to be defined according to Islamism. their literal fundamentalist interpretation of the Quran and their barbaric, violently oppressive attitudes toward women, LGBTQ folk, and non-Muslims. Okay, that's they not... You know what? Where, where, you know what? I mean, hold on. This is fucking... This, this, you act like it's just fucking, you know, uh, the, the Islamic State that has a problem with lesbians and women and shit. It's not. It's most Muslim countries, you fucktard. Like, where Islam is the establishment. Right. A, a, like, a, a good... So not all those places, but a good solid chunk yes. of those places are none too friendly to gays and women. Sorry. Not at all. Sorry to inject a little dose of reality up your fucking spaghetti noodle thick ass, you fucking there, weird little straw man of a person. There are some countries where, like, the laws are more harsh if you're Muslim. Like, uh, like in Indonesia and shit. Indonesia. Yeah. Well, I, I don't support that either. Yeah. Oh, no. Why would you? That's fucked up. I don't support any fucking bullshit double standard. Yeah, we're going to publicly whip women who are raped for infidelity. Honestly, that's not da that's not Daesh doing that, Steve. That's not fucking IS doing that. Okay. Just following Sharia that's, that's law, fucking, Paul. That, that, that's it's that's their a religion. Muslim nation. There's oh, like Paul, God, it's their it's culture. Hurt. It's part of their religion. You can't criticize in, it. In in places like you know Saudi in in places like Saudi Arabia, like if we somehow went to visit there, there'd be like designated areas where we could drink. But if a Muslim drank, they'd go to jail. You know what, like, I, I made a video, like, a, I made a video a long time ago about people that are always talking about moderate Christians and shit. Where are the moderate Muslims? I'm not saying that there aren't any Muslims criticizing the extremism in their own religion. But where's the groundswell of Muslims talking about how, like, the Islamic State is an awful idea? Where's the uh, million Muslim march, Steve? You know, here's, here's what they're doing. Here's what the moderate Muslims do. The moderate Muslims don't take on the extremist Muslims. They take on... 
us for pointing out the extremist Muslims. That's what they're doing. Yeah. That's how they're occupying their time. Because, of course, the biggest problem is not the people who share a faith with them who are committing acts of violence. The biggest problem is the other people pointing it out. That's so, it, like, just issue. ignore it and maybe it'll go away? Is that what they're saying? Like, what do you... <laughs> what do you think would be more more useful, Steve? Criticizing the people who are pointing out that Islam is growing out of control and fucking starting to behead people and shit and, and blow people up. It's not is starting. It, it, like, it will not starting. It has been for a very long time. Is, is, is it those people that are the problem? Or is it the fucking people within the religion that are, instead of criticizing the people in their religion that are making them look like fucking retards, they're going after the people who are just pointing out the fact that Muslims are beheading people in mass. What, yeah. what do, you, do you think your time would be better spent, Steve, maybe calling out moderate Muslims and saying, hey, why don't we, why don't we stop these people? Why don't we I don't, rise I don't up think, and stop I don't these think people? his master would like that. Convincing us that moderate Muslims are just Muslims who lack commitment. Mm -hmm. That the only truly authentic Muslims are these zealous and brutal it's jihadists. It's the same thing. I mean, it's the same thing there with are Christians, way too. too many. What is? It, just like you said, Westboro Baptist Church is like the only true Christian church. You know, yeah, it's, it's the same thing that. with Muslims. It, you know, they actually well, have to follow the tenets of the Quran. Yeah, the more literally they take their holy books, the more primitive and barbaric they're going to be. The exactly. books are primitive and barbaric. Exactly. As, I mean, especially Islam, because it was like a like a army of barbarians. You know, well, yeah, Islam was written is, for a warlord. It, right. Islam was written by uh, um, a master of war. I mean, and all exclusively editorialized through his perspective. It's not from a bunch of different authors like the Bible. It's not a compilation. I mean, some of these stories are older, and he stole them. So it's compilation oh. in that sense. But come on, Ben. I'm I'm a, I'm a little fucking disappointed in Ben right now. I got to be honest with you, Ben. You just you just uh, called Muslims barbarians. Yeah, oh the ori God. the original ones, all of them definitely were. Wow. The views of Ben do not reflect the views. They of certainly do not. Podcast. I cannot believe you said that. Ben. Turning up, turning my back on Ben now. White privilege, TJ. Oh shit, Paul. Paul was so angry he left. Wow. Fuck. And he's calling back. I guess he forgives us. No, I'm not letting him back in. Fuck that. Fuck him. Barbarian. Fucking Paul. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a barbarian too, you know. Conan. Hold on. I guess the call dropped. It seems like it's having some trouble getting it back. Maybe there's some internet problems. I don't know. No, probably not. Because we don't seem to be losing our stream. Um, yeah, Steve Shives is a fucking joke, dude. Yeah. I don't know if I'd uh, necessarily put him in the crazy people segment, though. I don't know if he's, like, insane. No, I mean... we. <sighs> I Brett, skipped a bunch of videos. Brett Keen why. is crazy, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say Steve Shives is crazy. Steve Shives is just like the ultimate example of being pussy whipped to the point where his opinions no longer even make sense anymore. I don't even know if that's true, but I just know it that his, his, I mean... I'm declaring it to be true. Okay. No, I mean, just like, I mean, look at the evidence. Come on, I mean, it's true. I mean, we've seen how their interactions go. Like, you, you have to realize that living with a person who literally will sit there and criticize how problematic your collection of books and DVDs are. Like, imagine that just bearing down on your psyche all the time. I mean, you already see that he eats out of her hands when they're in videos together. I mean, it seems to me like this major shift in the what his content is happened uh, because of this girl that he's with. And, I mean, like, Sargon of Akkad has even put out a video making the case as strongly as it can be made. Obviously, it is speculative. But I don't know. I feel like that is the truth. He is the ultimate example of a pussy whipped male. I won't go and use the cliche term cucked because that just gets misused now. Cucked is only if he's like literally letting her fuck other guys. And even if he was a cuck, he would be enjoying it. So what the fuck does it matter? Um, but yeah, he is pussy whipped beyond belief. And that's why he sucks. Maybe we just need to get him a cooler chick, man. When you get him a, a girl that actually is reasonable, so he'll parrot all her bullshit instead. There's no redeeming uh, a dude like Steve Shives. They, once you've gone down the rabbit hole of allowing somebody... like, Because how, how does he back off of this? Like, when you've come out and just completely shifted your channel 
towards this really rabid SJW mindset at the same time that your girlfriend enters the picture. How do you step back from that and go, oh yeah, all the shit I've been talking, that wasn't really, like he has to admit that he allowed somebody else to come in and change the content of his channel oh, into something you, he didn't you, want it to be. You overestimate people. All he has to do is gradually switch back and make it seem like, you know, the more I think about it, the more I realize all that shit was wrong. <coughs> Yeah, he's a midlife crisis waiting to happen. I don't. I don't think Steve. I don't think Steve's channel will will uh, will ever be what it was. I don't think it'll ever recover. Even if he does dump the uh, the frigid ice queen that is currently controlling his mind, I don't think that he'll ever be able to get back what he could have had. But yeah, people probably will just accept him. Some people. He does kind of. He just kind of feel like a zombie to me. I just like look at him like, yeah, he's a zombie now. He just he's dead inside, dude. Yeah. People who despise groups like Daesh but who propel their narrative anyway because they don't yeah, seem to realize parrot. that bigotry stated in an intellectual voice is still bigotry. Wow. And unacknowledged <laughs> biases. Why am I being told this by a privileged white male? The hardest part is only picking five. Cis white male. Time. Look, Steve, I think you need to give your channel to a person of color. Hey, folks, hope... All right. Do not become a patron of Steve Shives. <laughs> Become a patron of us instead. You know, um, there's a Wild Bill video where Wild Bill suggests that we end up acting like Americans start being like Charles Bronson from the Death Wish movies to take That's, care of crime. <laughs> yep. Sweet. About fucking time. Vigilante justice. Yep. yep. Fuck due yep. process. Fuck the court system. Everybody just, if you see someone you think's a criminal, shoot them. Gotta do what you gotta do. It's me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, God. Where the, where the fuck does he get this music uh, from? What the fuck? I want to acknowledge the connection that exists Stevie. between the subject Stevie, of this video and the needs? fact that. What does your it need? intro needs a tuba. <laughs> get a, get a, oh. Hope, hope, hope. Oh my God, Steve, run! Dude, I am making this video because the subject of this video is yielding the floor to someone else in a political discussion, let's okay. say, and the importance of being willing to yield the floor to someone else and, and recognizing when the wow. best thing... So wait a minute. Steve Shives... The king of not letting anyone else speak to him is talking about the importance of yielding the okay, floor to others. You know what he's going to say. We need to yield to feminists and SJWs and people like that. That's uh -huh. what he's going to say. Okay. You women can do to further your goals or to further your side of an argument or your side of a discussion is to just not say anything. And to give whatever platform you have or whatever audience you have over okay, to so someone else. Is, she, is he going to give this video over to his, like, fucking bitch wife or something? <laughs> You're such a whip dog, Steve. Sometimes you got to just, like, you know, sometimes okay. you want to accomplish what you want to accomplish. You just got to be silent and let someone else do all the work. Even, even though I think his content is deplorable, like, look, people are subscribed to you. You, you don't just say, okay, a hoorah, now that my channel belongs to a person of color because I feel I need to give them a platform. That doesn't make any sense. Like, they would subscribe to that person if they wanted to watch them. <laughs> Every time we pause Steve Shives, it looks like he's just had the realization of how stupid the previous thing he just said was. <laughs> I know. Like, he like he, he just finished saying, like, if you got something to say, sometimes <laughs> the best thing to do is to give somebody else your platform and let them say what they gotta say. To me, he just has the sad eyes of a whipped dog. <laughs> Look at him, dude. Yes, there is. Look at it. Dog. Look at all those furrows in his fucking brow, man. <laughs> Jesus, you're turning into Emperor Palpatine. You look like, I mean, like, you, she's sucking away your life energy, dude. Look at you. He's fucking, look he, at you. You know what? We're talking about puppets. This guy's a fucking puppet. Who dude. is better equipped to <laughs> speak on this subject. This is a skill that, unfortunately, a lot of people who sort of fall into many of the categories that I fall into, white folks, uh, cis folks, hetero folks, 
men. We have a lot of yeah, well, trouble you're, you're getting our heads around the. Yeah, I, you're self loathing. You're you. Yeah, you don't get anything. You're stupid. Yeah, we get it. The, so that there dumb. are times when it's best for us to not say anything. Right. And oh. it's even better if, in addition to Nonsense. not saying anything, if we can hand our microphone to someone else. The no, inspiration no, no for this video. No art. The problem that I have with Steve Shives' fucking philosophy is not that it's stupid and ignorant. It's that he tries to include me. White, I hate the fucking term, cis, male. We should. No, maybe that's best for you, Steve. Maybe it's time for you to step aside and give your platform to your wife. I think which he is basically has. what you've done anyway. Yeah. Just she's let just her like, take center stage, man. She's Frank Oz. He's Yoda. As for me, though, I'm going to keep saying whatever the fuck I want to say about whatever the fuck I want to say about it. And I'm going to let everybody else do the same. Shut up, Thanks. Paul. Oh. You ain't allowed to talk no more, bitch. It comes from... Uh, Two sources. What there sources? was a video what? that I watched recently uh, by Atheist Atheist, who mm -hmm. I just gave a shout out to in the most recent episode of You Had to Ask. And I, I reiterate that shout out here. I highly recommend Atheist Atheist's YouTube channel. And he put up a video pizza, uh, pizza. last month uh, using the, the infamous Sam Harris Ben Affleck exchange on Real Time with Bill Maher. How do you even use that? Every time we've tried to use anything from real time with Bill Maher, it's been like, flag! Our last year as sort of a jumping off point to talk about the perils of criticizing a community when you yourself are not a member of that community. Or so what if you're not a wow. member of the community? Well, so, you know, you're not allowed to criticize a community. You know, there's perils, though, you know? <laughs> you don't understand the community. Uh, the community probably needs criticism both from within and without. I mean... By that he's standard, about, of course, he's talking about Muslims and Islam. By that standard, I shouldn't criticize anyone because I'm not a part of any fucking community. So any group I criticize, I just don't understand what I'm talking about because I'm not part of the group. Only those who are indoctrinated into a group are allowed to speak about it. Everyone knows that. What? And and certain groups aren't allowed to speak about issues that pertain to other certain groups. This is the fucking problem, dude. I would just rather let people battle their fucking ideas out in the open marketplace. Let a little sunlight in and let the fucking best idea win. Why is that such a bad idea? It's terrible, because then they might lose. It's very problematic, Paul. You, they gotta control the rules of engagement. And under their rules, like, nope, not allowed to criticize me because you don't understand what I think. Or have never been a member of that community. Shut that up. was a really, really savvy video and had a lot of great points in it. I'm sure it was terrible. inspired me to have it. a few thoughts. And then I also was inspired to talk about this subject in this video I think by a recent Steve episode Shives of uh, he was inspired to do something it means his wife told him to do it it makes it, it makes sense oh yeah uh, i was, yeah, inspired. I was really inspired by that video i was inspired to give a shout out to uh atheist atheist probably some <laughs> fucking youtuber his wife likes because he kowtows to the fucking sjw crowd oh my god you made me spit out my fucking water with that shit <laughs> The way you said it, like, atheist, atheist, like, yeah, like, this, I gotta fucking pedal this stupid shit, I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. By the way, I wanted to revisit something uh, that I forgot to talk about. We started a poll mm -hmm. on the last show. The poll has 22 hours left in it. 30% Paul uh, will lose the 30 pounds first. 25% uh, TJ, and then there's 45% that say that neither can lose 30 pounds. That's still Wow, harder. really? Yeah. And, and like most polls, the worst option wins the day. <laughs> yeah. Like, one of us is going to lose 30 pounds, retards. It's going to happen. Yeah, the beards That's are on the I, line here. I was with TJ. Like, the last show, he said we shouldn't even have included the fucking third option. Just which one do you think is going to do it first? Because the third no. option ain't happening. Somebody's losing you, 30 pounds. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because if I put in an option that the assholes of the world can choose, then they won't do what they can to make it a perfect 50-50 like I always fucking see. Oh, well. You know what I mean? I guess, yeah. They, like, rig the poll to make it 50-50 all the time. Those jerk-offs. Yeah, those fucks. Suspicious. Well, don't make don't make the uh, third option attractive to them. Make the third option like I'm a fucking faggot. <laughs> that would probably win, uh, though. 
Yeah, Paul. Yeah, it's got 1,600 votes. That's pretty good. So go to the draw. If you guys want to vote in the poll to stick, say who you think is going to win. No, you know what? I, I honestly think that, that there are people that think that you guys are so fucking lazy. That that you can't lose thirty. I months. mean, their beards are on the line. That that they they think you have like little to no willpower. Yeah. Well, they're right about that. Know, but I got like, enough willpower to lose thirty pounds, man. Ball. Yeah, we're gonna see him again soon. Yeah, oh shit! You, you, you to to think that I have no stake in losing this weight, and that I'm just gonna go like, oh fuck it, let's go get a gallon <laughs> of ice cream and binge watch Orange <laughs> the New Black. It ain't gonna happen. I'm eating chicken breasts, man. Broccoli. Do you guys want to go and do the post show? Yeah, let's do it. In the post show. All right. I can't watch Good night, anymore, you Steve fucking shives. All right, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Join us in the post show. We'll be talking about Tommy Sotomayor. And some Scotty rage, too. Yep, and Good Scotty's going to tell his little rage quit story. Good night. I wasn't a rage quit. You're stupid, TJ. I don't care. Actually, Scotty wasn't here for the last episode, so he doesn't know the change that we've made to this segment. Oh, you've made a change, huh? Yes, we've made a change to this segment. Now, instead of using Wikipedia, we are now using the DP Wiki. And today's random <laughs> article, this, this right. was totally random, I swear. I hit random article once, and this is what came up. Steve Shives suffers from severe pussy whipping, so be nice and be sure to not hurt his feelings or suffer the it's consequences of being blocked on Twitter, though odds are you already are. Here's some quotes from yeah, Steve Shives. Yeah. I don't have to respect your opinion. I don't have to listen to you if I decide that you are not worth listening to. More narrow-minded than a 1600s Puritan, uh, Puritan pastor, more whipped than Kunti, Kunti, Kunta Kinte, able to block hundreds of Twitter users in a single hour. Look... In his echo chamber, it's an atheist, it's a feminist, it's Steve Shives. Steve Shives is a much maligned atheist YouTuber and feminist vlogger slash ranter, essentially an amalgam of Ryan Wiley. And what does well, that have to mean? Be an amalgam of Ryan Wiley and who else? Yeah. He used to be primarily known of his atheist read series in which he utilizes his expertise as an English major to critically examine Christian apologists. Let's see. We'll read the description. This is a long article. We're not going to read the whole thing. Uh, his work really must be applauded for the amount of detail he puts into the extraordinary deconstruction of presuppositional apologetics and his failures of general logic. Now, he's most fa mostly famous for blocking people who don't even fucking know who he was, merely for following people he doesn't like, sealing himself in his echo chamber of righteousness. He admires the work of Anita Sarkeesian, uses terms like Islamophobia, and frequently frequently proves that he left skepticism a long time ago in favor of feminism. Generally, his intellectual reasoning is only directed towards things he sees as immoral and is more than willing to engage in sophistry whenever parroting ideologies in line with his rigid political beliefs. Steve Shives blocks absolutely everybody on Twitter that follows the drunken peasants or the amazing atheist or absolutely any mildly popular anti-feminist. If you are reading this right now, look at his Twitter. He has blocked you even if you don't know who the fuck he is. That is a guarantee. If you somehow miraculously are, don't worry. He up Updates his block bots regularly with bigger and bigger lists. He has even blocked Alpha Omega Sin. Steve is without a doubt the ultimate embodiment of the pussy whipped male with a hat. It is rumored that Steve is bald or balding and quite ashamed of it. He is suspiciously never seen without his hat and in a tone of reminiscent in a tone reminiscent of never of a never nude, I don't know what that is, claims he can never take it off. He graciously accepts any fan complimenting his beard, compensating for something, but quickly blocks and deletes any talk of the secrets he keeps under his hat. If his testicles weren't stolen by his wife to play, pay, pay their annual SJW membership fee, then perhaps he'd have the stones <laughs> or rocks a hats off full Picard. I don't know what that means either. Uh, I don't Picard, get none of this. It's, it's like Picard's hair. Yeah, like he's oh, bald. Okay, I get it. An alternate theory regarding Steve's excessive hat is the use of feminist brain slug. His feminist brain slug lives under his hat and whispers into his ear all the stupid things he disseminates. According to Dark Matter 2525, Steve's popularity in 2013 started and abruptly ended, all because of the shout-out he gave him, which he now gravely regrets. In fact, according to another podcast, Dark Matter had been in mildly friendly terms with Steve to the point of trying to bring him back from the dark side through carefully worded, sugar-coated PMs, walking on an entire stadium full of eggshells on account of Steve's sensitive sensibilities, until finally he posted one critical comment on one of Steve's latest atheists need to stop worrying about stupid things I personally don't care about solely focus on the rights of women and minorities because my wife crossed out I say so 
All tirade. Right. Yeah. I'll refinish this paragraph. Okay. This was met with an almost immediate venomous reply by Steve before immediately blocking his friend on any and all social media. If you want to read the rest of the Steve Shives article, it's over at the DP Wiki. DP Wiki, link in the description. Check it out, guys, <laughs> and you have just been That actually informed. was pretty informative about Steve Shives. Yeah, it was, a good, it was a good summation. Time to learn something. I, I kind of regret, though, that it doesn't mention his music collection. It might. At it, least in it, that paragraph. It, it very well yeah, may go on They're to. very thorough over there at the I, I think that's a very important piece of information for people to understand. You talk about where his, uh, his girlfriend was like, your music collection is problematic. Yeah, and you're sexist because you like Angel more than Buffy. Oh, uh, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> Buffy is better, and anyone who disagrees is a sexist. Fucking sexist. Sexist. Yes. Fucking sexist, DJ. All right, uh, time for another. Here's a video Martin Hughes and Steve Shives talking about atheism and racism, and they talk about TJ in this. Yep. <laughs> right. Martin Hughes. We'll just milk this for all it's worth. Hey, folks, uh, thanks for watching. I am Great joined cards. by the author of. A, of a, actually now two blog articles that have both really made my week. What's up with this garbage <laughs> music? <laughs> Holy da, 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 it's like da, 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 da. it's like the it's like the music in the waiting room of a 1970s dentist yeah, office Steve, or something. You know, <laughs> better production value, better music. I mean, really, come on, dude. It's, it's just no good. Martin Hughes is not his real name. Uh, on the Barrier Breaker blog, I want to welcome Martin Hughes. Martin, how are you, my friend? Pretty good, pretty good. A couple of days ago, you wrote an article for your for your blog on Patheos about uh, the about atheism and racism, specifically about a video that the Amazing Atheist made uh, in response to a BuzzFeed video, and then just. Uh, and no, it wasn't. It's, in it's already wrong. Yeah, it was not in response to a BuzzFeed video. You fucking retard. It was in response to a video from a, a crazy black PhD guy who fucking um, has a YouTube channel, and he made a video called 20 Questions Black People Have for White People That BuzzFeed Didn't Ask. So he was actually drawing a contrast between himself and BuzzFeed. Get some fucking facts, Steve! Come on, get some fucking facts, buddy. So, I mean, that's how little you fucking know right out of the gate. It's impressive. And then you also wrote a follow-up to that after The Amazing Atheist made a response video to your first article. So <coughs> I wanted to have you on and talk about it because... Why is, that, why is it laughable? He said something and he responded. Like, that's laughable. Oh, he responded to you. Okay. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Uh, because, well, because my response is so pitiful and what. Oh, and you're so racist. Yeah, yeah I'm such a racist. And, um, but now I, I want to see... I didn't actually know he responded uh, to me again. Uh, I haven't even seen his response to my video. That's interesting. I am in contact with him. Maybe I should ask him to be on the show. Maybe he'll come on and defend his positions in real time. Um, I don't usually talk about other YouTubers, uh, especially ones that are of the sort that you wrote your article about. Uh, but Demons! You touched on some... He's a demon, what come from the pits yeah. of hell. Yeah, from the depths of the underworld, the unwashed, the unclean, amazing atheist. I'm not typically uh, allowed to associate with people who don't tell my wife's ideological line. So, you know. His mistress, you mean? Very broad His issues. Master in your response to the amazing atheist and mm. i wanted to talk about that i wanted to talk about those broader issues and sort of the the problems that uh people like him and their popularity sort of signify <laughs> in the atheist community people like um, him so what, 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 what do you mean just... steve yeah what are you talking about what does that mean <clears throat> what do you mean people like me are you are you disparaging me because i am a bisexual male you saying that bisexual males are not to be trusted? Is that what's going on here? I'd like you to clarify this statement, you, you if not check issue an apology. Privilege. Check your privilege, Steve. You check your fucking straight privilege, bitch. Yeah, you are at least one thirty-second Indian, probably. So I am. I am, uh, and I have yeah. some Hispanic in there too. Yeah. One of my ancestors so, was named Lorenzo. 
So okay. you're, you're, you're a triple minority. You're a bisexual atheist of color. And these guys have the effrontery to accuse you of, of like, to even, to even speak about you? It's disgusting. It's disgusting and it's bigoted and it's hate speech. And I demand they stop or issue an apology. And be removed from YouTube. Removed from YouTube. Yes. Let's get started with it. When, what was it that, that sort of drove you so there's a BuzzFeed video that said that was 24 questions for white people um, okay. from, from black people. And then he wrote, he, he made his response to a video made by some other black people who were like, you know, here are 20 questions that that BuzzFeed video, you know, didn't ask. So at okay. least this guy um, knows what the fuck he's talking yeah. about, unlike Steve. Yeah, yeah he does. It, I will give him that. He actually knows what he's talking about, unlike Steve Shives, who's sitting there spouting off bullshit like a fucking jackass as usual yeah but what what made me do that what made me respond to it or... yeah because i know in your article you said you almost didn't write the article and then yeah. you wrote the article and it came across so powerfully like what what was it that sort of what what powerfully threw the switch stupid. in your head that made you think okay i've got to say something about this yeah there's there's been a lot of things that i haven't responded to in my blog simply because <sighs> You know, I, I hesitate to, you know, I'm a fairly small blog um, overall. Um, every once in a while I write something that gets a bunch of hits, but usually, you know, it's, you know, pretty small blog. But I didn't want to write something that gave um, a blogger that I disagreed with a lot more publicity, right? Right. Um, there's a whole thing of, okay, this is really racist or this is really sexist, but if I call out this person specifically, I'm going to give them more publicity, and so that's just like feeding into the the reason why. The yeah, man. Thanks for the free publicity. Yeah. No one, no one even knew who I was until the Pathios Amazing Atheist is a Racist article that made me, man. That fucking made me. The Amazing Atheist is <laughs> video kind of um, something I should respond to. Is I looked at it and I was like. Holy crap, there are 470,000 views. I mean, I saw the views before I saw the like bar. And I was like, you know what? He probably just got really downvoted on this. This is like, you know, it didn't really hit me. Wait a minute. Doesn't even make sense. I mean, like, when you're looking at a video, like, all that stuff is immediately, like, apparent in your field of vision. Like, your mind collects that stuff, like, instinctively the second you even open the window. Yeah. You're not sitting there like I was. I was sitting there. I was watching it, and I was thinking, "Well, the people must hate this, obviously." But then I saw the like bar, and I realized, "Oh no, the people like it." Uh, oh. If you've been watching YouTube for longer than a week, as soon as you open a video and you see that big red fucking Sith lightsaber, you go, "Oh, ho, ho, that's like the first thing you see." It's designed that way. I, I guarantee you that I'm almost, I'm almost certain they're going to paint you in some Trump-like picture. Like, look at people like Trump getting out there, and the amazing atheist is going to be lumped into that. Like, you're just another racist getting out there, you know, dr like drumming up views with your racism. I did get a lot of views, but I don't think it was racist. Because I watched, I watched the video out of curiosity. It came on, you know, there's that Pew Research poll that came out recently. Um, and I was looking at some stuff on race on YouTube, and Amazing Atheist videos are rated pretty high. So somehow I clicked on them. I'm, I'm not subscribed to him or anything. Because I was like, oh, that oh, Amazing no. Atheist says something. Wait, no, you're not, Steve. You, to say. Um, you block everyone, you little bitch. And so when I clicked on it, started watching it, I was like, surely people don't agree with this, even though all these people watched it. And then I looked at the like bar, and like 90% of people thought that it was an awesome video. <coughs> And well, they and liked it, and the other ten percent are fucking stupid. Now, whatever. I mean, you know, free to disagree, but you're wrong. <laughs> Half a million people had watched it, and most of those were probably atheists, knowing you know the amazing atheist demographic. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, somebody needs to like address this racism in this video specifically, like, um, and my piddly blog is not going to however many thousands more views he may get on his video from my blog isn't really going to you know give him significantly more publicity <laughs> oh but you know what every little bit helps thank you so much thank you so much 
You know, because it would be irresponsible of you to give me more publicity, you know? Because then you'd be subjecting people to ideas that are, like, different from your own. What you then had, what you had they might have doing. thoughts that, you know, you don't want them to have. you got to control the narrative. got to make sure everyone thinks like you all the time, right? I just wanted to point out, I mean, your response video has a lot of views, and that's giving traffic to his blog. You don't give a shit. You're not like, oh, I don't want people to hear his opinion. Like, <coughs> people are free to listen to his opinion. We don't yeah, care. Yeah, I mean, like, I was never sitting there for a second like, oh, you know, I mean, th doesn't that kind of speak to, like, the weakness of your message that you have to sit there and worry about giving me more exposure, but I have no problem giving you more exposure? I don't care. I Looks like he's enjoying people. the exposure he's gotten, too. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like, I don't give a shit. I'll give you all the exposure you want. Martin Hughes, everybody! It's Martin fucking Hughes! He has a Pathios blog! Martin Hughes! Martin Hughes! Check out Martin Hughes on Pathios! I don't give a shit. Hey, cut that out, TJ. Too much exposure. If I, wanted to, if, I, if I wanted to start checking out a new blog, whose blog should I check out? Hmm. TJ? Um... Well, I mean, if you want me to actually recommend it, no, uh, no, I can't because it's bad. <laughs> Yo, I, <laughs> heard I have this no problem up. directing people to it if they want to look Hughes. at it. I heard, yeah, I heard this fella Martin Hughes has got a whipcracker of a blog. Whipcracker, really? About a whip black cracker. man? Damn, Paul. Jesus Christ, Paul. And you say I'm the mean one while you cast about willy-nilly these racial epithets dude, and maybe shit? maybe Paul is racist, dude. I don't Disgusting, know. Disgusting, Paul. Disgusting. Whipcracker. Paul is the true racist here. Paul. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a racist, but when I see a black man, the first thing that enters my mind is whips. And I just, I can't, I, I don't know why. Wow. Wow, damn. Damn, Paul. Some dark shit, Paul. <laughs> Already getting, so I gotta, I gotta say something, and so I did. Yeah, it's, I, we, we seem to view it very much the same way, because I, so I like I said at the beginning of our conversation, I, I don't, as a rule, talk about other YouTubers. Um, especially Not other atheist rule. YouTubers. I have talked about the atheist YouTube community in general. Right. As being kind of a sewer. <laughs> you know, as being... <laughs> a lot more You're, sewer, Steve. You're part of the sewer, you fucking idiot. Um, no, dude. He's the fucking... He's the, the filtration system that's cleaning up the sewer water and making it pure and clean uh, Perhaps again. in his own delusional mind, sure. Uh, Steve, Steve shot... He just looks uncomfortable to be him. Like every time I see him, I just feel bad for him for being him. Did you know you, what I mean? Paul, like his life is you, walking on eggshells. He walks on eggshells constantly. You did, can tell. Did you see the picture of Steve Shives from Reason Rally when he's like sitting in like the lawn chair? <laughs> and he's like, oh, no. He's he's got like the worst posture ever. Um, and and AIU actually said something about Steve Shives that made me laugh really hard. He said Steve Shives does the scoliosis shuffle. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, and is, T, TJ people Fat like, Nights. People like you, people like you, Ben, are why the atheist community is such a cesspool. It's a sewer. It's a sewer, Ben. Shut up and, and start fat nighting my freedom of speech, TJ. All right, I will. Take take the cock out of your mouth and start fat nighting my freedom of speech. I'll do it. <laughs> fat night to the rescue. Yeah. But I don't like to single people out for the reasons that you just mentioned. You know that you don't want to. You don't want to give people more publicity. Uh, as a general rule, I think it's better to ignore people like that and to just try to set a better example and provide an alternative <laughs> and say, "Hey, Let's ignore other ideas." If you want to watch an atheist on YouTube who isn't proudly toxic, you know, maybe look over this way. Proudly um, toxic. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I, 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 I make somewhat of an effort. You're not. You're not perfect? Really? Wow. <sighs> I always thought you were. Thanks for clarifying, this Steve. This false, uh, you know, self-depreciation, you know, oh, I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not perfect, yeah. but I'm better than everyone else. I'm better than this toxic cesspool of, of ruffians that have taken over the atheist community. These scoundrels! Why are they even crouching this in an atheist community argument? Because they're, they're, all, all of their problems with you are identity politics problems. It has nothing to do with atheism. Shut up, Paul.
you know, you're so uh, illogical. And as, as do others as well. I mean, I'm not just putting myself up on a pedestal. There are, you know, mm -hmm. Aaron Ra is good, and uh, Seth Andrews is a hero of mine, and Matt Dillahunty, and uh, some, and a lot of smaller YouTubers that I love. Yeah, but Matt Dillahunty was actually man enough to come on here and talk to us, and you're not. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. I'll give him that much. As well, like Christy Winters and Foxy Jazabel, and just a whole bunch of awesome people that oh. I would much rather be paid attention to than the likes of the amazing atheist but well, your what, article what touches you like on is irrelevant, something that... Steve. if you're talking about community what you you're just one person that makes up the community what you want is irrelevant people are going to listen to different ideas you know oh the people should listen to these other people's ideas well that's fine they do listen to them to some degree and people want to listen to tj why because there's an audience for it it's all logical it's all very sound if you actually uh, i know there's consider these ideas from a rational perspective there's plenty of people who can listen to people like people that he was listing and listen to people like me and thunderfoot and whatever else and they're fine yeah, why, why can't these people who are open-minded open -minded open -minded yeah. actually tolerate other fucking perspectives? Yeah, Steve, why are you so close-minded? I mean, yeah, you might disagree with TJ, but you don't think she's ever made a point you agree with? It's like, no, everyone, if I disagree with someone, they have no value. <coughs> they should just be shunted off to the side. That's a dangerous mindset, Steve. It really is. Damn. Is just so discouraging and so troubling about... The atheist community especially as it exists on youtube where i think the problems that are present in the broader community in, in what sense is it a Jesus. community it's, it's it's a group of people who upload videos and mostly people so, who just digest content i mean isn't it kind of weird to like bring this guy on specifically like this author of this article and then just monopolize all the fucking time yammering yeah what the fuck i forgot like, the guy the yeah, other I mean, guy like, was even here i forgot here. he was even there Dude, I mean, this, like this your, is guest, just a, your guest just arrived like shouldn't you be talking to your this guest this is just a surreptitious way to fucking attack you that's all yeah, it is I, I was just gonna say that dude the guest only exists as a reason to crouch behind his wall of block bots and take a little jab at you every once in a while i'm a fucking pussy what a sad, simpering fucking cunt that has to block people, refuse to speak to them, and then wait for a fucking opportune moment when that person does something you disagree with and get a little needle in there. What a snatch you are, Steve Shives. <laughs> snatch. He's a total fucking snatch of a man. Total snatch of a man. Someone should uh, screenshot this. And make it say, total snatch of a man. Bonus points if you can actually tweet it to him. Yeah, you'll be blocked immediately. Let's see if anyone can actually get through his block get, field. Get him to see it. Yeah, they can just make a new account. The fucking block force field. <laughs> People will just have to make sock accounts and, like, go in and, and tweet it at him, and then the, he'll block them. Neat. Yeah, it's it's a great cycle. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. Seems to get amplified, you know, because, like, you know, sexism is a problem everywhere not just in atheist circles it's problem everywhere and but it's even more of an apparent problem on youtube racism is a problem everywhere including in atheist communities really? but it uh, seems like it's even more of a problem on youtube because it just gets amplified um and that's that and there was a point in your first article where you 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 said you know this video of his at that point i think and you mentioned it it had gotten like four hundred thousand views uh and you said that <clears throat> 470,000 views at that time. Thank you. It's more people than attend the largest secular mm -hmm. conference. Yeah, man, I tried to get that. Uh, I tried to take that quote and make it into a tweet, but uh, it was too long. People are saying he's a cuck, not a snatch. Cuck is like the most overused word ever. Oh, my uh, God. And, and, like, a mail. and snatch is, a, is definitely below cuck, I would say, on the, uh, yeah. on the <clears throat> ladder of... <laughs> Uh, garbage. Insult yeah, to yeah. Be as aspersed with. Yeah. yeah. Steve actually so. might, in all in all actuality, be a cock, though. In all in, in all fairness, um, I doubt it because his wife is like some crazy radical feminist. She's probably like terrified of dick. Yeah, he's probably cucked by like you know some other woman or something. What? I mean, I don't know how many minutes into this video we are, but I, I do think it's it's pertinent that we haven't even touched on a single fucking disagreement that they have with anything that you said yet. I, yeah, I'm I'm kind of amazed by that myself at this point. This video is really I long. keep waiting for the part I'm supposed to argue with, and I'm just kind of like sitting here like, uh-huh, okay, you hate me, I get it, okay, where's your argument? 
Yeah, I mean, you're toxic. You're a piece of like, shit. That's what I'm waiting for. I mean, like, I don't want to just sit this, here and take pot shots. Dude, this but, always happens, though. With, I mean, with, where the fuck is the meat? Where the fuck is but, the substance? But, dude, it always happens with, like, I've seen so many attack videos. It's always like you're ruining your, uh, this terrible representative of the atheist community on YouTube. It's like, what atheist community? What are you talking about? Like, people that post videos? Like, there's no real association between content creators. Maybe there is in some cases, but not really. It's it, it at best is a very loose community. It's not like TJ's representative of atheism as, or as an idea or a belief as a whole. Anyways, he's just one guy. And it's his opinions. <coughs> That's yeah. it. And that was the part that really kind of punched me. You know, I was like, "Shit, he's right." Like this is you know because I I went to my first conference last year because just because of the area of the country that I live in, most of the big conferences aren't near so, me, and I usually can't uh, afford to travel to them to to go to the am, conferences. Am I just am I just to assume that there's never any sort of argument against me presented in this video or what? Yeah, you're, you're just evil. Like it's just like presuppositionally he's bad and wrong, and we don't have to justify that position at all because everyone just knows. <laughs> uh, Crouton and T uh, was w is in the chat, and he hey, said Crouton T. He said uh, his wife. Uh, I think he said. Hold on, let me read it. I have to scroll back up to it. It said something about like how his wife. Oh, his wife forces him to get fucked by black guys, so no, he's not a cop. <laughs> what was that? He's like a sissy, then. He's a sissy he's a boy? He's a sissy. Oh, okay. He's a sissy for BBC. That it's... stands for Big Black yep. Cock. Does he wear, like, negligee as the <laughs> clown in the ass? <laughs> oh. Oh. I bet his cock is, like, in a little fucking chastity cage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, I can one. see it. I can <laughs> see it. Yep, I can see it. Disgusting. Filing that one away. <laughs> but there was a conference that took place about an hour for me, kind of a larger regional conference. And I went there and it was like vacation. I mean, it was just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> It was like going to it was like going to visit your friend who lives in the okay. nice neighborhood. Here's the thing. You want to go to your conference and meet those kind of atheists that go to conferences and talk about that kind of bullshit and whatever that exists for you. You can have that. No one's trying to take it from you. Have fun. Have at it. So wh why is it that you can't exist over there in your space with your fucking ideas and values and we can't over exist over here in our space with our ideas and values? Like, why does there have Dude, to be a confrontation? You're, you're, mi you're missing the subtext. They're so butthurt that people like Thunderfoot and Sargon and you... You way know, more popular. Button. Way more popular. Yeah. Well, okay. And their conferences are fucking. These conferences because are so sparsely more, attended. Here's the problem: because we're more interesting, and people don't feel like they're walking on eggshells around us. Because we're not so going to just be easily offended by. Oh my God, you're racist. Even, you're sexist. You're even this, the people, you're that. even the people that do offend you, you don't block them normally unless they get like. I only, I really only block people who like harass and annoy right. me. If someone's a pest, I block them. I'm not going to block someone because, oh, they disagree with my ideology? Fuck you! <laughs> I can't handle disagreement! Yeah, he goes even further than that. Like, he goes out of his way to set up these fucking block bots that block people who happen to be following people he doesn't agree with. So it's so not even, even the people he doesn't even agree with. Even just open-mindedness is punished. Yeah. Yeah. Even just fucking considering another point of view is penalized have, in Steve Shives' world. Have you ever heard him talk, like, you know, say, oh, being open-minded is great, listen to other ideas is great. He, no, he's always saying, like, look, we need to provide our narrative, people need to listen to this narrative and ignore all these other ones that are bad and sexist and racist or whatever. They're toxic, you know, essentially is what he's saying. Yeah. Just think like Steve. <laughs> and, and then you have to come back to your place. In the shitty neighborhood, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, and so that part of your article really, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that part of your article was great. Really kind of hit home with me, where you pointed out, like, look at how many views this has. Look at look at how lopsided the like dislike ratio is in favor of what this guy is saying. <laughs> look how it's lopsided. <laughs> look at how hurt our butts are. <laughs> look, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, man, this is like a bunch of GoBots fans being like, how can all these people like Transformers better? GoBots is clearly superior. It's just as good, if not better. It's way better. <laughs> I mean, like, that's the level of inconsequentiality this video has so far. Transformers versus GoBots. Big fucking deal. 
supposedly I'm so problematic that it's a problem that people are even like listening to me or considering my point of view. Well, you're toxic. Because I'm a toxic. You're poisoning the well, TJ. I'm like Tim Curry, you know. Toxic love. <laughs> Uh, you know, so clearly that bothers you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, definitely yeah, does. yeah. Um, definitely, definitely. It sounds like fucking rain, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, 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 it does. Uh, it does. Uh, yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. It's like what? <laughs> Just talk. And now you guys show you're clearly ableist. <sighs> and I think I think a lot of it is due to the demographic of the atheist community. Uh, Pew Research poll came out a few months ago, right? It was basically saying. Um, atheists are white, like mm -hmm. overwhelmingly white, um, much more than mm -hmm. the general population. Like the general population is already white, but atheists is like something over 90%. It was enormous. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. And mm -hmm. of those white people, it's mostly male. So nearly all white and mostly male. That's your demographic. And if you look at... Oh my God! The most evil group in history, yep. guys. White there's a lot of there's a lot of males. white males. White males, guys. Every every fucking evil thing in all of history um, but atheism was done is, by white males. I mean, but atheism is not something. It's like it, that's really worth a. Oh shit! A white male. It's it's an individual choice. It's not as if. You know, you can't become an atheist tomorrow. It doesn't matter what you look like. Anyone could be an atheist. It's not difficult. It's Dude. not really hard to be an atheist. I'm surrounded by white males. Maybe right in now. some, maybe in some circumstances, being openly an atheist is difficult. But personally believing it, no, it's not. You know, people say me think that I'm not saying this because I'm like just against white people. I'm saying, well, if you look at the Pew Research poll that just came out a couple of days ago. That highlighted the disparities between white people and black people in views of race. And it's like night and day. Black people say there's a major problem with race. Uh, something like 75% of black people um, were saying, yeah, discrimination is a problem in black people's lives. Well, I think it's such a cultural and conflict. Only, of course, there, that, that, there's going to be those oppo opposing points of view. That's why there is the conflict. If all white people and all black people agreed that, oh, everything is racist, there wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> That's where the issue stems from, is, diff is obviously, uh, like you said, according to this research, a majority of blacks they ask, think that race is a huge problem, and a majority of whites probably think, no, it's not a big problem, or it's like, it's, a, it's you know, it's there's not as big of an issue. But there's just supposed to be this presuppositional argument that, oh, 75% of black people says there's a problem, so there's a problem. Like, they're automatically right. Why? Because they're black? We're black, so we know. I mean, if we said we're white because we know, so we know, that'd be fucking racist. Yeah, that's, that's no. You can't that's a bad, just be like that argument. You can't just be like my skin color alone proves that I'm correct about this. Well, what they try to argue is that basically because they have a different experience that you cannot. You just it's really essentially impossible for you to ever understand because you're not black. That's essentially well, what it boils I, down to. Why can't I? <laughs> why can't I then say like, well, you just don't understand the white experience. Well, you, so you got no room to talk about that. But that's not the narrative that they believe in they, because they believe because you have a position of power that that's not your experience no matter what. You just, it's impossible for you to, even if like, they try to explain it to you, you still wouldn't get it because you haven't lived it. Mm. So you have to actually experience it. But then if you question their so experience... I mean, like, well, at that point, it's basically just something that's supposed to be taken on faith. Yeah, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in faith. I don't believe in taking things on faith. I don't believe in saying, oh, well, let's suspend all logic and reason and just assume that you're right because you just are. You don't need to have any sort of points or arguments or make any sort of reasonable case why you're right. You just get to be right automatically. Fuck that shit. Not doing it. Not playing that game. Not playing by those fucking rules. 36% of white people agreed, which is like less than half. So yeah, it's about a third. If you're trying to, so along with the atheism a more. comes a predominantly white demographic that okay. doesn't really think racism is a thing. And so, you know, if what? you're packaging Wait, that wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't who was polled. You're, you're conflating two different things. They just polled, the, the poll you said was just white people in general, was what Pew did. They did not poll white atheists. As to that, I don't feel you can inflate those two things necessarily. Maybe the atheists, maybe a vast majority of atheists do think it's a problem. Maybe a vast majority don't. They'd actually have to support, uh, poll specifically atheists by race to get that determination. Some other messages, and you're trying to appeal to that crowd, things outside of just atheism, when you're appealing to a mostly white male crowd, saying this kind of stuff that um, the amazing atheist and other atheists kind of in his veins 
today will play well because of the demographic you're pressing you're trying to appeal to. And this sounds really, really cynical, um, but I think they know that. <laughs> they know that. Uh, I, I'm a white male, so, I mean, I say things, maybe other white males agree. It doesn't mean there's a conspiracy. It doesn't mean I'm like, he's just saying it to fucking not, play not to, to that demographic. How, how do they know you're, what you're, de how do they know your demographic Ooh. is all white male? We don't really, know, like, YouTube doesn't provide anything like that. There's no way, like, we know that you have a, a more male audience, but we don't know the racial makeup of it. Yeah, that's true. YouTube doesn't keep tabs on the race of users. I would say it's probably mostly white males, though. But I mean, I get messages from fucking black fans. I get messages from, like, fans from the Middle East. They love me. Hispanic fans, whatever. They love me. They all love me. I'm I'm the best. The atheists love the, the the Hispanics love the amazing atheists. They love me. <laughs> Ask anyone. I'm the best. I've eaten a taco before. <laughs> you know, I fucking love tacos. All right. I love Mexican food. I love the Mexican people. That's gonna get those I don't like their music. They have a few different types of music. I don't like their music that I hear when I go to Mexican places. Like mariachi music? Yeah, that kind of shit. Yeah. And also, like, pop covers in fucking Spanish and shit. I don't mind the mariachi music, but I don't like the other kind. I don't like any of it. Well, it's all annoying to me. There you go. Fuck you, Mexican music. I grew up but with your food, that shit, man. Your food's I good, though. I like a good fucking accordion ballad. Yeah. Dude. Dum, bum, 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 yep. bum, lo siento, yeah. no me prento, al aramento de mama. Brum, bum, bum, bum. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes me cringe even just hearing Paul do it. It's crazy. <laughs> It's awesome. Dude, if, I, if I go to a place to eat and there's live music, my night is instantly ruined. <laughs> Like, I do not like... You're so fucking sensitive, I do not dude. like live music. You're so sensitive. I mean, you know, whatever. Princess and the dude, it's actually If I'm with a bunch good. of people... If TJ's, I'm with a bunch of people, I'll tolerate it, but, you know... TJ's it's not the my princess choice. and the P. Everything whatever. must accommodate him and his specific tastes. Yeah. So you what? Know. I have fucking standards. Think, Big deal. I think they probably know that with some of the stuff that, you know, TJ is saying and um, that I think kind of pushes the envelope a little bit Farther than he would otherwise. Like, I think they kind of know that. I think they kind of know that's going to get people donating to the Patreon account and so on. Uh, that's so. that's that's it's one of the. It's all just about the money. Doesn't Steve <laughs> Chives have a Patreon account? Correct me it's if I'm wrong. Different when they do it, dude. Oh, okay. It's different when they do it. Totally different. Things. That's one of the aspects of this I I wanted us to discuss because uh, a few people that I talked to. Uh, earlier today before we did this uh, wanted me to ask you about that too like all right let this torture in please Ooh. dear god dear god please let this torture end okay what's next we're an hour in that's enough of this so patreon is so evil but steve shives has 219 patrons and gets 1000 to uh, uh, excuse me 1201 dollars a month <laughs> pitiful but Neat. For such a cherished oh, human right, there sure are a lot of us who don't understand it. So here are five misunderstood <sighs> things about free speech. All right, so Steve Shives is going to teach us what we need to know about free speech. Finally. So shut Talk the fuck here. up and listen, everybody. I'm going to. Number one, free speech is more than the First Amendment. We Americans tend to treat the concept of free speech as synonymous with the First Amendment to our Constitution, which states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. I myself, when discussing this issue, have often pointed out that the First Amendment defines the relationship between citizens and their government, not citizens and each other. But the concept of free speech is much broader than the First Amendment to the Constitution of my country. And, just as importantly, it's much more complex than the I should get to say whatever I want principle that is promoted by certain people on the internet. Um, it, uh, it's more say, complex you because you, you yeah, you've decided to make it more complex. It really isn't more complex than I can say whatever I want. Yeah, That's freedom of the speech. kind of the definition of freedom of speech. Freedom of speech and freedom of thought means that, yes, you can say and think whatever you want. You're not allowed to do whatever you want, but say and think, yes, you're allowed to do whatever you want. That is freedom of speech. 
You cannot. Wait, he's under an argue, uh, 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 basically under the pur- like the purview of that. Oh, well, legally, you know, freedom of speech just talks about between your relationship with you and the government, not just individuals. Like that's what he's tr- so he's basically trying to make an argument that like banning people from YouTube for what they say it should be valid, or just I guess even arresting them. Maybe. Well, I guess uh, well, arresting them would be their fucking their purview of the government, but. I mean, sure. I, I, I think that, yeah, the way that it is interpreted now, YouTube does have the right to ban you for any reason. Yeah. I mean, you know, no one can deny YouTube's right to do that under the current fucking structure of things, but that doesn't change that the concept of freedom of speech is about saying whatever you want and being able to do so without fucking at least legal repercussions. Yeah. Number two, it's not <coughs> speech hot- Consequence. <coughs> Respecting free speech doesn't mean that there can't be negative consequences for saying the wrong thing said, at the wrong that? time. If I'm making racist or misogynistic comments online and my boss finds out about it and fires my ass, that doesn't mean that my boss doesn't respect free speech. If he's someone else sees me making dock dropping at this point, th- th- this seems like that's where he's going for. Like, oh, when you dock drop someone who says racist and homophobic things. It's okay if they fire your ass. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, who knows, dude? Who, like, once again, like, he's now adding his complications onto what is a very simple prospect. Is there, is this peach shit going anywhere? Or what yeah, is the, what is with the, I don't know why he keeps showing peach shit. What is the peach thing? Is he, try, is he, is he being paid by, like, the peach lobby or some <laughs> shit? What's going on here? He's getting paid by Monsanto. Bigoted comments and calls me out on it. That doesn't mean that they don't respect free speech. Respecting disagreement is a crucial part of the concept of free speech, but respecting disagreement doesn't mean respecting every disagreeing opinion, no matter how ignorant or toxic that opinion. Bigots with poor judgment are not a protected class, and there is no... Yes, they are. Yes, they are. are. Extremely are. But you know know what he's saying, furthermore, TJ, he's basically saying, I think this is kind of his way to defend, like, you know, the fact that he was trying to flag you off of YouTube as well. He's trying to say, like, oh, this is is actually just... Well, I don't know when this video came out or whatever, but... Yeah, well, you don't get don't to arbitrarily decide what speech is bigoted and uninformed and then silence that speech. That's not freedom of speech. That's control of speech. So, yes, bigots that are uninformed are a protected class in this country. They're allowed to be bigoted. They're allowed to be uninformed. And they're allowed to say whatever the fuck they want. Moral or legal principle requiring anyone else to put up with it. Number three. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Right. You don't, ha- you don't have to sit around and listen to them. Oh, yeah, dude, it doesn't guarantee you a platform. Yeah, you don't deserve a platform. Respecting free speech also means respecting the rights of others to moderate their own spaces. I, I swear to God, this peach shit better be I know, somewhere. Dude. I'm free to say whatever I want, but someone else is also free to decide that they don't want me to say it in a venue they control. This can be especially true if what I have to say is not particularly original, informed, or relevant to the purpose the moderator means to serve with that platform. Okay. Free speech doesn't magically impart value to anything I might say. The value of what I have to say, beyond my own opinion, the value of what you have to say is zero. <laughs> Just pointing that out. Opinion of it is determined by those who hear it. Okay. And on that subject, number four, it doesn't entitle you to be a bully. Sometimes. Uh, if anyone's a bully, it's you. <laughs> More peach shit. You're the one who goes around blocking everyone for every petty. I mean, like, your fucking argument is ridiculous because, like, people I've li- people I've li- people have literally like go through my Twitter. I've retweeted tons of people who have literally come to you and said things like. I respectfully disagree with your position on X, and you block them instantly. Instantly blocked. So not guaranteed a platform. Yeah, I know they're not. I mean, like, but he's acting like, oh well, you know, if you're not gonna do this in your discussion, or if you're gonna be a bully or whatever. It's basically if, if you don't. If, but if, it, what it really what he really means is anyone who disagrees yeah, with me is gone. That's what I'm saying. If you don't have yeah, his exact basically. same idea of freedom of speech, then you're basically just, you're doing it wrong and he's entitled to block you and shut you out. The noble concept of free speech is invoked for the most petty reasons imaginable. I've seen people assert their freedom of speech after offending someone with an insult. I've seen people assert their freedom of speech after it became clear that what they were saying was obviously hurtful to the person they were saying it to. I've seen people... Once again... That's part of freedom of speech. Yeah, your hurt it can't, it can't exist. do not your your feelings do not get placed before my right to hurt them. 
Otherwise, well, we do. don't have free speech. We have feeling speech. <laughs> see, uh, see the difference, Steve? You don't have a right to not be offended. There's yeah, no right that you have you, to, not, to not be subjected to something that, that gives you offense. And it's stupid to expect that. And even have a discussion about free speech. But does anyone believe that Steve honestly supports free of speech? I mean, he clearly no. doesn't. I mean, he's, he's, no. he's, he's making a bunch of arguments to kind of deflate freedom of speech. Like, he's trying to cur curtail what is actually should be considered a free speech. Like, which to him, it's basically some bland, inoffensive dialogue, which you might disagree with him, but then he's pretty much just going to block you out after right. that anyway. Already at this point in the video, free speech has been defined pretty much as speech I like. Yep. Yeah. That's that's pretty much it. Like, if you agree with me and say things I like, then you're okay. But if you're anybody, if you say anything else, then you're bad. Start honor to this family, TJ. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There he goes. <laughs> yep. Oh god, oh. dude. That was a monster oh, hit too. <laughs> Dude, that was a man-sized hit, dude. Yep. Oh, Did it come out your nose? God. That was great. That was a volcano of a hit. <coughs> oh. oh, man. I'm not, e I'm not even going to make fun of Scotty for coughing after that hit, dude. <laughs> TJ, you should be ashamed. You should be ashamed. I've never seen you take a hit that big, TJ. Not only just destroy TJ with the smoking because TJ wouldn't even do it. <coughs> Scotty beat TJ in a weightlifting contest. I was there. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs> TJ said we could have a rematch, dude, so... Exert ...their freedom of speech to justify continuing to aggressively pursue a conversation with someone who clearly did not want to talk to them. Just as others can impose consequences for speech they find unacceptable or exercise discernment over who is allowed to speak on platforms they control, I can refrain from speaking out of respect for the circumstances or the sensitivities or concerns of others. So even good. if I really so want what? to say That's something. That's so foolish, so Free speech what? and self-control are can do not that, mutually you're exclusive. you're restraining yourself. Number five, it doesn't obligate others to listen to you. There are those who believe that respecting free speech means being willing to grant a hearing to anyone and everyone who has something right. to say about well, anything. Let's talk about who's listened to and who's not, because I've actually, <laughs> over the last 30 days, I've gained more subscribers than you've ever had. And also, um, uh, your subscriptions, ever since I made that video about you, are down. I think that they went down like a they thousand. Did. His Several views. Thousand. Yeah. Have you seen his views? No. But oh furthermore, Steve, Hold up. Steve Shives is yeah, social yeah. blade. Let's, let's, let's yeah. talk about. But, but yeah, listen to really what he said. Down. But listen to what he said, TJ. He said, just in this video, let the people decide the value. So if he right. believes that, then the value his, clearly is decided with it. So here's the value okay, they've decided. So now he's. Ah, uh, uh, you had to do it, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> what is up with this fucking uh, music? It's, it's, What's up with this music is that it's hideous. Does he have you this... ever heard worse music in your life? I, the tube. I mean, it is shit. the perfect. It is the perfect soundtrack to the life of a man who once out. had a shred of relevancy and has since descended into fucking complete retardism. Like, I'd want a lot of tuba in that song, is what I'm saying. So the home, home, yeah, just mumbling through life. <laughs> Dark matter. Uh, I, I hear you. Uh, you've blamed yourself for uh, Steve Shives on several occasions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not your fault. The, the, the no, listen, the listen, him. listen. It's not your fault, man. It's not, it's not your fault, fault Doc. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> Don't you do that. <laughs> don't, you, don't you mess with me, man. <laughs> it's, no, listen. It's not your fault. No, I'm serious. <laughs> no he is horrible, oh. though. He is a horrible man. Last week, I published a video titled Five Misunderstood Things About Free Speech. One of the things I said in that video is that I think the concept of free speech is a lot more complicated than how it is usually described by many self-styled defenders of free speech on the internet, most yeah. of whom believe that uh, free speech means that they should get to say whatever they want 
about whoever they want, however they want, whenever they want, from whatever platform they want, sure, that is and of, anything that, that stands. The epic straw man, I'm sure. I don't. I don't know anybody who believes any of that shit. That they should be able to say whatever they want about whoever they want. There's fucking laws. There's libel laws, slander laws. You can't do that. Everybody knows this. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't think that... I mean, there's probably some free speech advocates who would go so far as to say there shouldn't be libel or slander or incitement to violence kind of shit as exceptions, but that's... I mean, I don't really... That doesn't really seem to be the majority of free speech advocates to me, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think that robust criticism of fucking ideologies and viewpoints should definitely be allowed. And I think I should be allowed to make fun of fucking Steve Shives because he puts him out there as a, himself out there as a public fucking figure. If I want to say that Steve Shives looked like a fucking gaunt, emaciated, shriveled up turd of a man, I should be able to say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think there's people, anything wrong with me pointing that out. People who treat free speech flippantly, you know, and make little jokes, freeze, peach, <laughs> you know, people who make, who do this stupid shit, they never expect their speech to be the one that's limited, you know, they, well, they, yeah, uh, of course, because this isn't about, uh, silencing, like, like, like we said, there's laws against incitement to violence. There's laws against libel and slander. There's laws against, you know, uh, yelling fire in a crowded theater and shit that would endanger people. Um, the problem he has with free speech is he doesn't want to hear any critique. He wants to be surrounded by people that only agree with him, and he wants the people that disagree with him to not have a platform to do so. That's the problem. And, and you're he, right. They do treat, treat it flippantly, the whole freeze peach thing that we didn't get. Yeah, like, I didn't get it. And he, and I, in the I saw his uh, chat with um, Puka, and he said that he has... He said he does not watch videos about him and that he's only in his whole YouTube career, he's only ever watched two and that he only uh, agreed with one, you know, and adjusted his viewpoint, you know, because he 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 saw that this this one video that disagreed with him. And so like all these all these videos made about him that that criticize him. He, he claims, anyway, that he's never seen any of them. And, you know, what? Uh, why? I, I mean, aren't, aren't you interested in, you know, finding out if you're wrong, li listening to no. what other people have to no, say about not. what you said? I mean, why, is he, why is he a member of a public forum like this? I mean, I, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, uh, he seems to really want something that's more insular. Yep. And, uh codifying and just oh you know coddle me and tell me i'm right and stroke my hair and call me a good boy i mean like that's that's not what this is about it's not what this should be about that's certainly not a productive way to fucking lead your existence if you want to develop as a human being you have to be at least fucking willing to entertain criticisms of your positions if you're going to be someone out there fucking spreading ideology but he just fucking thinks he's immune from criticism their way of doing any of those things is an unacceptable infringement on their freedom of speech. Now, I consider this to be a very self-centered, very narcissistic view of freedom of speech. And that is not the... He's got very soulless, rat-like eyes, too. <laughs> he does. <clears throat> yeah. And I, would, and I would argue that, that the idea that people should tailor their speech to, you know, fit your particular sensibilities is self-centered and narcissistic, but what do I know? Yeah. View of freedom of speech that I have. And I think that is the source of the disagreement um, between people like me who take uh, a more broad view of freedom of speech and people who view it in a very narrow first person sense as I as an individual should be able to say whatever I want and anything. Oh my God. No one, what the I mean, fuck? no one views it that way. No, I mean, I guess there's probably some fucking simpletons going around like freedom of speech means that I can say what I want. Is Actually, you're the one who views it that way, you fucking asshole. You're the one who goes around saying that my opinions are right and anyone else should be fucking silenced. 
So you're the fucking narcissistic piece of shit who believes that way. You're the one with a narrow fucking view of freedom of speech. Nothing less than that is not free speech. And that's a disagreement that I wanted to sort of explore in this video because it was something that came up over and over again in responses to that video in the comment section on Twitter and Facebook, etc. Many of the, the folks who uh, <coughs> disagreed with me or, or objected to things I said in that video were objecting to that suggestion <laughs> that freedom of speech does not mean I get to say whatever I want. So I wanted to explain why I think that, why I think that freedom of speech doesn't mean you as an individual always get to say whatever you want. The main reason why I have the view of freedom of speech that I do as opposed to that other view. I gotta be honest with you, so far I find your idea of freedom of speech to be incredibly vague. Yep. Like, I mean, you might describe it as broad, but I would describe it as almost inscrutably vague. I'm not really sure what you believe at this point, but maybe you're gonna enlighten me, so I guess I'll let this play out a little longer. Is that I see freedom of speech as something that needs to function in society in order for it to be any good in principle um what does that mean <laughs> what do you mean function in I society i don't understand this that is, what this is how i'm going to justify placing arbitrary limits on free speech it needs to function in society let me guess steve in order to function in society it's got to not offend any of your sensibilities right crazy uh why would yeah. inoffensive speech need to be protected? I mean, it's already protected. Yeah, I mean, like, how many, um, uh, how many speech, how many fucking sp political speeches that were unpopular at the time were made, were actually against the fucking function of society? Like, when someone said, I think this slavery thing we're doing is wrong. Yeah. That was actually against the function of society at the time. You fucking yeah. nitwit. How, how many the people the were status upset. quo should be challenged? Fucking saying right. that we got to go along with what society wants to be part of a functional fucking society is just gibberish. This the is thoughts of a fucking are... fascist maniac. Sorry, dark matter. Go ahead. Oh, it's all right. This is this is why people come up with that word regressive. Like, how many people were offended about the idea of women voting? Tons. Yeah. <clears throat> and it went against the function of that society. So, I mean, this this, uh, this criteria you've created is basically just a... a, a I mean, it just it, it, it fucking halts progress dead in its fucking tracks. Because this means that no one can ever challenge the status quo in any sort of meaningful way. Fuck you. The notion that free speech means that everybody gets to say whatever they want sounds great. Sounds like, oh, that's total freedom, right? That's perfect total freedom. But when you translate that principle into practical terms and you start to look at a society where everyone is free to say whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want, to whoever they want, what does that society look like? And is that a society, A, that anyone would really want to be, be a part it would of? Be and really B, funny. It if after he said, what would that society look? And then bam, someone shut him up, cut him off. <laughs> yep. Cut the speech. That's what is that a society like. where free expression, free speech is something that would even be able to happen for most people? Would the option of free expression be available to most people in that society? Um, yeah, it sounds like it's available to everyone in that society. And I think the answer is no. All right. I think in a do. society where free speech is defined as each individual should be allowed to <laughs> say whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want, to whoever they want, from whatever platform they want, um, such a society would be a society where eventually, for all practical purposes, free speech would no longer exist. And this is what is called the paradox of tolerance. This um. All right. This is something that was uh, that has existed in philosophy for a very long time, but it was described. Let's keep in and mind. Named keep in mind that he, this is based on a straw man, because nobody's saying freedom of speech right. means everyone can say whatever they want to whoever they want on whatever yeah, sure. platform. Nobody's saying yeah. that shit. So no. he's yeah, I mean, setting up definitely, the straw man. He's, he's definitely exaggerating a position and creating a fucking straw man and shit. We, yeah. I mean, this they, they, is not they, accurate, but I'm just gonna. I, I 
like to, in these situations, just fucking give him the benefit of the doubt and just say, okay, let me just roll with this and just grant you your ridiculous fucking premise for a second to see where you're going with this argument. Oh, look at this. This yeah. is a screenshot. Screenshot, everybody. There you go. He looks uh, the way beautiful. He's, the way he's fucking positioned <laughs> right now, it looks like he doesn't have any bottom teeth except for on the sides there. Huh. Named the Paradox of Tolerance by Karl Popper in 1945, I think. Popper describes the Paradox of Tolerance as unlimited tolerance leading inevitably to intolerance. In other words, if you have a society where you say we tolerate everything, including intolerance, inevitably you will wind up with an intolerant society. You mean like you is, guys do with it, Islam? Yeah, I was yeah. just about to say. Islam is the most intolerant ideolo ideology out there, and when you w welcome that, you know, with open arms, wh what what do you think is going to fucking happen? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think that, uh, I mean, like, Steve Shives, I mean, he's bent over backwards to defend Islam. He's bent over backwards to admonish his old videos that were critical of Islam. So, I mean, isn't that being hyper-tolerant of intolerance? Uh, that seems like you're doing the very thing you're condemning here. But let's see where you're going. ...because there will be nothing to prevent the intolerant from taking over from taking power in that society and you will be you will wind up with a society that in principle values tolerance very much but is in practice a very intolerant society and this can also be phrased in terms of freedom you could say if we want to have a free society we cannot have a society where individuals are free to do whatever they want because inevitably you will end up with a society that is not free, but a society where in fact there is very little freedom. I realize these are very lofty concepts to be discussing in a YouTube video, but I mean not really. They're no. actually they're actually kinda like basic and simplistic. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anyone's sitting there like, whoa, Steve Shives, hold on, slow down. I'm trying to write this in my steno pad because this is just like concepts. I'm going to have to ruminate on for hours before I truly understand them and the depth. I mean, you explain them so well, but still, my tiny pea brain just needs time to process these lofty concepts. Wait, like wait. what? I mean, this is, this is a silly, ah, whatever. Actually, YouTube provides us with a very instructive microcosm <laughs> of the paradox of intolerance at work. A great example of what happens when you say, I'm going to tolerate everything, including intolerance, are comment sections of videos that are no. unmoderated. No. If you have ever looked at the... YouTube, YouTube has, uh, like, really strictly enforced standards of content. So they're not this open, tolerant fucking uh, place. In fact, I would say that they probably cl are closer to agreeing with you. They're not mm -hmm. overly tolerant. Just because people come and disagree with you in the comment section and shit does not mean that YouTube is tolerant of intolerance. Yeah, it's pretty hard to re uh, regulate those comment sections. I mean, YouTube has definitely made strides to try to get the comments under control. Like, when they first introduced the new comment system, it seemed like the kind of the troll comments did get buried for a while. But once the trolls figured out the new algorithms and shit, the, the fucking troll comments just started being at the top again. Because YouTube can't fucking really put a lid on that shit. You can't put a lid on the raging subconscious id of the fucking internet. You're never going to control it, that. Oh, yeah. I guess I should screenshot this one, too. Oh, my yeah, God. Look at him. The, the, the chance, <laughs> what the that. fucking shit? <laughs> Looks like a fucking grizzled old sea captain. What's been living on <laughs> old rations for a month at sea or something? <laughs> the, that's the most. Also, hey, can, can you get rid of our pictures again so we could read that poster? The most oh, ironic shit. thing that you could possibly have on that poster behind him, because they can take it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, clearly they can't. Yeah. And he can't. That's funny. Is it about criticism? 
it, if it is, then uh, it's, he's certainly not. A, it's not apt to be in his background, dude. Unmoderated comment section <clears throat> of a YouTube video that has a, a, a subject that is even remotely controversial for people watching the video. Once that element enters the comment section, unless action is taken to control it or remove it, it will inevitably take over the comment section. Okay, what happens though? Let's say you do you have an unmoderated comment section and people say all kinds of shit. What is what really happens at the end of the day? What's the big deal? Yeah, yeah you're still free to say what you want. The words he used is are weasel words. He said take over. You still have the freedom to say something entirely reasonable and not inflammatory at all. Just because a bunch of other people are saying inflammatory shit, that doesn't stop you from being able to not be like them. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've read comment sections where half the comments were retarded bullshit, and then there was people having, like, reasonably intelligent discussions in other threads in the same fucking comment section. You know, it's he acts like it all just... Uh, becomes fucking a white noise of, of angry fucking dissident viewpoints just raging at each other. I mean, sometimes it does, and especially in your fucking comment section, because people fucking resent you trying to control the fucking comments on your goddamn videos. And, you know, you go to Steve Shive's videos, and anytime he actually does allow comments, uh, most of the comments are about how his videos are fucking bullshit. So, of course, he doesn't like the fucking YouTube comments. Of course he holds a fucking grudge, but he doesn't realize that his behavior is what led to that. I mean, like, Steve Shives could have all the fucking same viewpoints he has. He could be a fucking feminist. He could uh, fucking hold the fucking views that he has. He can make the videos he does. But if he allowed his comment section to be open and he didn't fucking have block bots all over Twitter and he actually would engage in discussion with people, he wouldn't be nearly the hated figure that he is. Oh, no. Yeah. That's right. I mean, he might be someone that people dislike because they disagree with him, but at least they wouldn't fucking be able to sit there and admonish his fucking tactics, which people can easily do, because See, the way he conducts not, himself is just ridiculous and cowardly. It's not good enough for Steve that he has tools at his disposal to control his comment section. Too. He never <laughs> wants a nasty thing to be seen in his comment section again. He can fucking put his comments to approval or turn them off. Like, he acts like he's got no tools. And he wants to apply his standard of, of, of what is a good comment and what isn't to the broad concept of freedom of speech in a society. I don't see the comparison. There isn't one. Within a matter of hours, sometimes minutes, depending on how quick the deluge comes in, uh, will become just a complete mess will become completely useless to anyone who watches the video and wants to have anything constructive or relevant to say it will become just a toxic mess be i mean like you don't get to be the arbiter of what's fucking relevant to the fucking discussion you know you don't get to be the puppet master that controls how other people perceive fucking videos or what opinions they have or whether they choose to make a fucking joke out of things that you think should be taken seriously i mean you don't get to decide those other people's fucking sensibilities that's like the biggest issue i sense with you is that you just you're mad that you can't fucking be the puppet master that you can't control how everyone else thinks and feels all the time I mean, it's ridiculous. You're not fucking God. There is no God. You know, uh, I think that he's the one in the fucking VR simulation in uh, Dark Matters fucking videos, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think he acts a lot like how those early Christians on YouTube acted, uh, if you recall. They'll, <clears throat> you know, they'll open up their, um, their channel and call it a ministry and they'll they even take donations and they'll block they block or, or uh anybody who disbelieves or disagrees atheists um the very people whose minds they would need to change in order to be a good christian in order to do what what jesus did what jesus says you don't heal uh, the the sick by you know talking to the well you you got to go to where the sick people are you know so if you're a Christian ministry, you're you're going to be very ineffective if you only talk to Christians. You only preach to the choir. And Steve, for a guy like Steve, who I, I'm sure fancies himself an activist, 
if he only talks to people who already agree with him, he's not making any kind of meaningful change. He's he's being the the online YouTube Christian ministry <coughs> who builds an echo chamber composed of the people most likely to give him money. And Steve Shives is the one who benefits the most from his activism, which I have dubbed Shivetivism. <laughs> I, have to I, I, I agree with every word of that. Uh, Dark Matter, we're going to be going into a segment called Story Time with Paul, where most of us just shut up. So you can stick around for that if you want, or you can uh, hit the oh, road no, if you would be happy to hear it. All right, <laughs> great. Cool. Everyone give this video a thumbs up. We got five uh, 5,117 people watching. If you're not subscribed to our channel, subscribe thumbs now. Thumbs up. Thumbs subscribe up. now. Subscribe All right, now. It. All right. Neat. Yes, I'm a YouTube atheist, but try not to hold that against me, okay? <laughs> Here are five toxic things about YouTube atheism. Uh, 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 who's he talking sorry, about? Hold on. Hold, who's, he, who's he talking about? Who's he talking about? Uh, who could it be? Here we go. Who could it be? Who could it be? Number one, it has a sexism uh. problem. Many of the most popular atheists on YouTube are brazen anti feminists who. In Sounds like feminism is your religion, bitch. Why won't you have a rational debate they're, with me? They're, they're brazen. Fist. Not only that they, they hate feminism, they're brazen about it. Steve Shives is his lazy eye. Just, it gets me, yeah. man. It just gets me, dude. Assault and belittle women and men, but mostly women, who speak out against gender inequality. They, assault they also proudly deny the existences of things like the wage gap, rape culture, gender imbalances in political and cultural representation, and other wait, problems wait. that... So, Steve, these things are... everything you're saying is debatable. So, basically, your narrative is, uh, let's see, we're completely right about everything and you're in denial. But yet we're supposed to come to some middle ground, or uh, you know, like we, we said like you know, compromise is almost like kind of the spirit of like how a society. There is no, they don't even want a middle ground. They just like That's accept I'm everything I'm saying is completely true, or you're a moron and a sexist. Yeah, that's essentially it. There, there's no room to debate. There's no discussion. It's you're in denial. We're right. That's it. End of story. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, it's not. Uh, we're not shaking a fit. Like, debate me, faggot. It's like, no. We're just pointing out that you're not willing to debate Have anything. Have you ever and you just seen them debate? Total concession from the get go. How many SJWs like this would come on this show? Maybe, maybe, maybe there are some that would do it. I honestly can't tell you. I think many would. I think, but I think most of them would just say, no, nope, this is beneath me. They're wrong. They're sexist. They're you know racist. They're despicable. Yeah. We had a uh, Dilla. Feature. I was just going to say, a defining, a defining feature of modern SJWs is not wanting to talk to people who disagree with them. Like, that's just part of their platform. So. Yeah, I guess the only one that was close to that was Matt Dillahunty. He has kind of, like, SJW views. I mean, yeah, he a actually came bit, on. But yeah, a little bit. He's not, but, he's, he's yeah, he's not, not like, he's not he hasn't drank the Kool-Aid too much. Right. You know? That's why he came on here. Yeah. If he was more into it, he'd be like, you are, you, it is below me to speak to such as you. Right. Are widely accepted and seriously discussed outside of the misogynist circle jerk that is the... Okay, so ser there's, by, by seriously discussed, you mean everyone just agrees that that's how that is. How is that? A, how do you get? How do you decide that everyone in just total agreement? Yep, yep, yep. You're right. Well, everyone, we're right. No, no one disagrees. How is that a serious well, look, look agree, the uh, discussion? Look at the caption. Sounds like feminism is your religion, bitch. Why don't you want to have a debate with me? So he's essentially, he already knows what people are going to say. And he's basically framing it in this way where it's like the irrational mob is just at the doorstep. Fuck you, bitch, kill And it's like, we can't have a rational discussion with these people. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it never occurred to Steve that the reason that so many people fucking uh, go after modern feminism is because the ideas behind it fucking suck. I guess that that explanation goes right out the window. It must be misogyny or, or you know, pro-rape culture. Some pejorative term that applies to you. Yes, of course. Atheist community on YouTube. But lest you think that sexism is the only form of bigotry running rampant in atheist spaces on YouTube, let me assure you, number two, 
It also has a racism well, problem. Shoe drops. And it's the best kind of racism, too. The willfully oblivious kind. One of the most subscribed to atheists on YouTube recently made videos espousing his views that, for example, black Americans who speak out against racial injustice are part of a victim cult. Or... Who could that be? Who said that? <laughs> They're so, he's so pitiful, he won't, he won't even say- he, He's not mentioning this person by name, He doesn't want to so give don't you any credit, TJ. Me? Uh, I don't- you think he's up on me? Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, pre that. I'm pretty sure. Uh-oh. Look at that- okay. look at that free shot, dude. <laughs> yep. That's a pretty dude, looks, decent one. You could- You ever you see that fucking E.T. ripoff Mac and me? He looks like yeah. Mac, dude. <laughs> yes, he, <does. laughs> he looks like fucking Mac in that picture, dude. <laughs> he does, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, fuck me. The displacement of black folks by gentrification isn't a problem because it results in nicer neighborhoods with fewer thugs hanging around. Or my, uh, I mean, like it does, doesn't it? It sorry. Where would you rather go? Truth. Yeah, I mean, like I love this shit. If I if I took to Steve Jobs like in a car, I'm like, all right, Steve Jobs. Steve, Steve Jobs. I call him. <laughs> I'm so fucking high. Then, if I took Steve Jobs into my fucking car, that'd be cool. Yeah, He's Steve Jobs. Me now. We're gonna go. I mean, like, you want to go to the ghetto? I'll drop you off in the, either the middle of the ghetto or the middle of some fucking yuppie, gentrified yeah, yuppie. yuppie fucking bullshit. Your choice, Steve. Where you want to go, buddy? Um, yeah. I'm hood, pretty sure man. Steve really hasn't hung out in the hood. You can just tell by the way he acts and carries himself. He, he doesn't really realize what it's like, you know, I mean, he can say all day long he's against it, and that's fine. I, I believe maybe he truly is, but at the same time, he wouldn't want to go there. Dude, he wouldn't even, he'd probably be uncomfortable hanging out where we were this fucking, uh, week. For fuck's sake. Little pussy bitch. Personal favorite, the true outrage isn't racism, but people calling people like him racists. Because why would anyone think that the white guy who makes a virtue out of publicly not giving a shit about black people was a racist? It's ridiculous! How do, yeah, I don't, I don't how do remember you, TJ saying he doesn't give a yeah, shit about black people. I don't remember people. that either. You don't remember that, I was TJ? Wondering, when I was you were like, I don't give a shit about black people. Let me tell you something, guys. Fuck black people, all right? Now, like, when was, what video did you watch, dipshit? Yeah. Um, no. There was nothing like that in the videos I made. Well, they just the have to lie. Race. You know, we were, we were actually talking about this with, uh, yesterday with Galen, and we're just like, the, the SJW is, is like, look, the, the way they present themselves, like, they just try to have this controlling narrative and everything else. They, they, if they can't, if they have no evidence or no proof, they just lie. They lie, lie, lie. That's all Steve's doing right now. TJ, you just want every black person dead in a ditch. You know, I mean, TJ? Like, who's the disingenuous one here? When, like, in order to defeat your argument, he has to claim that you said something that you clearly never said. <laughs> like, what that's what I meant, we... Paul. That's what I meant. You gotta realize. You gotta read between the lines. Right. Got it. Oh, so Steve got is got now it. the arbiter of reality. Oh, I understand. Fucking retarded monkey-looking motherfucker. <gasps> Hang on, I'm not done. Number three, it has a religious bigotry problem, too. The ugliest religious bigotry in the YouTube atheist community is, of course, directed at Muslims, who are commonly stereotyped as potential terrorists, and whose religion is viewed as inherently worse and more dangerous than any other. But there's... Yeah, with no evidence to back up these claims, right? Steve, how many terrorist attacks have occurred this year? They said in Europe there's been a terrorist attack roughly 80 every 84 hours. And, you know, there's a... What's the defining, you know, trait? Uh, their religious beliefs. But that's not... That's, let's not talk about that. Let's just... Oh, and it was a, you know, that's a Scotty, no, it was a wide variety of different religious backgrounds, right? It was Muslims, but it was also Hindus and Buddhists and Christians and Jainists oh. and Taoists, right? Mm. No, I'm sorry. Oh. It wasn't. Okay. So it was It was just all Muslims, it was, it was mostly? The, it was the religion of peace. Oh, shit. Yeah. Fuck. <clears throat> So it seems, so, Steve, so, like it kind of seems like there's a, like some something to that. Sorry. Like these fucking idiot atheists on YouTube's don't ignore reality to preserve the feelings of other people. They're monsters. And they also, as if there's no nuance. It's like that's, that's why every time any person I see that's at all intelligent discusses this and the way we're doing it, they have to say, well, it's not all Muslims. And it's like, 
Everyone already understands that, but see, the, the, they've driven the narrative so far that you basically have to actually have this nuance to the argument, which we, which we should have. But with them, it's like, if you say anything even like this, like, hey, Islam, you know, isn't a race, it isn't that, or, you know, it's not this, th you know, group that you can't just, you know, obviously say is a monolithic uh, entity and everyone all agrees. Obviously, there's a lot of dissent and fighting and strife in, these, in this religion. But at the same time, you can't say these people aren't Muslims that are doing these things. No. Yeah, you can. Thank you. Yeah. Still plenty of judgmental condescension left over for Christians and religious folks uh, in as general. Not Many YouTube things. atheists will still cite belief in God. Did Steve Chives just uh, condemn condescension? Because, uh... Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean... <laughs> um... <laughs> Mm, okay. <laughs> as evidence of mental illness, thus denigrating religious folks and the mentally ill at the same time. Not that they give a shit. <laughs> Pushing the religious <laughs> into the do. mud and then pointing and laughing at them is one of YouTube atheism's most treasured pastimes. That might be why, number four, it's addicted to drama and conflict. Some of them. Uh, so is the entire world. Yeah, I mean, what do Dude. people want to watch? What are, you, what are you doing right yeah. now, Steve? Steve, I'd never push you into the mud, buddy. I would not want to get that mud dirty with you. I mean, like, well, <laughs> right. so, so, so he wasn't trying to start any drama when he had that guy that wrote the article about you on his channel. No, nah, man. Yeah, dude, sitting, dude, sitting you know around. What? Let me tell you something about Steve Shives. Let me tell you something about Steve Shives. You remember that when I fucking in that video I made to him, um, I pointed out that uh, he kind of like treated Shayra pretty weird about her telling him telling him she was raped and shit. Yeah, you know. Um, a couple of people asked him, like, shouldn't you, maybe you should apologize to Shayra. You guys can put this behind you and stuff. He's like, no, I can't apologize because that would be drama. What? So what? apologizing to a rape victim is no, drama, it's not. dude. No, it's not, Steve. Even privately, even just going up to her privately and be like, Shayra, I'm sorry about uh, what I did if that hurt your feelings or whatever. That would be drama. I mean, wasn't there also evidence that he said he tried to take your channel down? Yeah. And, I oh, mean, but you know what? I've had his fans come to me on Twitter and just flat out, you have no proof that Steve did anything to your channel. It's like, yeah, I have proof of him saying, I have screenshots of him saying just that. Well, no, you don't. No, you don't. You really don't. Because you know. Dude, that's, that's what SJWs know. have to do. If, 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 the, you, if you have the evidence, you're like, no, what you're saying is bullshit. Then they just lie. Like, no, you don't only have it. You made it up. I don't agree with that. He didn't do that. I love how he keeps like posting these memes. I'm sorry, memes that are like mocking people who want debate. Like these idiots want to debate. Well, if they're such idiots, why don't you debate them and beat them? Should be no problem to beat them in a debate. Make them look like the idiots they are, and then your position looks better. The reason you fucking reject debate is not because the people who want to debate you're idiots. It's because you think you're going to get beaten in the fucking debate. You stupid piece of shit. Just like you were beaten in the debate with fucking Shayra and uh, whoever else was in that fucking call with you. They fucking trounced your ass. Everyone fucking saw it. That's why you fucking bear a grudge against them, because they made you look like the fucking fool you are. And you know that if you had to debate pretty much anyone on YouTube that you, would, that you fucking um, vaguely fucking snipe at in these fucking videos, they would all kick your ass. Sargon would fucking kick your ass. I would kick your ass. Fucking anybody. Any of the anti-SJWs. Even like the shittiest anti-SJW on YouTube who could barely fucking get a sentence out would trounce your fucking ass because you're that fucking stupid and you're that fucking wrong. Most watched atheists on YouTube today began making videos in response to creationists. Yeah. Some of them conducted themselves with class, dignity, and intellectual honesty, striving to have civil conversations with often exasperating adversaries. But even back in those less fractious early years, before the community's pervasive racism and sexism how is this a community? Surfaced, the Steve, most popular... explain to me how the YouTube atheist community is really truly a community. What, what makes it a community? Because people say they're atheists. I mean, we know that there's people who say they're atheists. They're totally on every political part of the spectrum and whatever else you want to look at in life. This isn't really a defined community like that. I mean, there's people that post content and there's people that watch it. It's not really much of a community. Oh, some people leave comments, you know. Some some other shit happens in real life because of YouTube, sure, but it's not like a tight community. And it's always going to be fractious. Are there any more of those? Their personalities were those who gleefully Maybe. bullied their targets. 
Small wonder then that once the creationist opponents had been exhausted, the bullies turned and found new enemies within atheist circles. And it turns out that most people who enjoyed watching obnoxious white... Okay, that's not how it went down. Um, let me tell you what really happened. What happened was everyone was attacking religion and then all of a sudden the atheist plus motherfuckers came about and just started saying like, if you're an atheist, you gotta believe in feminism too. And we're all just like, no, we don't agree with that. No. You know, and we're just like, no, that's that's dumb. Please, uh, just, you know, you can be a feminist, that's cool, but we don't have to be feminists to be atheists. We're still atheists, even if we don't believe in feminism. And they're like, no, you're not, because atheism plus means that, you know, atheism is more than just not believing in God now. Now atheism has its own dogma, and we're like, no, that's fucking stupid. And everyone pretty much agree with us that you're stupid and you had your little weird cult of people who are like we're the true atheists you guys and you're not because the vast majority of the atheist community is like you thinks you guys are retarded we left we left religion partially to escape fucking dogma in the fucking first place so why would we fucking turn away from one dogma just to have you supplement it with another like yeah be obedient to Dude, us now and our rules and fuck they, you and they, when they brought all this shit into all the atheist conventions look at the other attendance of these Conventions. They used. They were. They were higher five years ago than they were now. I would of actually they were. rather. I would actually rather be a Christian than a fucking member of Atheism Plus. Like, <laughs> just balancing those two things. I think that like, at least the fucking Christians are honest. You know what I mean? Like, if, at least at least they're honest about the fact they can't fucking prove anything and they can't fucking. Like this Atheism Plus thing, just like tacking on a bunch of extra shit to something that doesn't need it. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Especially Dude's like if attacked. Steve Shives is the head of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck that. Now I'm he looks like the turtle Steve from uh, the Never Ending Story, dude. <laughs> More of the ancient one, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Christians were just as entertained by watching those. Yeah, um, I think he's actually sinking into the swamp of sadness. That actually explains <laughs> a lot. Well, actually, well, that's his life. I actually yeah. have a Come video on. of. Don't Steve. you mean that's his wife? Ah, <laughs> her vagina is Damn. the swamp of sadness, dude. I have a video of him like contradicting himself, like old Steve Shives versus new Steve. Oh yeah, yeah. Can we see it? Is yeah. it is it cued? Yeah, it's right. Here. Oh, let's see that. Yeah. That sounds. You funny. have the right under the law to express yourself. You're protected legally. You're protected you know, It looks like he's got a little more weight on him, but he honestly looks better here. Oh yeah, he looks Way much better. better. <laughs> he looks healthy. He looks like he actually has like things in his life that are positive. Institutionally yeah. in expressing yourself. But too often we as a culture will impose a non-legal a sort of an informal punishment upon people who say unpopular or controversial or ugly things. And we won't demand that Don I must be thrown in jail for what he said, because we know that can't happen. But we'll demand that he lose his job. We'll appeal not to the government, but to his employer and say, you should fire that guy. You should not have that guy on TV. Um, I love the website Media Matters. I think they do a great service. Uh, uh, but their 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 calls for people to to boycott Glenn Beck's show or or their attempts at shaming Glenn Beck's sponsors to drop his show. I Dude, let's build a time machine. Go back in time, abduct this Steve Shives, bring him to now. Show him what he becomes. And, and then him send him back with that knowledge, it. you know. Just Let's see what he does. Gun and say, Here you go, Steve. This is you in eight years. <laughs> do what you gotta do, bud. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, Paul is Pennywise. Uh, successful, by the way. Um, I mean, I'm sympathetic in a way because I don't agree with much of what Glenn Beck says either, and I think a lot of what he says is just is just hideous. But I I don't get the the impulse to to silence him. I don't well, you get it now. Yeah, you get Congratulations, it. Congratulations, now you get it. Yeah, you figured out how to nurture that particular human impulse, because that's what you do now. You talk about how people shouldn't be able to say what they say, and talk about how you need to deplatform people who don't agree with you. Look at you, Steve. Well, well he's bought in wholesale. <laughs> When you buy into this, Paul, when you buy into this narrative and this cult, which they, I feel like they are pretty much a cult, that you have to parrot everything. And, you know, we saw before he kind of had a right, like, you know what, I don't agree with Glenn Beck, but if he wants to say, have his say, let him have his say. And now I mean, he'd be like, nope. 
like this Steve Shives looked like he got sun every once in a while, and I'm not talking <laughs> shit. I don't look like I get sun, but I'm not. I'm, I'm also not facing down, you know, old me versus new me, completely contradicting everything that I fucking believe. <laughs> look at look at look at this picture. Like, look at you here. I'm not. I mean, you're not the best looking dude ever, but you look like yeah, you look like a happy fucking guy. Look I don't at you think now. That that's the sort of environment that we should have. His lazy eye is not even as lazy now. It looks pretty much all right. When we're discoursing with each other, it should be a discourse. It should be an engagement. It should be a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So now... It's not speech without consequence. Respecting free speech doesn't mean that there There's can't be negative Shives. consequences for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. If I'm making racist or misogynistic comments online and my boss finds out about it and fires my ass, that doesn't mean that my boss doesn't respect free speech. If someone else sees me making bigoted comments and calls me out on it, that doesn't mean that they don't respect free speech. Respecting disagreement is a crucial part of the concept of free speech, but respecting disagreement doesn't mean respecting every disagreeing opinion, no matter how ignorant or toxic that opinion. Wow. Well, yeah, but the difference is, is that, well, one, you guys act as if, you know, someone says something and their boss just happens to find out and goes, I can't believe this person said this, I'm firing them. You guys go out of your way to make sure, like, oh, this person did disagree with us on the internet, so let's get them fired, let's write letters to their employer, let's do this, you know, let's have this tactic of trying to basically say, if you have these opinions, we're going to make sure you get you lose your job. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay, because uh, I mean, they're I, racist. They're when did sexist. This idea, when did this idea that respect is is uh, a, a, an important component of free speech, like, wh how did he establish that premise? I don't respect a fucking thing that comes out of this man's mouth. But unlike him, I'm not going to go flag him for it. I'm not going to get him silenced. I'm not going to try and get him removed from fucking YouTube. I'm going to let him say his stupid shit, and if it's worthy of covering, I'll cover it. And if not, I'll let him say it in his little echo chamber. Like, that's what free speech is about, Steve. It's not about how much you respect somebody's opinion. You don't have to respect anything. There's no, the word respect doesn't even fucking appear in the First Amendment. You don't have to respect anything. You just have to fucking allow them to say what they want to say. Actually, respect does that's appear in the First Amendment. With. It says respecting oh, it? an establishment <laughs> of religion. Oh, well, yeah. 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 Not, not, in the, not in the context that I'm using it. Yeah, I, you're right. I mean, like, in that the context great. you're talking about, it doesn't. But it actually Respect does. doesn't appear. Actually, it does. <laughs> yeah, the First Amendment doesn't say, you have to respect every fucking opinion you hear. Yeah, it doesn't say that. It's no, never of been, course. It's never been a fucking part of the uh, free speech. Or that wouldn't even make any sense. That's, that's like the antithetical to what free speech is about. It's about people being able to say unpopular things. Yes, Paul's really grasp it. It exceeded his reach on that one, huh, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking did. piece of shit. So we're going to play a, a different cloth. video that Anecdotal. that someone sent me. What? That's critical of TJ. Okay. Good. Oh. Uh. Theme music. This is not annoying or anything. Such a nice fucking day now. Ugh. The cut king himself. Steve well, we watched Shires. like five minutes it of it. It was just a joke. How many times have we heard that? How many times have we said that when we're trying to defend ourselves against someone who takes offense at something we've said? We say, relax, it's only a joke. Or when someone tells a joke that really, really pisses somebody off, they say to the offended party, Hey, chill out. What, what's wrong? You, you can't take a joke? You really need to learn to take a joke. How many times have we said that when someone got pissed off at us for some light remark, or what we thought was a light remark uh, that we made? They get really pissed off at us. They're, they get in our face. They call us an asshole. We say, God. You're describing your uh, relationship at this point in the video? Yeah. Or... Can't you take a joke? Well, this video is going to be about why we shouldn't do that. Why that is a bullshit response when someone is offended by a joke. Either a joke that we tell or a joke that someone else tells. It's not a valid argument to say, 
it's just a joke, therefore you have oh, no right to be upset about it. But hearing before hearing I get too far into it, <laughs> I want to call your attention to the description box of this video where you will find links to two articles. Uh, one is an article by Jessica Goldstein, which is in large part um, an interview with Jason Steed, who Ooh, made who? a series of tweets on this subject last week. Oh, a series oh, of tweets? Oh, how oh riveting. man. Is that like is that like equivalent to like <clears throat> writing like a research paper yeah. now? Uh, a series Pretty of tweets cool. on the subject. Published a very bad. influential series of tweets oh. on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to reading those tweets. Very wow, crazy. Wow. And then the other is a blog article by John Scalzi, and both of these articles uh, refer primarily to the Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Second Amendment comments. Um, and then the excuse that was offered that all oh, Trump was just joking. Uh, both of these articles are excellent. They articulate uh, feelings and opinions and insights on this issue that I share, but that are articulated in a great more detail and much more uh, eruditely than I'm going to be able to offer you in this video. Uh, this video owes a great debt to both of those articles. And so this is just uh, me talking directly to Steve Shives' girlfriend. Can you just finish the job already? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, delivery. yeah, like, um, yeah. take him out know, to pasture. Old, 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 old Steve ain't looking, you know. The spirit's gone. Yeah, it's time to it's time to trade him in for another one. So just, uh, you know, rip his balls off, shove him down his throat, or whatever method of killing you were planning on doing whenever you sucked out all of his life energy, which we've reached that point clearly. Um, it's time. It's time to put him down. It's time to move on. Uh, time to get your hooks in someone. Maybe you can make Thunderfoot a fucking crazy pussy feminist or something. You know, it's a good project. You know, you can fucking pick out some other uh, good YouTuber and drain them of all their talent and charisma. It'll be good. You'll love it. Uh, you can start back from scratch, you know, get that new feeling of excitement. Because uh, this one, this one's done. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Steve Shives uh, continues to hemorrhage subscribers. Uh, last month, he, uh, or this, you know, in the last 30 days, I guess, someone told me he lost 200 uh, more subscribers. And uh, he's been losing them consistently, even before I made my video to him. But that just sped it up. Let's see where he's at. Like, if you go look at his, uh, go look his at his fucking, blade. go look at his social blade. It's really an interesting, uh, it's an interesting little gander. You can see um, his daily. I, mean, I, can't, I can't imagine why, with with scintillating, you know, populist content like telling a joke is bad. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> You know, Why don't uh, people want to hear that lose, message? Huh? Yeah. We all need to be uptight assholes. I mean, come on. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, in the last 30 days, he's lost 221. Oh, good job, Steve. <laughs> you're doing well, Steve. <laughs> you're Keep doing, you're fucking... Look at it. You know, you, you, Steve listens to his audience very closely. And when and when he's just making content they love, he just keeps he just keeps down that path, and it's it's pretty pretty clear that pretty, his strategy his strategy has been good. Pretty much yeah, every yeah. pretty much every day is a net loss. Oh yeah, why 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 would it not be, Steve? Um, what are you gonna do when literally no one is left to listen to you? That's why I want to know. What's your plan for when the when, the, when it counts back down to zero and just literally no one you, on earth? You know what I'm shit. sure in Steve's mind, what's going on is like if I just feeds into his persecution complex, like see, I'm mm -hmm. speaking the truth now and people are attacking me and like they're fleeing me because the truth is just too hard for people to handle. When the day finally comes that his videos just sit at zero views forever, he's probably just gonna kill himself in that room <laughs> with that music playing. <laughs> 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 I hope he times it to the music in a comedic way, you know. Like you see him fiddling with the knot. <laughs> you know, I want it timed to the music, man. It's going to be beautiful. He can hang himself right next to Egghead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think Damn. I think we should wrap it up. All right. Wrap what up? The show. The show? Uh, I like the show? There's a show, damn. We should go. I think we should go a couple more hours, man. Two hours and fifteen minutes is what we're on right now. Oh uh, man, we gotta keep going. We gotta go five hours with this. Five hours, oh, yeah. My God. Five, five hour show. Well, now we'll go off because you know what? They got they got more content. If you guys really don't want the show to end, you can go buy the fucking um, 
special Tommy <laughs> Sotomayor episode. Yeah, it looks like 66 people have already Ooh, gotten 66. it. 66, I like that <clears throat> number, man. 67. Ooh. Yeah, it's only two ninety nine. It's our cheapest video, and we it, it's a long episode. And it's exclusive. It's never been seen by anyone before. It's brand new. We only shot it today. So, uh, yeah, man, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's torturous in a way because Tommy's so insufferable, but... If you want to see Tommy Sotomayor really just get burnt down to the fucking ashes and then us piss on the ashes, it's it's good to watch, you know. It, it does take its toll on us, though. Oh yeah, we don't we don't we don't escape unscathed. I mean, we don't escape unscathed, man. We get fucked up too. Yep. Especially Paul. Like Paul was like bet down like three HP, dude. I thought we were gonna yeah. have to revive him with a potion or some shit. I was really. I almost needed a phoenix down. I was really dude, low. And then Paul had a fucking terrible shit after. Like just his day has just been going downhill. Yeah, I think that that uh, the shit, the fucking horrible shit he took was probably related to watching that. It is, know? man. I, I'm yeah, almost I sure. Think, I think, yeah, I think, I think watching all that Tommy Sotomayor stirred the demon in my bowels. Yeah, it was like we must punish Paul for this transgression. He swallowed too much of Tommy's bullshit, and now, <laughs> you know. It's good. But anyway, you guys should check that out. We, we had a fun time doing it. Well, actually, it was miserable, but we got through it, man. And it's good. I think I think the final result speaks for itself and is pretty awesome, especially yeah. if you really fucking want to see Tommy get taken a task. So check that out in the description section down below. It's fucking on Vimeo 299. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Dude, really? I would have grown, but you said I was gonna do it, so I didn't. Uh, I saw, but you made. Yeah. Dude, your intro music literally sounds like what's going on in a fucking Down syndrome kid's mind. <laughs> I mean, like, what the fuck, Steve? Why? What about that music? Like, when you hear that music, what about that to you says, like, that's me. That sums me up. You, you, like, you really have that low of an opinion? Like, I hate your guts. And even I have a higher opinion of you than... It's fucking horrible. Good, but it's, it's the off... Stop. It's the off Monday ramble, TJ. Just stop. It's wacky and zany. This is what's killing the atheist movement, guys. This rather melodramatic it deserves question to was die. posed a uh, week before last by David Smalley on an episode of Dogma Debate and a corresponding blog article. What is it? What is it called? I've never heard anyone that listens to it. Uh, and uh, it was responded to by PZ Myers, and then David oh, and PZ okay. appeared PZ together Myers, on the dude. next episode of Dogma Debate, and they sort of had a debate about it, and some Dogma other people debate. who were... Welcome, guys, to another edition of uh, Dogma Debate. <laughs> what a terrible... Oh, my God, you know look at this screenshot. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> fuck, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Fuck her up, Buttercup. <laughs> oh, man, this is one of those times where you people listen to the audio version of this shit are really missing out. Yeah. Wow, what a beautiful face. Just screen cap it and crop us out of it. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, screen cap this. Screen cap this, everyone. You're gonna want this. You're gonna want this for your collection. <laughs> I want to see so many memes of this. It's a, a uh, rare shot, dude, dude. I mean, like, does it even need a caption? I don't even know. If no, someone, no, it if, would be great if it, someone can come up with something fitting. I guess. Oh, you know, people will. But shit, man, I don't know. It kind of speaks for itself. I would just put on the bottom like Steve Shives. It's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Dude, I've, I've edited videos of mine for years now, so I've seen pretty much every facial expression I've got. You know, because I'll fucking be <coughs> pausing and shit. And it's, I'm, you know, I've seen myself pause on some weird, like... Maybe, I ain't never seen no shit like that, man. Maybe the only he can deal with his life is like he's just heavily medicated at all times. I have never seen myself make a face like that. All and right. if I ever do... Time to move on. Dead. Hope you guys all got your screenshots in. Just crop us out, man. Just do it, man. Just crop us on out. We're involved in the situation that precipitated. Uh, God, uh, why did they use that fucking word? Situation. End of it. David Smalley to write that blog post and ask that uh, question. Uh, 
wrote their own commentaries on it. And I have a bunch of stuff linked in the description box of this video that you can listen to and read if you want. What I'm going to say uh, is not a direct response to any of it, but all of it has sort of got me to think about a few things uh, that are related to the question of what is wrong with the atheist Dude, movement or what is killing the atheist movement. Don't you realize movement? how they always say that they don't want to directly respond it. to it? They always like do, the, do this weird tactic of like, I know people have said things about me or said something I don't agree with, but I'm not going to directly respond to it. But yeah, you are directly responding to it because that's why you brought it all up. You know, so you are directly responding to it. Yep. Oh, man, this is another pretty good one. But he's just a fucking... Steve is just a fucking goofy fucking face machine. His face just looks like it's always melting, dude. Um, and questions about how we approach conflict with other atheists and all sorts of other things that I have talked about. Other atheists that are tall, other atheists that have blonde hair, that wear glasses, uh, but no one specific. A little bit before in the past, uh, but I've just had these sorts of questions and, and problems churning around in my head for the last two weeks uh, while thinking about this problem this issue um so i'm gonna just blather on about it for a few minutes i love that i'm an issue dude issue uh, dude i'm an issue you'd, I'm you'd think you'd be anyone you'd think he'd be more worried watching his steadily falling youtube numbers like that would be more worrisome to him no and and if you want to know a little bit more about what has inspired me to talk about this right now, the links are in the description <clears> box. You can check it out for yourself. First of all, I don't think anything is killing the atheist movement. But I do think there are some things holding the atheist movement back. <laughs> some and things. what is holding the movement Dude, back you're holding everything from, back, TJ. Uh, making that progress? Well, in the minds of some people, one of the things holding us back is that it's uh, too difficult for atheists to get along. We, we fight amongst each other too much. We have too many inter-atheist <clears throat> squabbles. And that keeps us from... Jeez, it's almost like the disbelief in some ridiculous notion of a god doesn't necessarily make us allies on everything else in the world. Yep. I mean, it's almost like that. It's I don't know. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Jeez, we're all atheists. Why can't we just all politically align ourselves with what Steve Shives uh, think is the best idea? Dude, Steve Shives comments in Sip It. It's like, let's have this free thinker, rational like uh, worldview. But at the same time, uh, on everything else besides atheism, we'll just fall, fall into line, have the same opinion and ideas about everything. It's like, Steve, you really want that? The pause thing really is just automatic with him, too. Like, every time we pause, he, he looks like a guy that just, like... <laughs> farted and a little shit <laughs> slipped out <laughs> focusing on the big picture issues and making progress and to an extent i agree but when some of the most visible members of the atheist community are blatant anti-feminists and rape apologists. <laughs> rape apologists. And, and rape overall, apologists. Just bad, overall just really bad people rape or is great Remember Rape that? Remember is that? Awesome. I think I think he may call you racist too. Let's see. <gasps> Platforms oh. to espouse. Do I hear racism? Do I hear racism? racism? Just oh, racism. racism! I have racism. Flat out racism. I say that what we need to do as people is is uh, we need to rape all the other races. <laughs> to be awesome. We need to rape all the other. I'm saying that as the most influential atheist on YouTube. We need to form rape gangs. Or Atheist use their platforms games. to yeah. incite abuse and harassment against others. Oh, to you incite take it. Part in cyberbullying to attempt to use their mob of followers to silence other people. <laughs> These are not <laughs> trivial problems. Okay, which well, you're, dude, you're so guilty of that. You tried to silence TJ with numerous, uh, through numerous channels and attempts. Like not only what? that, like okay, at some point you just can't help having a bigger channel. I mean, you know, if you respond to someone. Yeah, there's a mob attached to you. Is he ever not making a stupid face? No. I mean, what the fuck? His face is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> the fatuous faces of uh, Steve Shives. <laughs> All right. And these are not people. The people who... In yes! Dude, what is it? Now. 
You want me to speed them up? Behavior. No. They are I'm trying fellow to get I'm trying to see if I can get a really good one. Mine. Unfortunately, I'm embarrassed to say that, but they are fellow atheists of mine. I have no interest in <laughs> oh, getting along that was a good one. I have no interest in making peace with them. I don't want to <clears throat> unify with them, and I don't particularly want to be a part of an atheist movement that seeks to unify with them. I, we agree. You know, in this video, he he mostly says that it's not only people like TJ. He doesn't say TJ directly, of course. Does. But it, it, it's not only uh, it's not only people like you, but uh, it's also people on his side that don't have such a big problem with you. Right. That are of like course. you need to like <laughs> yeah you know so well um, his side is shrinking. Uh, his channel is shrinking. Um, what do you really need to say? Um, well, because the only way to stay aligned with Steve... I mean, like, I don't... You, you know why it's shrinking? This? Because you have to... Because it was Steve... You have to agree with Steve about everything. If you... If there's one... If there's one disagreement, you're like, you're out of his club. Like, nope, you don't agree with me on that, you're gone. Yeah, and just to, uh... I mean, like... He'll just sit around... I mean, like, I guarantee it's not... It's not just me he's sitting here characterizing as... Uh, right. Sure. Racist. Sexist. Um, rape apologist. Um, he's 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 cat. He's painting a uh, Thunderfoot with this brush. He's painting Sargon of Akkad with this brush. Um, I don't know if he knows who people like Chris Reagan and shit are, but if he, if so, he's painting them with the brush. I mean, anybody who's I mean, there's a ton of fucking people who make videos on SJW shit, and uh, maybe some of them you could make a case that they've said some problematic shit. But the vast majority, no. There, no one is fucking exhibiting like blatant racism, sexism, <clears throat> or rape apology shit. I mean, if anything, Steve Shives is the fucking rape apologist because he he believes in fucking rape culture. I mean, rape culture. What is rape? Rape culture is basically saying, oh well, this rapist raped this girl. Right. Well, it's because of rape culture. It's not. Yeah. It's not him. So you're basically apologizing for him. You're saying that he's a victim of the fucking culture. I totally agree. So fuck you. If anyone's a fucking rape apologist here, it's you, fucking Steve <laughs> Shives, you miserable sack of shit. Yeah, yeah. He's, so true. He's blaming a cultural phenomenon on why rapes occur. Yeah. Instead of just blaming the person who committed it. It's ridiculous. And that's why um, um, logic and SJWs don't fucking mix, you know. So I, I'm not at all surprised. That's why even Rain, which is a, a major victims platform, has come out and said, "Look, this whole rape culture thing is ridiculous. Just stop with this." It's a it's a fucking feminist talking point in sideshow. That's all it is. That's really all. That's really all it ever has ever wanted. They want it to be like they just have buzzwords they like to say, and that's just one of them. Rape culture is uh, rape apologism, of course. One of the problems, I think, with the atheist movement, and one of the things that is holding it back, is not that we can't get along. It's that the perception is that we as a group are perfectly fine with the loud, obnoxious, bullying, bigoted members of our group. We'll just pretend they aren't there, even though they have, in many cases, hundreds of thousands of followers on social media and are leaving a very large footprint in atheist why, why circles. Why do you think that is? Are, uh, why why yeah, do you I mean, think like, that is, Steve? Why do you think that these people's popularity is expanding and yours is shrinking? Why, why would you say that? And, and that's yeah. not... Could it be that we're more representative of what this group <laughs> thinks than, and wants than he is? It's like he can't stand that, uh, that you know, no one wants the bullshit he's selling, so he has to blame fucking everyone else. It's like, oh... You know, we gotta get this movement back on track. It's like, motherfucker, you're you're the one who splintered off into some weird cultish bullshit, bitch. Yeah, if anything, you need to get back on track, Steve. You fucking cretin as fuck. Oh, Jesus, Ryby. <laughs> it's it's janky Rybins. Uh, janky yeah, Rybins. <laughs> Why don't we just fucking, why don't we just all quit the show and just let Ryby take over since she's obviously just so talented and great. All right, cool. I can't hear. We can't her. hear. We can't hear yeah. you, Ryby. You got no well, fucking volume, bitch. Your mic is muted. You're fucking stupid. No. no. <laughs> Fail. Fail. Wrong. What is wrong no. with you? You're alive on this fucking show. What's wrong and with we you? Hear shit. You Ryby's a crazy. You're failing. No. 
Hardcore. Boo. Ryby sucks. Ryby sucks. Ryby sucks. Okay, you know what? Ryby sucks. Damn, I thought Egghead was bad, but damn, Ryby. He can at least get his audio right. Ryby is the female Egghead, dude. Boo. <clears throat> No oh, volume. the DP subreddit's gonna be blowing up about this little <laughs> incident later. <laughs> Why is that so funny over and over and over again? Because you know he's saying it. What is the staying power of that fucking remark? I think it's because he I, actually I said it twice in a yeah, row, like on two consecutive act, shows. It's, it's something a human being has actually said. Yeah. Unironically. You know? It's one of those sentences that you never thought you'd ever hear. Is this better? Yes. yes. There you go. Yeah, well, well, not really. Fuck, not man. really, because now I can hear you, but whatever. True. Oh my god. I was talking shit that whole time. That's not fair. Well, your shit talk was lost to time, much like you will be. <laughs> All right. <coughs> What's up, guys? Paul, I heard you're not feeling well. Sorry to hear um, that. And, uh, um, I'm he's feeling fine. all right. He's all yeah, right. Yeah, I'm fine. You need to he's, fucking put a smile on your face, okay? He's livening yeah, up a bit doing the show. You're going to make Paul feel a whole lot better real soon. Paul loves the show so much, it always puts him in a good mood. Right, Paul? It does. It, yeah. Well, by the end of every show, I'm in a good mood. So What yeah, a lying, I guess fat so. tub of shit, <laughs> yeah, dude. Know, yeah, that is fuck, one lying yeah, son of a yeah, bitch, man. Yeah, right, Paul. I see Paul at the end of the night. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. All right, bye. Bye, all right, bye guys. Fuck yes. Or maybe, maybe it's his desire for Whataburger. I don't know. Dude, I could go for some fast food right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, Same. man. Dude, the fucking what a, what the, the fucking the truth story that, of the yeah, century. Yeah, the fucking truth that just uh, comes out of Tj's mouth. Like the first thing is, I want fast food. I'm sorry, I didn't give you time to play the t the story time with Tj uh, intro before I let that loose that uh, gem. Yeah. All right, arouse me with your reading. <coughs> okay. I'm, I'm excited, except for you're not going to be too aroused by this, because it's going to be kind of Jewish and kind of grandmother-ish. So I know you're straight, oh, TJ. Man. I know you always have been. You know, I lo know you love the pussy and you watch straight porn. But you've always been curious about male-on-male -male stuff. So lately, you've been more curious, you know, obviously, as you're reading the Craigslist ads, looking <laughs> at the pics and getting real excited. Bubbala. I'm not for everyone, okay, TJ? Bubbala. I'm 60, okay? I'm married, okay? I'm bisexual, and I love guys who want to experiment. So, you know, let me be in control. It's okay. You know, you could be touched and fondled and caressed and, you know, kissed and oiled up, you know, like a Thanksgiving turkey. You can be stroked and maybe even edged and perhaps sucked. You know, being married, perhaps, hosting yeah. is a challenge. You know, hosting is a challenge for me, TJ, so you can't really come up and up in my house. Um, I'm open for some ideas, though. So last thing, you know, weekday mid-mornings is my time. And, you know, limited to the San Jose areas where I grew up. And, uh, you know, anything that interests you, you know, just chat and let me know. Younger sub cut is a plus. If you just want to chat, just please put experiment in the subject to cut down, you know, on the spam responses. Okay? Yeah. This ads, TJ, this ad is perfect for you, dude. You should contact this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. No, I can't stop hearing him as a Jewish woman now. Dude, oh. who doesn't who doesn't want to be touched, fondled, caressed, kissed, oiled, stroked, and edged? Perhaps <laughs> there sucked. There you go. Perhaps sucked. Perhaps. None of those things sound unpleasant <laughs> to me. Perhaps you will be sucked. Only if you're in the San Jose area, though. <clears throat> All right, so like I'm a 27 year old masculine bisexual white male, okay, and I'm five nine, 180 pounds, okay. I'm Too in shape, short. but I'm discreet, okay. So like, you need to be STD free, and I need to have you. Wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. I need to have a what? Sorry. Boo! <laughs> Boo! Ryby sucks. Ryby sucks. Ryby sucks. Ready? Right. I have a nice you think you're large being mouth that you can come and unload, okay? <laughs> as long as you're 45 or older, okay? I'm not into younger at all. So completely discreet and for sure STD free. You must double like down on that. What? I said uh, double down on the STD free thing. That's in there twice. Yeah. 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 Wow. I want to make sure Very okay, that my deck is clean, okay? I want to make sure I don't got no hurts. So you must host. Okay, or you should know of a safe place. 
And uh, I'm only looking to suck in service to you, Paul. Okay, so I don't want any reciprocation. And my <laughs> reward is to get fed a big, nice, big daddy load. Okay, I'm fed. <laughs> but I need you to email me your itch stats, and I need to know how big the load Dude. we're talking. Okay. The fucking the last one. We we need to fucking introduce the last guy to this guy. It sounds like they're a fucking match. Like le hey, yeah. Scotty's right, dude. Scotty is right. They're made for each other. Poppers are a major plus. All right. So if you're ready and sweaty and you want to get down and go to Brown Town, contact me. Okay, that wasn't wow. in there, but I added it. You're welcome. Wow. A big daddy load. I'm sorry I fucked up. Ravi can't read. Ravi really sucks. And why do you even have her on the show? She's so annoying. Like I agree. All, all valid criticism. It is fun to Paul, watch I want to, like... Paul, I want you to focus on the f term big daddy load for a second there. <laughs> I am. Let's hear... I really that am. Is the, those are the words that big pop out. Load. Big daddy load. Big daddy load. Like, what is, it, what is it with, like... I mean, whatever. I don't care what other people are into, really. But I just don't get the, like, giant load fetish. <laughs> like, what is it about, like, a, just a big load? <laughs> So we know Paul just shoots because, a little like, drop for me, now. Like for me, I'm gonna be it. honest. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. No, I don't. Like you know, but like the load is always just an inconvenience after the fact because now you've got a load to deal with. You know, wherever you deposit the load, now there's a load in play. Well, if you well, never like, bitch, then it's her problem. You know. Well, yeah, but I mean, I feel bad for her because now she's got a load to deal Fuck with. Fuck that. That's fine with me. She can I deal think with it's it. to entice them. It's like kind of like the bait, you know, in the hook. Because it's like, there's some people that are like, yeah, I can't wait to bust a nut inside of her. And so when they see that that person wants it, they're like, yeah, I'm coming for this. Well, place. yeah, no, but I'm just saying after the fact, though, let's they, that's fine. Like, yeah, I get all of that. The lead up to it, I get. But it's like <laughs> afterwards, you're just nobody wants the load anymore. Like, even if the chick was like, yeah, give me the load. Like afterwards, <laughs> she's like, fuck, I've got this load now that I'm going to deal with. This fat but Paul, but Paul, load. but Paul, think about it that way. Load. If as long as you don't have to deal with it, Paul, then you're not dealing with it, dude. True, truth. Scotty, no. Scotty, no truth, yo. I guess so. Last one. Last fucking one. <laughs> oh yeah. Jock oh, for yeah. jock jerk <laughs> session. Yeah. What's up? I'm a chill jock here, 21 hung, looking for another chill ass jock to chill with and watch porn. Maybe we got whip out that dick. Maybe start stroking. You know, hit me up if you're interested. Only jock bill, please. What the fuck? I'm a jock. What is this? I'm, I'm a sumo. You're a jock. <laughs> yeah. Like, there you go. I feel like that guy's real discreet too. Like he doesn't want anyone to know, but he's like at the gym pumping iron and shit, thinking about dicks. He's like jerk session. Dicks. Big what? Dicks. There, there's another Big one that dicks. I don't understand. I guess add that one to the big load fetish. J jerks uh, like a co-op jerk sesh. <laughs> you wouldn't jerk off with your best friend if you. Well, gay? isn't jerking Paul, off what you? I isn't thought, jerking you, off I thought you said you it do? meant something to you, Paul. What the fuck? Damn. Uh, Jesus. Isn't, isn't jerking off what you do when you can't get somebody else to, you know, like participate in your sexual activity? You can't like jerk off with your sexual partner. Are you dumb? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what I'm saying is, are you? Well, yeah, yeah, he is. I no, He's I dumb guess. As shit, I guess dude. I am dumb. He's like, dumb as that big daddy load. Like, like what if, if a girl? No, no, no. Like, I'm just saying, hey. like, whatever. Like, yeah, as foreplay and shit. Yeah, you jerk off. You know, whatever. That's fine. That's fine. But I'm just saying, like, that's all the dude wants. Like, he just wants. Yeah. He wants to sit and watch porn and jerk off with another dude in the room. Because it's yeah. spicy, it's so secret, what, you know, man? it's under the radar, you know? That's what it's he wants, dude. You wouldn't what, what jerk off with thing? CJ next What's wrong season? with you, Paul? What's wrong? If Why are you kink shaming this guy, guy dude? Paul, Paul does have a problem with homosexuality. Just, he does. You know, now that, we, uh, now that we read that and now we're looking at Steve Shives, I, I kind of feel like he wrote it. it it's think possible. So? Look at him now! Holy shit! I think he just—I think he just found a picture of a muscular dude on the internet. <laughs> He's jaw-dropping. All he can do is uh, put the. Uh, we know that his woman never lets him out of her sight, but you know he, he just got to let his dick craving build up. So, even just a response to an email written under false premises gets him hard now. He's like, yeah. Oh, someone responded to that Craigslist ad. I know I can't actually go, but I could. If only this bitch didn't have me, in, in, you know, enslaved. I think that's the, that's my that's my uh, backstory. I'm sticking to that. Sorry. <laughs> 
did you see uh, the Amos Yee video where he says that the Bible Re- Reloaded's uh, fundraiser is is garbage? Uh, no, I've heard about it. You want to see isn't it? This, isn't this the dude that pulled the rope a dope? Was who was like he <coughs> he's like he was like I support child porn, and then he was like just kidding, and now everybody's all up in arms because he said something else outrageous. Do you get to pull that twice? Uh, I think he's <coughs> just gonna. I think he just. I think he just thinks it's always gonna work. Um, no, but this is the, what this really is is like some ANCAP shit because he's an anarcho-capitalist, and um, so it's basically just like, you know, a, a lawsuit is just using the stealing. government because yeah. it's you know you stealing and it's as bad as taxation and you know whatever. It's just dumb. Yeah, and you pretty much just summed it up. Yeah, so it's, it's just like it's not oh, worth a job. Oh, this one's crazy. So the the SJW harassing the Lyft driver. Oh yeah, dude, play that video. Next video. Oh, was that the period? Yeah. It's October third, twenty sixteen, and it's time to review dude, five ben, of the ben most is, outrageous. Ben is just like, dude. yeah, dude, uh, yeah. I'm running a show <laughs> right now, <laughs> man. Fucking video. It's 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 this shit. We all live a oh. yellow tambourine. <laughs> ben also had a brownie uh, too. Yeah. And shatter. So. Can I have some of that? Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think Thanks, Ben. ben. Even if awesome, Ben said buddy. no, I think you. I don't think you'd be much, a bunch of position to resist. You'd just be like, I'm, t- I'm doing it anyways. And he'd be like, No, don't. All right. How's it taste? It tastes really good. But it's, you want some, Scotty? I have my own. I'll grab it in a okay, second. Cool. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, the lid's the lid. right there. Here's the lid. Sorry. Oh. Forgot about that lid. This has been a drinking weed lemonade moment with yeah, the drunken peasants. We- drinking weed lemonade. Now I get to listen to this sullen fucking moron. Paul. Weed oh my god, lemonade, Paul. Dude, I Paul. didn't even notice that whole time that S- Steve Shives has so little presence that I didn't even notice him there. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Steve. <laughs> I'm looking right at the <laughs> screen, you, you know? <laughs> it's like, and then Scotty says something about this fucking sullen presence. I'm like, what is he talking about? Me? Am I sullen? Is Ben sullen? Is no, Paul sullen? Well, Paul's always sullen. Yeah, oh, so shit. Steve Shives is here. You're taking up the majority of the screen, and I can't even, like, I don't even draw the eye. It's fucking crazy. Dude, it's like, you know, you know they say, like, like they, they capture a wild animal, right? It's mm. like ro- roaming the Serengeti, and then they put it in a zoo, and, you, like, you see it in its eyes. Like, it's, its spirit's been broken. Yeah, like, if even if you but, opened the cage, it would just yeah. stay in and uh, cower. That's, that's, the that's the eyes. Steve Shives. That's the, his eyes are like that. It's, I mean, yeah. for real. I'm not even making this shit up. It's like, when you look at him, it's like, whoa. Steve Damn, Steve. is basically the human personification of that lion from that Louisiana yeah. truck stop, dude. <laughs> I thought it was just a tiger, Paul. What the hell's going on? Tiger, Story so changes. Happily. It's your face, yeah. Palm 5. Let's count them down. Uh, oh, yeah. Terrible. One, Terrible music and graphics. Trump. Hey, remember when Ted Cruz refused to endorse Donald Trump because he said he couldn't endorse someone who had personally attacked his wife and his father? Well, he got over it. Cruz recently announced that he has forgiven Trump, who has never apologized, and that he will vote for Trump in November because he feels that Trump is preferable to Hillary Clinton. And also because the party was pressuring Cruz to unify with Trump and he didn't want to lose his Senate seat in a couple of years. He didn't actually say that, but it might have had a tiny little bit to do with it. Who knows? I'm only guessing. Number two, Gary Uh, Johnson exposes himself. So, I mean... Is this all like the stuff from the week that we're supposed to facepalm at or something? Yeah. Yeah. Cruz, why would I facepalm when Cruz endorses Trump? Like I don't He's give a, a shit. Republican. Cruz is worse than Trump. It's like if 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 Cruz was like going down somehow, like sinking to the level of Trump to endorse him, I could maybe see the facepalm. But Cruz and Trump are pretty much both horrible pieces of shit. So what do I care if one horrible piece of shit? Endorses another horrible piece of shit. Of course they do. They're both horrible pieces of shit. No, TJ. Face palm. Face palm, TJ. Oh. Woo, face. Have you met my friend Palm? <laughs> All right. Play this bullshit about Gary Johnson. Libertarian presidential candidate and your dad's kooky but mellow older brother, Gary Johnson, recently declared that he believes is that a thing? change is real and caused by uh, human that's activities. What, that's what Gary Johnson doesn't... reminds me of. My dad's kooky older brother. What? <laughs> what? What stereotype are you fucking trying to draw? What, like, what? Huh? You aware you can't just reference a type of person and then it's like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. No. 
How is that your dad's kooky older brother? I don't I don't get it. I mean, should do anything about it, whatever. especially if that would involve raising taxes, because the sun is just going to engulf the earth in a few billion years anyway. So what's the big? A few days after that, hey, Johnson was asked on large TV view, by Chris dude. Matthews to name a world leader who inspired him, and Johnson couldn't think of anyone. Uh, well, Johnson's a libertarian, so yeah, he's not going to be the type who gets all choked up about fucking world leaders. He doesn't want to be led. Yeah, that That's makes, the whole point of being no a fucking sense. libertarian is you don't fucking want central authority over you, you dipshit. Uh, did you hear that Kokesh is uh, going to run for president? In the next election. Oh, well, I look forward so to that. And, and his Fucking plan is to totally dismantle the federal government. Oh, yeah. What a shock. In four years as yep. president. Oh, okay. Rock on. That'll Have happen. fun. Yep. That sounds uh, inevitable. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll enjoy <laughs> his, his 500 That's, votes. Of all the things, you know, guys, I'm just saying that could happen. You know? Yeah. I'm, a ca I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a catastrophist, and I think yeah. that that really could happen. Adam Kokesh has a real chance of maybe, possibly, becoming president. That's why you need to buy this weed survival kit now. You're going to need to smoke a lot of green when you got <laughs> Adam Kokesh in office. Get the official Drunken Peasants weed box. <laughs> I hate Steve Shives. On a Miss America question, yet again revealing himself to be not a serious candidate for president. So all I have to say to my conservative friends and family is, how is Donald Trump better than this guy? What the fuck are you people doing? Number three, trans... Ooh, ooh, he's <coughs> edgy. He said fuck. He said fuck. He's not YouTube don't like that no more, Steve Stives. Transphobes want trans folk to ask first before using the bathroom. Transphobes want trans folks to ask before using the bathroom. The Ask Me First campaign is a new effort designed to make it as difficult as possible for this trans This is not really uh, related, but man, I hate the word folks, dude. Yeah. Folks. Yeah. That's a terrible goddamn Those word. Those folks over there. Ugh. All right. That's all I have to say. He was... He was, he was Proud it's of a PC word, dude. Yeah, dude it's, it's a PC word. Transphobes, trans folks, that's a winner. <laughs> a lot of there. folks around here. I'm like a poet. All right, look at this fucking, look really at this ridiculous fucking. Ugh, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> it's Steve Shives. God, just look at him. Just look at yourself, Steve. I don't think he really does. He edits these videos. Dude, How does he not look at himself? I mean, like, I know, I understand, like, you pause in certain places in a video, it doesn't look good, but man, every fucking time with it you, Steve. <laughs> oh, now he looks like, he looks like he's coming on What are you guys now, talking dude? about? There's no, there's no way Steve tries to edit his own videos. Like, his wife is, like, sitting there like, no, look, I have to, like, edit this video, make sure it meets to my standard and approval. He just has to bring. I don't think he, she actually edits because that would be her working. She probably just uh, puts it. He, she makes him like show it to her, and if he's done anything wrong, he just gets flagellated. Oh! Okay. It was started by the and sent back to the drawing board. Alliance, and with a name like that, you just know that they're up to something awful. According to the campaign's website, quote. There's a growing trend among our nation's politicians to allow men to enter women's spaces, public bathrooms, showers, locker rooms. Except, no, there's not. Trans women aren't men. They're women. It's right there in the name. And they're the marginalized ones in this context, not cis people. The only question that trans people should be asking cis people who have a problem with them using the bathroom is, do you want to move out of the way so I can be? Or do you want me to move you? Number four. What? Trump, my, Stop. My brain. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Just oh, fucking God. bludgeon me to death with a brick. What the fuck? Was that? that? I mean, like, it was painful all throughout, but then that last line about, like, you want to get out of my way so I can pee? Or you want me to move you? It's like, what? Anytime, anytime somebody unironically uses the word sis, my brain just shuts down. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Sis. You're such a sissy. Pro-Trump trolls. Trolls. Troll polls. Troll polls. 
Ooh, Last week, Hillary more Clinton cleverness. and Donald Trump had their first one-on-one -on -one presidential debate, and it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. If it had been a pro fight, it would not have been allowed to go the distance. Clinton slaughtered Trump, revealing him to the entire world as the ignorant, thin-skinned, bullying, bigoted, big mouth that he has always been. Um, no, no. Everyone already knew that going into that. <sighs> this was not a revelation. I just knew that Hillary as a seasoned politician would have performed in a debate better than Trump, who has no experience in that sort of thing. So, I don't think she slaughtered him, but I think she had the advantage. Um, I would say she won. I mean, I, yeah. I made a whole video about how Yeah, I yeah, I saw it. Him. Yeah, I, I think she, she kind of maintained the advantage the whole time, like getting him to kind of bury himself... Yeah, I almost feel like he, he did a lot more. I mean, like, I think everyone pretty much who saw it can agree that he was dealt a lot more damage by himself than her. I mean, they said she had been, like, practicing. Well, that's why I told you, TJ. I was like, Trump's going to fucking hang himself if anyone does it. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I just realized every time we pause Steve Shives, he looks like one of those when you nut, but she keep on sucking memes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Though not everyone thought so. The day after the debate, it was reported that trolls from 4chan and Reddit had flooded online opinion polls with pro-Trump votes in order to create the false impression that Trump had actually won. Atheists use vote bots to downrate our videos. <laughs> the debate in the minds of most okay. viewers. Um, the thing is that uh, Trump people have always been more enthusiastic. So, yeah, when it comes to something stupid like the online polls, obviously they're going to fucking show up in greater numbers to say he won. Okay? So, what do you care? When fucking she was going up against Bernie Sanders, it was even more ridiculously lopsided. It was like, who won the debate between uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders? It'd be like, you go to polls, be like, 90% Bernie Sanders, 10% Hillary. But yeah, uh, I mean, doesn't mean shit. Obviously, too, because Sanders have a lot more people online than fucking Hillary does. She has, her, her supporters are mainly older. Yeah, and they're not fucking going around voting in a bunch of online polls. No. Clearly not. They don't give a shit. Wonder, did the trolls employ such pathetically transparent tactics to convince the rest of us that Trump had done a good job? Or were they trying to convince themselves? Number five, Trump supports eugenics. Speaking of Donald Trump, it turns out he's an even bigger piece of shit than you thought he was. I know. Last week, Frontline debuted its episode about the 2016 presidential election, The Choice, where it's mentioned briefly near the... This music... It's horrible. It... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm uh, trying, I was actually. It's funny you mentioned that because I was sitting here trying to figure out like, what's more repellent, this horrible music or his hideous face? Uh, hmm. it's it's pretty close, but um, at least the horribleness matches each other, I guess. Beginning that Donald Trump is quite probably a eugenicist. Huffington Post then pulled. Is that anything a like a catastrophist? An if there was a bland, just a bland, boring douchebag setting in life, that would be Steve Shives. Just like, listen to this music. It's like, he actually selected this fucking music. It's like, people want to hear this in the background. Like, dude, you literally have the worst taste in fucking music. Okay, look at this. The Huffington Post dug back through the archives and found numerous examples of Trump suggesting that intellect and success are purely genetic qualities and that having the right genes gave him a very good brain. Yeah, well, Trump's a fucking moron. But I mean, like, is that even... I mean, like, yeah, a lot of fucking intelligence is determined by genetics. Yeah. It's not, so it's not, a, it's why not exactly untrue. <laughs> Trump fucking said something that's pretty scientifically accurate. Fuck him. Article that I mean, argues pretty persuasively that Trump and his family believe that there are certain people who are just genetically superior to other people. Oh, what? okay. Yes, there yeah, are. That's how you fucking spin it, huh? But, that's but, how you spin but it. I mean, also, it's true. Oh shit, Scotty, master race. Fuck. No, but but I mean, but I mean, like, are you, okay, you're telling me that some people aren't going to be better athletes than you or have better abilities than you. I had every bit as much potential as Michael Jordan. That's what to I'm be saying. A fucking <laughs> pro basketball player. My genes had nothing to do with it. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, 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 fucking look at the Olympics, and you look at people competing in this uh, in these sports, and like, oh, all the top swimmers look like this, all the top people look like this. It's like, yeah, because some people are predisposed to do better in certain activities and events or whatever than others. It's it's so obvious. By the way, when you nut and she keep on sucking. <laughs>
<laughs> eugenics, Scotty. You support eugenics, Scotty. You're Hitler, so- sounds Scotty. Sounds like it. Sounds like eugenics to eugenics. me. Eugenics. It's so eugenic. Oh, my God. Fuck Steve Shives in the ass with a fucking corn on the cob, dude. Corn on the cob. But that that should be your next leaked video. Corn on the cob. Yeah. yeah. I think about it. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Uh. <laughs> okay. Got to do some polling. Got to see what people, what the people want out some there. Some polling. You know? Yeah, dude. <laughs> polling. <laughs> polling. <laughs> <coughs> well, damn, we're out of shit, and there's still like probably like ten minutes left of this show. <laughs> Let's just vamp uh, to that music for ten more minutes. We should get a new PO box, Ben. So we can see yeah, we will. Again. We'll get one. Cool. I can't wait to go upstairs and smoke a cigarette. I mean, the, like Steve Shives. This I'm, I'm assuming this Face Palm Friday or whatever it is is a recurring thing and really all he'd have to do is be like hi i'm steve shives and this is face palm friday see you next friday you know it's like <laughs> uh, just look at me and face palm everybody oh shit yeah, all, all i have to do is just have steve tell them like okay steve will just tell you five things you did that week and that's it where is he? What is his background supposed to be? He's he's in a, a like disco a, tent. He's in a land of This is a shit green screen program. It's like it's like some preset thing where he's like, Ooh, I look good. Yeah, man, I'm in front of all this red shit. Kind of distracting. Which makes me think it looks like it's uh, he's upside down. Do you even want do you even want to hear the message? I uh, mean he's got a he's got a chroma key the background out because if people saw the basement that he was chained in that his fucking wife makes him live in and crank out these fucking horrible videos nobody would watch him yeah, he's, been upgrade, he's been upgraded to base my thought was in a closet That's... yeah he well he's been a good boy so she, she now she lets him <laughs> sleep on the dirt floor in the damp basement well you know that's a lot better because she used to keep him in a fucking big burlap sack in her fucking bedroom closet you keep yeah. if you keep making good sjw videos i'll i'll put you in a fucking dog <laughs> kennel keep going stevie Stevie. Stevie, you soiled your bag again. What's the fucking problem? I take you out twice a week to go potty. Oh, shit. Steve. 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 This fucking piece of shit. I can't believe this guy, dude. I can't believe you, Steve. I wish we, we need more videos of him and, the, and his wife, dude. She's, she's, uh, were, she's classic in the fucking topic. control she fucking puts over him. What's up? We, we've got 10 minutes to fill. So you guys remember when Brett Keen came on uh, for the big like 166 episode and he was like, hey, I got this friend named Nadia Chambers. Can I bring her in? She's an atheist. You remember yeah, that? Yeah. And we were like, nah, no, thank you. Well, like that was his friend, right? Well, I hadn't I, this. I, I actually saw a Keen video that I've never seen before. Apparently she did something in one of her hangouts to piss him off. And this friend of his who he's trying to help out, he made this video and it was it was seriously like he's like this man. And and by the way, her name isn't not or his name isn't Nadia. That's a fake name. This man, blah, blah, blah. Like he's just being the most vicious piece of shit. He turns on like it's that easy for him to turn on his heel. Like it's just a perfect illustration of what being friends with Brad Keen is like. Yeah, like one second he's like, I respect your gender identity situation. And then as soon as he doesn't like you, it's a man in a dress, everybody. Look at this <laughs> tranny fun. freak show, huh? <laughs> Fuck this fucking man. He's a man. It's a it's like, he. It's just like, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah, it is, it is just funny how, like, Brett can, like, just literally smile and tell you, like, I'm your best friend. And, you know, the next second he just... Fucking stabbing you right in your fucking back, dude. Just, dude. Brett always just goes for the nut shot. He just tries to f- figure out whatever he thinks you're vulnerable or sensitive about, and he just goes straight for it. Just you know, yeah, cheater. Stuck a banana up your butt. But even though like you never gave a shit, he th- for some reason he thinks that one. No, he like, doesn't. He doesn't. That's the thing is like he's not good at identifying people's weaknesses. He only thinks he is. That's why like he he'd go after Ben and be like Ben, you know, you look like Rey Mysterio. Like, Ben's going to be like, oh, shit, dude, snap, you got me. 
Scotty, you live in your brother's shadow situation. And then Paul, you're, you know, you're, you're, you said you were my friend, but you betrayed me. You know, you said when we played Warcraft together that we were cool. Yeah, that time I recorded you when I told you I wasn't <laughs> recording you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not recording you, Paul. You know. <laughs> you know, he's in there. I wouldn't record. He's like, he's probably pressing record as he's fucking saying it now. Oh. I wonder, Dude, does, he ben, feel, does he feel so clever when he does that? Like, oh, God, I'm again, stupid fuck. <laughs> ben looks like a man that needs a fat Vader rip, dude. Dun, you dun, need dun, it, dun, man. Dun, 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 already in cloud city. We just peer pressured Ben into getting way higher than he wants to be. <laughs> Can you get Ben higher? The answer is yes. But you are not a Jedi yet. Yeah, Paul, man. You'd be hate, dude, if you were here, dude, you'd be so upset right now. You'd be hating this shit. Mm. Well, yeah, hope, hopefully soon. Hopefully I'll, uh, I'll be there soon. I know yeah. nothing's, nothing's set in stone, but hopefully. Yeah, once we get the studio set up, we definitely have to have oh, you out here. Oh, shit, dude. The, the studio will happen. The studio's happening. Soon. Oh, we'll man. See. It's going to be... It's going to be fucking the studio, dude. dude. We'll have it within the next couple weeks, at least. We'll see. Yeah. Hey, don't be making big promises. We don't know nothing. I'm, not, I'm, I'm pretty shit. sure. No. I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. Don't be saying nothing, Scotty. Don't be saying fucking nothing, Scotty. Be saying fucking shit. We don't understand. No, Scott. We, 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 maybe okay, maybe so years. Maybe years before we have the fucking studio, So I can't Scotty. say fucking shit or nothing. You can't say nothing, right. Scotty. You can't say fucking nothing. I won't say it then. Shit. I won't say nothing. No oh my thing. god, Ben's Ben's dead. Whatever. <laughs> the show's over. Um, we're gonna fucking uh, you know we're back and shit. <laughs> you know, see you guys Wednesday. Good to be back. We'll figure out the the Patreon stuff for you. Yeah. fucking Patreon people. We hopefully get again that for you soon. It's gonna be six p.m. Yeah, yeah. Pacific we'll be six. Time. Be six o'clock Pacific nine time, nine Eastern. Eastern. Six Pacific, nine Eastern. We'll be fucking broadcasting the next show on Wednesday. Wednesday. Check it out Wednesday. Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. You must see it on Wednesday. Hey. All right, everyone. Fuck off and die. Good night, night everybody. Good night, Paul. Paul. There's a lot of rage being displayed by many of my fellow cisgender white men. Oh, you God, see it on a daily Steve basis on the internet. You saw no, it during this most recent no, U.S. presidential Steve, campaign. Just explode. And I suppose I could answer that rage with some of my own. But when I really think about it, it's not so much that I'm mad at them. It's that I feel sorry for them. Here are five sad things about angry white men. Yeah. Number one, they're ignorant. Ugh. In the mid 18th All century, angry white the men English are poet Thomas Gray guys. wrote. Did you hear that? So they've never. Oh my God! Oh, man, I've got lazy eye again, dude. Uh, it, Steve, if you mean ignorant, which means like a lack of knowledge, there's plenty of things you lack knowledge about. So I mean, in a sense, everyone's ignorant. But if you're saying they're just ignorant in general about the the ways of the world, I like to see that uh, reputation. There's shit you know, tons of white people who are angry. And they're all angry for different reasons. And who, who, how are you to fucking, who are you to fucking just paint them all with one brush and be like, you know what? Yeah. Yes, Steve, if we stereotyped any other race, you'd be the first person to go, that's racist. You guys should not do this. But when you do it, it's okay because, you know, you're, you're part, it's part of your experiential group. Look how this pussy right labels now. himself. Steve Shives, fairly calm white man. All things, things considered. considered. <laughs> when you consider how the fuck out of here. When you consider how terrible the world is, I'm pretty fucking calm, you guys. Pussy. Shut up. He is, he really is the anti Devin, oh, isn't he? Wise. Yeah. Gray was reflecting both wistfully. Big fans of banning, though. Yeah. They're, they're both the, they're the same, but, but a little in a different. different context. He could easily have been Two describing the, same the angry white men who formed the backbone of Donald Trump's base of support during this year's U.S. presidential election. Both Hillary supporters. Yep. It's both not blockers. just what these men don't know that makes both it sad. Me. It's what they are happy to not know. They Both are extremely pussies. skeptical of science, they, except they, when they, they perceive it men, to reinforce their pre-existing biases. Steve, some of these people 
do believe that, but that's some, some, Steve. Have some context. You can't just make a blanket statement saying, yeah. hey, this is everyone in this group believes this. Not all men, Scotty. Is that what you're saying? Not all men. Well, didn't, didn't Steve vote for Hillary? What, didn't other white males vote for Hillary? So did they, were they also part of that? No, they get a pass. Oh, they get a pass. Yeah. Oh. What about the angry white people protesting Trump? Are they ignorant? No, they get a pass, too. Yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> okay, rock on. Rock the fuck on. They're little to nothing about the experiences of people different than they are. Their knowledge of history well, by is the same narrow, token, sh shallow. Should those other people not know about their experiences? But, oh, that doesn't matter, right? Because that doesn't fit your narrative. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, and warped by the narratives of conspiracy theorists. And having said all that, it almost goes without saying that, number two... They're easily oh, led, easily Steve, and often, come on. right when politicians and pundits are constantly you know what manipulating other white, men white are male voters led? with... SJW ally white men like yeah, you. Isn't Steve run along, uh, like, isn't he walk like a dog by his wife? Isn't that how yeah. it works? He, he's led along to the Did, right conclusion? Didn't you say, uh, uh, sorry to take a step back, but didn't you say Devin looked like Billy Corgan aborted or yeah. something? Yeah, I said he looked like Billy Corgan's abortion. Yeah, isn't that ironic? Like, I think before our segment about him, he posted like a remix of a Smashing Pumpkins video. Of course video. he did. He wants to be Billy Corgan. <laughs> he wants to be better people. That's why he's always like, Kurt Cobain smoking well, look, a cigarette. Look at his fucking dream. Uh, he doesn't have it anymore, but he used to have like that lineup. Yeah. Yeah, he does that. He, he posts a bunch of hard asses, people that are actually intellectually like viable people. Or physically. God sod. You know, he's got a big lineup of his atheist dream team and shit, and he always puts himself in there. You're not in there, Devin. You're nowhere near there. You All never right. were. Sorry. We're back sorry. on Devin Tracy again. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Narratives about liberals coming to take their guns, immigrants stealing their jobs, labor unions destroying industry, or welfare recipients bleeding their country dry. Year after year, the fears and prejudices of these men are used to persuade them to vote against not just the common interest of the country, but against the interests of themselves and their families. Lots and of black why? and why Latino are they people so voted for Trump in this election, too. So why are you not railing against them? Why is it just white men? Uh, so yeah. White women voted for him, too. Yep. What about women, Steve? Conspicuously absent from this video where you're haranguing people for voting for Trump. But, well, in addition to their aforementioned ignorance, there's also the fact that, number three, they're insecure. The black for generations, for white are men have been told that women's liberation, racial equality, Dude, LGBT. Uh, so wait a minute. The You're guy like, who automatically blocks everyone on Twitter is, is uh, talk about other people being insecure. White men. Dude, you, Steve, you're the most insecure person that one could encounter in their fucking life. I've never yep. seen someone more insecure. You preemptively block people. You preemptively make sure you don't have criticism of your ideas. What a sissy. You're so, you're so afraid of anyone arguing with you or anyone saying you're wrong. You hide behind wrong. a fucking wall. Like, wrong. You, you might be against the wall on the border, but you've built a wall around yourself, dude. Ooh, good one. Damn, Scotty. Damn. Scotty with the analogies Teach tonight. equality and multiculturalism are going to destroy their way of life. They've been told that their governments are too big. They've been told that the president of the United States Dude, is, is secretly now a foreigner. Now everyone's sheep. I, I, I keep hearing this on the left now. These sheep. That's one of the signs of tyranny that's going to come, is that the people are going to be drones. Cis white men. And it's like, I don't really see a lot of people droning. I see a lot of people rejecting the mainstream narrative now more than ever. You've, you've allowed yourself to be fucking convinced that you have to say cis white male when you introduce yourself. But you're calling other people sheep. You dumb fuck. Yeah, I mean, like, you're literally going to, in everyday speech, give... Uh, a, a huge amount of deference to people who make up like 0.3% of the population trans people like I understand if you're about if you're around a bunch of trans people and they're like this is my cis friend Steve Shives like it makes sense to say like this is Steve Shives because they might think that you're you know that you're a trans girl or something, tra trans man <laughs> you know you're born with a vagina maybe that's the maybe that is the mis I don't know maybe whatever we'll see but um yeah, I mean, like, but in just everyday conversation, you really just feel like the need to be like, Hi, I'm a cis white male. What's up? It's Hi, like, I'm Steve Shive, cis white male. Nice to meet you. Really? ...who collaborates with terrorists. They've been asked rhetorical questions like, why is there no white history month? 
Or why is it that the only group of people not allowed to be proud of who they are are white people? Or what is your answer why is to that, it that no one cares? Hold on, hold on. White people are allowed to be proud of who they are. I mean, have you, I mean, I've seen German American yeah, oh, German American festivals, yeah. Polish American festivals. That's what I'm I, th- I mean, like they're white, they're allowed to be yeah. proud of it. To me, being proud of your race or ethnicity. That's, yeah, that's or less of that's, it, it's, it's, that's usually less, more about a me, it's usually more cultural pride. Yeah, yeah. Than, than, that's not than that's not pride. Yeah, people aren't getting together for Oktoberfest because it's a white people thing. Right, they just happen to be. white. It's a beer thing. It's a cultural yeah. thing. Right, you know what I mean? Like, she's a moron. What, what do you expect? Men are abused. Or why don't they appreciate all that we've done for them? Despite belonging to perhaps the most privileged class of people that has ever lived, white men have been convinced that they are about to lose everything. Shut, dude, Steve, a lot how, of the, Steve and, how can you make these fucking privilege. broad generalizations based upon what? You've not provided anything. All you've done is put out, this is my theory on reality. White, people are, this up. white people are poor too, Steve. No, they're not, Paul. I they're, come from a place where there is crushing fucking you poverty. You are the most privileged person. Paul, you are the most privileged person in this room right now. You're just so stupid. You're a white male. Just because they're white, yeah. There are, pe- there are white people in this country that, that live way worse than your average black person lives. West Virginia. <laughs> Go to the Ozarks, it doesn't, Steve. It doesn't fit the Steve narrative. Go to Appalachia. Yep. Yeah. Go anywhere. Go to, Number any, four. go to any fucking trailer park in America. No. Tell me how they're living, no. Steve. That's Tell me out- how privileged that's they an out- are. That's an outlier, or it doesn't exist. They're afraid, convinced that they are threatened from all sides by assorted political whoa, 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 and social forces. No, no, pause this. this They're afraid. Him. This is him. You watch? No, 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 Steve. I, okay, I've been to the Huffington Post. I've been to all the new, uh, liberal news outlets. When when Trump won, it was nightmare has begun. We are afraid. So many people in this country are afraid right now. Do you understand how people of color and minorities and LGBT community, we're all afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid. We're so afraid. We're afraid. Yeah, we're afraid. It was afraid. literally like a, the liberal media literally made it a news story that people are scared because Trump. Uh, we, heard, we heard it tonight with yeah. that woman that was trying to say that little kids come up to me and they say, I'm scared to go to school. But we're the, the well. I'm, I didn't even vote for fucking Trump. So th- this is the, this is the problem with grouping all white men into the big they, Steve. You don't give a shit. Forces that are attacking their values, their masculinity, their place in history. Many of my fellow cis hetero white men aren't merely scared; they're terrified. They fear the progress this, made toward equality you know every this, day by black Americans, Latinx Americans, you know this, LGBTQ Latinx? Americans. What Amer- is, what is it? La- Latinx. 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 Is, is I thought that you said a- Latinx. Kleenex? No. Latinx. What is that? It sounds like a, a prescription medication. Ask your doctor about Latinx. It sounds, it sounds like something to, something to catch a sneeze for Mexican people. Latina. Oh, fuck. Hand me some Latinx. I'm about to fucking sneeze. <laughs> I love it. Americans who I got a who fucking, I got major fucking mocos up here, man. I need a Latinx. Pass me a fucking Latinx essay. Religions other than Christianity, women, and pretty much any other group with which they can't personally identify. They fear the cultural changes yep. that they perceive as they see the increasing popularity of films, TV shows, books, and music targeted at audiences uh, Steve, other than evidence? them. Oh, shut up. Shut your fucking face. Steve, you piece some of whiners on the God internet. Damn garbage. And, and dude, he just, he, Steve, all, Steve, like most SJWs, just comes to the plate with nothing. He makes a bunch of statements, and it's like, okay, here's my statements. This, is, this sums up this entire group of people. People are terrified of, of stories appealing to other. Like, remember the new Star Wars movie? They put a girl in it, and it was a flop because everyone hated it because it was a girl. Oh, wait, no, it was actually, it's actually the highest grossing movie of all time now. Never mind. Hmm. Whoops. What is I'm a that, retard. What is that fucking hat that he wears every time? Like, what is that on it? Like, what it's is like it's that, a baseball that's, team. That's isn't, like that like the, 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 isn't that the, like the, the, the Metros or something? Isn't that like an old Mets logo? Maybe. Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought this was a comic character from like some old woman. I think it's no, a baseball, it's a baseball team. cap. It, is, yeah, it, it does look like a baseball. It's a baseball on it, dude. It's definitely a baseball. Is it like a minor league baseball team? Maybe it is a minor league team from somewhere around where he is. Maybe. 
I don't know where I can't really tell because it's you know, kind of far away. When I watch Steve's old videos, he doesn't even seem like the same person. He's not. He's got like a, probably about 10 to 20 more pounds on him, but he looks better. He yeah. looks better there than he does now, and he had more vibrance. He seemed happier and, like, more chill. Uh, yeah, we all I know what happened to that. It's like... Everything that he says in his little pie pie chart of failure that he uses in this video that white It's all men, him so It's far. all him. I so bet you far. number five is going to be him, too. Yep. Let's see. They see all of these things, they and they fear them, and five perhaps is be? most of all... They're racist. They fear number five. They're being no. left behind. Well, that's definitely and that true is in your sad. subscriber count. Yep. It's not sad that their racism is being left behind, or their xenophobia, their religious intolerance, their homophobia, their transphobia, their misogyny. Shut up. Their petulant, that's a self-centered. You, by the way, because didn't you call the black community a, a black culture a victim cult at yep. some point? So it that's is. he's 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 talking to you. Oh TJ. no, I mean, he, he's always talking to me. But but you know what? The funny thing is, is that top one in the top bubble. He should be asking that. You shouldn't be asking that. You know where everybody's at. They're still watching you. Steve, every time... Where'd everybody go, Steve? I, 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 uh, Steve, the funny thing is, is every time your ilk, the SJWs, take over something ilk. like events or, what, or, you know, anything, like websites, like Twitter... Remember, they, always, they, they always seem to go down the tube. Hey, remember buddy? when people used to show up to Reason Rally, and then yeah. you guys took over, and now no one goes? Wah, remember wah, when, wah, 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 remember wah, when Skepticon wah, wah, wah. was uh, popular and thriving, and now no one goes because it's taken over by SWs? Now it's just you sitting hunched over in a lawn chair alone, you Crying sad like little man. Where'd everybody go? Hey, Steve, where'd everybody go? Yeah, where'd everybody go on your YouTube channel, buddy? Nice picture choice. Where'd everybody go, Steve? But why don't I, why don't people go to fucking Reason Rally anymore, Steve? It's because people like you are there. Yeah. Why did everyone? Why did a bunch of people show up to vote for Trump? Because of people like you. Yeah. Because of fucking assholes like you. Everyone's sick of your bullshit, and people figure you need a fucking Trump to keep you in place. If you just fucking shut your fucking mouth and let society progress, it'd probably be going in a more liberal direction. But instead, you had to make liberals look like a bunch of fucking butt hurt. Hey, folks. Steve here. Oh my so, god. A couple of days ago, there was this poem that was shared around a lot on the internet and at first a lot of us thought because in the initial reports it was said that it was an official inaugural poem for Trump's inauguration turned out later that wasn't true it was just a poem that some dude wrote because he really really loves Donald Trump but whether it's an official poem or not it's the most like chilling propaganda hagiographic horseshit you've ever read in your life it paints Trump as so, Steve, let's do this straight. You don't engage in the exact same be uh, behavior. Your actions are totally contrary to that. Every time that we even discuss these issues, there's so many preconditions put on people like you about how the discussion t should take place, where it should take place, who you'll even have it with. So talking about propaganda, you're, like, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, your side is, the, is pretty much the master of propaganda. As far Because every little thing can be construed in some way. Oh, you, oh Hollywood doesn't cast enough did, black people. Did you it's see, racism. Did you see Steve Shives on Twitter the other day? Obviously, you didn't because you're probably blocked. I don't know if you are, actually. I have no idea. But um, he, he so. actually said on Twitter, like, people need to listen to each other and stop just, you know, closing themselves off in their little echo chambers and stuff. I don't know if he, he didn't use the exact term echo chamber, but that's what it boiled down to. Like, we need to all listen to each other and stop, you know, plugging our ears and going, la, la, la. It's like, meanwhile, you're the fucking most block-happy person on the internet. You actually just automatically block people who follow people you don't like. It's totally stupid. No, he wants to listen. Titan coming down from a tower, this conquering hero who is riding to the rescue of America to depose the tyrant Obama. And it's it's... It's just that, right? And I I'm thought, sorry. you know, it's really inappropriate for Donald Trump because Donald Trump is not a hero. He may, he may in it's fact, really be a would-be tyrant himself, far from rescuing the people from a tyrant. That's, that's rather self-serving. Um, and I thought there must be a much better poem and not only that a more appropriate oh, okay form what is appropriate can we can we, can we, we has anybody ever huh? asked Steve what appropriate means appropriate means anything he approves this? yeah of. exactly Steve Shives. he decides bong. yeah the bong 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 yeah, I just, I, I hate, listen how much he uses it. Appropriate, appropriate. What, who gets to decide what's appropriate? Uh, Steve, Mac and me does, Steve dude. Steve and his ilk. To use poetry to mark the occasion of the Trump inauguration. So I decided that it would be, instead of 
uh, an epic poem written about Donald Trump and his inauguration, it would be much more appropriate if we turned to a more humbler poetic form, one of my humbler? personal favorites, and that more is, humbler. That is more uh, of course, humbler. limerick. I limericks. love me a good limerick, and the thing about limericks that make them especially appropriate. Oh, never mind. He's doing that Minnesota folks well, thing. One, they're they're traditionally clever, which that doesn't work. Trump is is uh, never within a million miles of clever. Yeah, Steve, because you know what's clever, right? You're so clever with your YouTube marketing. You're so clever with all of your videos that get millions of views. You're so clever. Oh, well, comparing you and Trump and with clever, I would say Trump's a lot more clever than you, buddy. Look where he's at and look where you are. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Trump's, you might not fucking find Trump clever on some, like, Oscar Wilde level, but he's got some fucking wiliness in him. He's president. You know, whether you like Trump or not is, that's, that's not really a point anyone can dispute at this point. If they want to, they're stupid. But they're also traditionally vulgar. And boy, does that apply to Donald Trump. He's got to be one of the most <laughs> vulgar people I have ever really? known Who of cares? in existence. <laughs> no. in in all of what? See, that's, that's related to appropriate. So, with your kind indulgence, my preamble has been This is vulgar. What this is appropriate. This is appropriate. This, this is, is vulgar. This is inappropriate. I'll, I'll talk about this one. When I was <laughs> grown up, okay, Careful. vulgar had a meaning. Vulgar was somebody that was like openly sexually explicit. Yeah, like like, like Andrew Dice Clay like, or something like that. My pussy's wet, my cock yeah. and balls, my dick, merry, merry, quite contrary. Yeah, say that's that pussy vulgar. is so damn hairy. Oh, that was vulgar. <laughs> Donald Trump <coughs> has said some bad words. Does that make him a vulgarian? And, it, and a lot of it was in private when he didn't know he was being recorded. <laughs> So, like, vulgarity is deliberate, I would say. I mean, I would say that Donald Trump has been vulgar, but is he just vulgar in and of himself? No, no. And, and he's done it in appropriate places, like on the Howard Stern show. You know, he talked about, like, things some people would but consider But even there, vulgar. it was reserved, because he's a right. business. He was like, yeah, no broads, yeah, I like dames or whatever. The little stems on that, girl. great tits, great ass, whatever. That makes you vulgar now? Are you a dude? <laughs> no, he's not. I want to present to you a poem, okay. a series of limericks. Series uh, of limericks. Donald limericks Trump. are often vulgar, by the way. So be Here's watch out, everybody. These are vulgar. Donald, a man in a tower who bullshat his way into power. Shat. Vulgar. Craves admiration, but makes most of the nation feel filthy and needing a shower. Inappropriate. That's, that limerick sucked. The yeah. thing Horrible. is, our Donald's a racist. I've got one. I'll try quite probably a rapist, a liar. What? You rhymed racist and rapist? That doesn't... I mean, that doesn't really work. They just don't so, sound... How do you know he's right. a rapist? I mean, like... Also, most likely, a rapist. Well, Ben, he made those comments. He grabs him by the pussy. Grab him he, by the... I don't well, even wait. I grab him by the pussy. A fraud, an ignorant clod, whose morals are simply the basest. He's bl Bluck. Yeah. Yeah, so racist, uh, rapist, two. bassist. O for 2, Steve. That sucked. The Gross. rhyme scheme sucks. I know you suck. You know what? I, I see why he fucking preempted this by like, uh, these aren't going to be clever, but that's intentional because Donald Trump's not clever. Okay, that's why they're not clever. It's not because of your fucking limitations. Let's just Locked blacks breathe. from renting his houses, abused, dissed, and bullied his spouses, brought bigots to beat. This, you're not, this is not, you're not using the right fucking rhythm scheme for this shit. Can I do a limerick real yes, quick? Yes, do a proper limerick. Huh. I'll do one. There once was a man from Nantucket whose dick was so long he could suck it. And when the occasion came round, he'd bend it right down and wrap it around and fuck it. Oh, I had another one. And he said with a, a grin as he wiped off his chin, if my ear was a cunt, I would fuck it. There it is. That's there another one I've heard. <laughs> That's and, how it and goes. And often a vulgar, too. So your use of this, sir, a traditionally vulgar medium to describe vulgarity... I find vulgar. The rhyme schemes are off. Each heads gained platforms for skinheads. Uh, there's something off no, with Steve you, in general, dude. Why see, you a heads with heads? A limerick is about syllable usage, okay? Yeah, you you're can't using just the wrong amount of fucking you syllables. You can't just shoehorn a word in because you want to make a cute little wry joke. You gotta be clever to make a limerick, retard. Does anything about Steve strike you as clever? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, there you go.
and An staffed up knave. the West Wing with louses. Truly he a wasn't rube. a popular pick, though the SVR finds him quite This man slick. alloweth a winch to it tell him what to do. might sound contradictory, but a tainted half-victory <laughs> seems mean. plenty for this preening Thine dick. face is not worth sunburning, right. Steve, you I, shallow punchback toad! I wanna see... Ah, he's a toad, dude! <laughs> <laughs> he's a toad. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Don't forget, as his presidency passes and he fosters and feeds on the fears of the masses, he campaigned on race. You don't, you don't have to do that fucking, what is it called, alliteration in limericks. Fosters and feeds and fo That's more like uh, the night before Christmas or some shit. I want to see some people write up some, uh, some Steve Shives yeah, limericks. Yeah, limericks. Yeah, that would be cool. I want to see cool. Steve Shives limericks. Tag me too, because I'd yeah. love to see it. Tag, tag drunken. If peasants. you can fit it in a tweet, tweet it to me. Tag, tag if me. Not, tag just, me. You know, yeah, tag Paul. Tag me. Tag I want to see it. Oh shit, dude! Look at well, this. Well, they're definitely going to have not enough room to write a limerick if they're tagging dude, that many if people. If Steve ever made this face at his wife, she would claw his fucking eyes out of his head. Yeah. Oh, she beats his ass down when he, looks, when he acts like this, dude. What are you talking cheat about? And a cheat skate. He'll never assimilate what makes America great. Again, let me restate. Resist this is not this a man's limerick. Dictate. Elect. Does that sound like a limerick this to you at limerick. all? This is not. Steve, what the fuck are you doing? Today, you couldn't, you couldn't write a limerick. And let's use all our weight to frustrate this low-rate magnate with no mandate. Let's remind him how... Okay, this, is, this isn't even trying to be a limerick at this point. This is like uh, something else. How vital the voting class is and throw Trump and his troop the fuck out on their asses. Yeah. I got one. I got one. What? I got one. I got one. Before you take a bow, Steve, hold on. I'm going to let you finish, but... uh. There once was a man named Steve Shives. So nervous, he broke out in hives. He laid in his bed, realized that he's wed, and gave up the rest of his lives. <laughs> Already better. I mean, that's, that's off the top of Paul's yeah, Paul, dome that's better. Paul off the top of his fucking head is better than you, Steve. And you did, did take a bow? Dude, I wish I had a fucking tomato to throw at your fucking face right now. What'd you think? Did you like it? No. no. Terrible. Boo! Boo, sir! I did not like it. I came for limericks, Steve. And you gave me some stupid anti-Trump slam some poem. Some half-baked half poetry, dude. Ugh. Please don't resist his edicts. Trump is a dick. He will come quick for your paycheck. Shut up. That's not a limerick. <clears throat> You disgraceful man. That's not a limerick. Go home you to thou henpecking wife, thou disgraceful milk faced loon. Be gone from my face. I'm done with thee. Rapscallion, I call you. Dude, every time a rogue. He, every time he talks, Paul, it's just a lot of driggle and draggle. Henpecked little man alloweth his wife to hold the purse strings. <laughs> Allow with his wife, piggledy piggledy to decide what, what he watcheth, what wenchiest. he enjoyeth, what wench he sleepeth with. Oh no, Paul, he is not the man of the relationship, he I, is the wench. I, I, I hate to say this, but truly a cuckold. <laughs> a cuckold of the highest order. If it was but anything to cuck. <laughs> this is true, because how does one cuck a puddle of ooze? <laughs> By showing it a puddle of ooze, far grander and filled with algae. <laughs> uh, we don't have much more. Play the next one. Uh, we already played it. We played it. Come on, Gord. You had to ask. Yeah, I'll skip the intro music here. All right. You had to ask us. Us. Couples edition. Nice. Uh, I'm joined this week by my lovely wife Ashley. She's going to answer some of your questions. So, uh, as it basically, I, his wife inserted herself into his show. I don't know. I I don't know. That, the that's that's what it seems like. Maybe here. I don't that's know. That's what it seems like. I don't know the backstory hey, of that, but you know, I know that she thinks he's a misogynist, <laughs> at least in some way. You know what's cool is he's wearing a Superman shirt, and I. I'm representing the oh, Batman, shit. motherfucker. Team Batman, bitch. Team Batman. You know, sadly enough, he also makes references in this video to wrestling that makes it sound like he's a wrestling fan, too. Uh, yep. And the first he's question garbage. comes I thought he started to making wrestling from videos. Migdios Back, who asks, Hey, Ashley, what are your thoughts on Steve's stuffy videos? 
And uh, Owar Nico also asked about the uh, the stuffed animals. How what's it like living with a guy who talks to stuffed animals? Oh, well, I'm pretty oh. used to it. Well, it's horrible. I mean, uh, uh. It, it's something we do for to amuse ourselves, <laughs> to yeah. amuse each other, and usually to cheer me up. So. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, not all of it, but a lot of the the stuffy videos are based, like a lot of the jokes in them and the interactions are based on shit that we've done, like just to amuse ourselves with Stuffy and, and Toby Benson. I mean, uh, their relationship to each other, their person. All right, I'm just gonna. Oh my god! I'm just gonna <laughs> lean back and I'm just gonna fall into a brief coma. You guys just keep playing it. I'm gonna just kind of chill. <laughs> Steve Shives, Paint Strike. Right, well, as, as far as the godly presence. <laughs> okay, or, well, that's a little different. God it's a little different than atheism. You know, I, I just. You're an atheist. I skipped ahead a little bit. Yeah, because now it's interesting. But yet, you know, I love. Well, it's your fucking right, job right. to make it interesting, TJ, so yeah, why don't you do your right. fucking job? Waka 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 That doesn't make it more interesting, that just. That just makes your odor go around the room more. Of everything you hate, basically. And, um. This is like the antithesis of riveting. Background that, I mean, is really hard for someone to shake, you know, who's. This is the worst porn I've ever seen. When do they start fucking? In the baptismal waters for Submerged years in what? And, um, it's sure. like I'm submerged by stupidity and boredom. But yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, There's something about the myth of it that's very attractive. There's something about the ritual of it that's very attractive. Oh my god. Appealing. The I mean, ritual. And I, I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, you don't. But yet, but when it comes down to... I don't know, but I'm... No, you, you're, you're, you're right there. Just end it there. I don't know. Like, okay, good. Credits roll. To, to believe that. I mean... Yeah, it's but, but, you know, at the same time, I think atheists are as ridiculous yeah. as the Christian community. And just behavior. as ridiculous. And also yeah. in their um, misogyny. Misogyny. Okay, but it's not fair to let the sexism and the misogyny sexism. speak for the entire sexism. group. Sexism. Well, I would say misogyny is fair in many cases too, but uh, you know, it just seems like I wonder what cases they're talking about. Yeah, I wonder if what's hmm. the case. Hmm. Does it have to do with people you blocked? Maybe it does. Maybe it does. You know what I hate, guys? Women. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. Just putting that out there. Yeah. One big sausage party. That's what it seems like to me, and I don't like it, and I don't want to be a part of it. So there. So you're an uneducated Crucify nitwit. me, YouTube users. Crucify me. Let's crucify her on Why? some sausages. Look how happy he looks about that idea. He's like, fuck yeah. Crucify her. Please, guys, do it. I Come can't on, stand please. this bitch anymore. Crucify Help me. I irrationally hate everyone in this group. I never fuck wanted you. to make feminist videos. She's got me by the balls. Yeah. Someone kill her. Once she's crucified, my gonads will be returned to me. That, that face it just reminds me of the old <laughs> vaudeville joke, you know? So, you know, like, take my wife. No, take my wife. Yeah. You know? Take my wife. Take her. That would be... Would that be ironic or would that just be funny? Isn't it moronic? Don't you think? Green Ghost 2008. To Ashley, what books do you like most? <laughs> How to Be a Total Tool by Thule McToolerson. Well, I've read so many. I, I've kind of lost track. <laughs> Um, I've like read so many books that it's hard for me to think of even one. How many of them were written uh, by Gloria Steinem? Uh, Pamphlets are books, right? I may have mentioned it, but I don't know if they may. Please, do tell. Do tell, bitch. Well, I was a librarian for... Let's skip ahead. Yeah, that was... Um... For a long time, that was my favorite book. Right. But it would have to be the new Clash of the Titans, well, which I this. found probably the most difficult to sit through of any film I've seen. Movies that I really, really hate. And, All right, um, he's going to talk about movies he hates. Batman and Robin is a movie like that. Although well, everyone I've hates that piece of shit. He saw no, Batman what? and Robin, I think, is now. Why would you saw what? What? Oh, you're an idiot. Well, what he's saying is that it's it's now, in his opinion, under the category where it's so bad, it's good. No, it's no. just bad. The so bad card. Come on, guys. It's just so much the bad never, never leave the so cave without shitty. it. It's so shitty in every way. But it's just, I, I can't watch it and not enjoy it. Well, because you gotta love the ice so puns. Uh, 
But like uh, the 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 second Star Wars prequel is a big one for me. Is just so terrible. There's just it, oh, all the prequels so are bad terrible. that it's difficult to watch. No, the first was great. Uh, Armageddon is Phantom like Menace. that. It's just like God. What the fuck? It's just, it's just the so galactic uh, trade route uh, dispute. I have actually not seen any of <laughs> so the Transformers movies, but I imagine that they will they would probably be on my list as well if I saw well, them. That's just as someone who has yeah. seen them, I can guarantee that they probably <laughs> would. Yes, they may prove me wrong. I don't know. No, 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 I, no they wouldn't. Do you have any, any, like, least favorite movies? Star Wars. All of it. Yeah. Not Why? surprised. Ice and Queen. I hate fun, and yeah. those movies yeah. are fun, and they disgust I, I, me. I like the, like, the thousand-yard stare. There's a like, glazed over look you just gave it. Like, like, you know what I don't like. You like. Know, idiot. How dare you. What don't you like, baby? Anything that makes other people happy. You're yeah. talking about Seems the original, accurate. right? You're, you, cause I don't, have you ever even seen Oh, oh, oh yes, a, the original. Oh, yes. It's so bad. Bear me your lightning, Jesus. It's nothing compared to Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> Sisterhood nice of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> hey, what about the underrated masterpiece Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2? My, that's, my fa that's actually my favorite movie. <laughs> I think the subtitle was Revenge of the Pants. It wasn't. I don't it, know it, what it was. I don't know what it was, but it was the, a great uh, film. The, when I showed you Star <laughs> Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Yeah, the two bad. best ones, in my opinion. Yeah, they're really bad. I don't like them. I thought they were dumb. I think I made myself go to sleep. <laughs> you. I gave myself to go to sleep. You made yourself that was a wrestling go to sleep. Yes, that was a wrestling reference. High five. Fucking a. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to try for uh, a wrestling reference, and also a comic book reference, and say it's clobbering time? She's like, no, I'm not going to do no. something you had told me to do. No, I'm, no, I'm not going to do anything you told me. Look, because... he is just, <laughs> oh my okay. god. I, I am strong and independent. I do not need to be told what to do by a man, okay, obviously. Okay, okay sweetie. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to have an opinion. Oopsie. Varmint Coyote, Steve, what do you think of those who find issues with feminism and well, this MRAs be good. both? Because they take issue with ignoring the legitimate issues of either that might be ignored by the other. I don't have a problem with people who want to bring up legitimate issues, whether it's it's a woman's issue or a men's issue. I, I, I think that's very important. The problem I find is when people try to equate uh, feminism with the men's rights movement, because I don't think they're two sides of the same coin. I don't think that the men's rights movement is the male equivalent of feminism. I think feminism uh, is a legitimate political movement that is needed and has accomplished positive things for our society over the last century or so. Yes, regurgitate the strip uh, she gave you I earlier. I don't think the men's rights movement is anything other than a fringe group of mostly just pissed off misogynists. She's like analyzing everything he says, just, just like, oh, better not slip up. About their ex-wives and their girlfriends and the women who won't fuck them. <laughs> now, that oh, doesn't yeah, mean that they're is. not... See, when I say that, people say, what about this and what about that? It doesn't mean that there aren't legitimate issues, and it doesn't mean that there aren't serious people... But in... feminism will address it. Feminism gonna solve all. Well, that's what they always say. We don't. We don't need this men's rights, but we just need feminism because feminism's gonna solve all of these problems. RM, who are there maybe because they feel like they have nowhere else to go because they feel like, well, this oh, is man. what we have, so I might as well. Let's start the men's rights movement. <coughs> we going We gonna follow Roosh V. He gonna teach us <laughs> how to legalize rape. Put women like, back in their place, man. I like how basically it's just portrayed as like everyone that's involved in this is just like they're they're basically either if they're like you know not assholes then they're just losers who are down on their luck and just the MRAs preyed on them. It's like you know like like the fucking charlatan like come here you can live forever just drink the snake oil. Yeah, oh, well you go get a guys. sex change and then make me a sandwich, bitch. Guys, like, a sandwich, faggot. It doesn't mean that every single person who is a part of the men's rights movement is a bigot is they a wife are. beater or whatever. All of them. What it means is bad wives are bad. The overall bear, character of the movement situation. is closer to that anti-woman thing. Whereas I think I don't. I just don't think it's fair to say the same thing about feminism. I don't think feminism is defined a as a movement overall as a bunch of chicks that hate men. I <laughs>
fail. I think women have a legitimate grievance. She's got her and nails like dug bias. into his leg and right now, like sit right there, sit right. Now you talk. I think it's kind of disgusting that the man spoke first here, guys. You know, mm. this is a woman's issue. The woman should have been the first voice, and then the man after, if at all. You know, not even at all. Um, right. I mean, the men's rights movement, which I wasn't aware of until you made me aware of it. Unfortunately. Um, the Wow. Did you guys see his expression there for a second? He just kind of looked away and was like, <sighs> Yeah. My life. The whole movement just seems like a radical subgroup. That seems to be a buzzword on your channel. Mm -hmm. Radical subgroup. Okay. Radical subgroup. But you know, I mean, like you said, I mean, I think feminism. Is like good. Can you yeah. actually elucidate what you believe or explain it even Within rudimentary? feminism, it might have a radical subgroup. Oh, certainly. There, yeah. Obviously, yeah, that, heck, that exists. Did yeah. you know Andy Warhol was, was shot by... By a radical feminist? Yeah. Valerie yeah. Solanus, Stone, yeah. I think Everyone knows. Was gone or something. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but, but... Yeah, but, but that, they don't speak for the whole movement. And they're a minority, right. a very, very small... Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so let's pander to one another for the rest of this video. Minority. But, but it seems like the men's rights movement are just out to provoke and to to get attention and to to not have a civil discourse <laughs> yeah. with, with anyone, which I think is um, uh, you know, logic is not needed TJ's here. Logic, into the hole. logic is not needed here. <clears throat> um, fuck. Fuck. At the same table with a woman and say, okay, let's let's discuss this rationally. You know, here are the, here are the things. That I have a problem with. Let's hear what you have a problem. It's, no, it's just like a the, the people, they get up on their someone from the group that demands they should never be offended or never meant to feel bad in any way, is now saying like, we just want to sit across the table and have a rational discussion. Yeah, I've made plenty of videos about feminists, and um, none of them have been overtly harsh in tone, in my opinion. I mean, there's definitely people who go way further than me. There's always been room for a discussion, and almost no feminist has ever engaged in that discussion with me. I mean, I've, I've received some emails here and there from feminists who, you know, respectfully argued their points, or at least semi-respectfully. Um, but that's pretty damn rare. Most of these people do not want to engage with any sort of opposition. They just want to read you the riot act, and your only option, if you want to be in their good graces, is to nod and, you know, basically offer your balls up for castration. So far. Yeah. So. Or they do. They, they, they maybe are willing to do something like that, but it doesn't change the that fact. That might be a radical subgroup. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it doesn't change the fact that the movement overall... Is it's a not, bowel like someone movement. Asked a question, it was either in last week's you had to ask or the, or the week before. Uh, uh, the uh, Do they really care about those legitimate issues that they bring up? Because, you know, they'll say, like, what about the bias in divorce settlements? Or what about the bias no, in child what? custody where men they, they are just care? not as likely to get custody of the kids as, as, as women? And those are legitimate issues. But... You like the 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 person asking that that question was was basically asking, do they really? Does it's people have been affected by those issues that are upset about them? Not just like, oh, let's just latch on to any little thing we can because we you know then we, then we can sit down on the so. The men's rights movement really even care about that, or are they just using that for cover? <laughs> what? Hold on. Um, what? It's people have been affected by those issues that are upset about them. Not just like, oh, let's just latch on to any little thing we can because we, you know, then we, then we can sit down on the soapbox, you know. So you're basically just saying the entire movement is illegitimate and is just grasping for straws wherever they can find them to make a case against feminism. You know, I, I I'm not, I don't fucking uh, pal around with the MRAs or anything. I mean, I follow some on Twitter. I follow some feminists on Twitter too, but. Um, I would say that saying they're not genuinely concerned about that is kind of silly. That's one of their major concerns. Um, it would be as insulting as if someone said, you know, feminists don't really care about media portrayals of women. Of course they do. They harp on about it fucking endlessly. So, I mean, I say you know, if you want to argue against your opponent's positions, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But saying that they don't even really hold that position... I mean, unless you have some sort of compelling reason why you don't think they do, I, I mean, and I haven't heard it yet, that that's just...
preposterous, it, silly, I mean, ridiculous, it, while et cetera. There are definitely are people within the men's rights movement who do care about that. As a whole, I think the movement uses that kind of shit for cover. They they they, they, they cover for what? Why? Out front and say no. See, there are legitimate issues. There's a reason for us to be here. And then they go on Reddit and they bitch about their ex-wife and how they got fucked in their divorce. What? Well, the you just proved your own fucking point. You're, you're you're saying like they're just lo they're looking. Uh, I mean I mean you just proved you're wrong. I mean you you just said uh, one second ago literally that they're just using it for cover. Then they go on Reddit and complain about how they got fucked in this divorce and like they don't have custody of their children. And then they're complaining complaining about a bias in the legal system. It's like yeah that's why. W w where, what fucking connection are you missing? The connection between his bullshit and reality. You know what time it is now, my dear. I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Just listen. Listen for this. It's time so for my daily blowjob. I'm gonna put it in in post. Okay. It's gonna be like a thunderclap. Oh, and then the lightning. Yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> All the world is waiting for you, <laughs> and the power you possess. Yeah, maybe just that could be something you guys do privately and the rest of us don't have to watch and puke. Maybe. Just a thought. Latest question, what do you think of the atheist mega churches? I like the concept, just wish they weren't called a church. I rather like the term armory. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Print back here, of course. Uh, Is that your favorite Van Gogh? m and Say fuck on broadcast television, I don't see the big deal. Uh be saying fucking shit and they're gonna be fucking like out of here i want to do a shout out as always and this week very long overdue shout out. no thanks yeah so uh interesting um that was yeah i you know that's one way of putting it I guess. by the way anyone in the chat you try to tell me what videos to play and when to skip i'm not gonna fucking listen to you so save your fucking time chat don't run the show motherfucker no the chat, chat don't, don't run, run the show. show yeah so fuck off <laughs> What if they point out a legitimate issue, though? Fuck them. Like em. an audio issue. Oh, or well, that's different. Well, that's. Shut up, then Scotty. they do run the show. No, they don't. Dance, monkey, dance! No, they don't run the Shut show. Up, they run everything. The Illuminati, man. Quiet yourself. What's next? All right, so we're going to move on to Steve Shives, who. Uh, I, you know, I didn't even really know much about him. I, I heard he's friends with the guys from Bible Reloaded, which is. <laughs> It's like, okay, and uh, he's, you know, he's a feminist guy on YouTube, and I heard that, uh, I saw someone ask him a question in a comment section, would you be on Drunken Peasants? He's like, uh, I've never been asked before, but the only, you know, the only joy I would get out of that is being able to decline that invitation. Neat. Here's his video about the wage gap. Five stupid things about the wage gap, baby, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed about the wage gap. Okay. It exists in nearly every line of work. Uh-huh. The wage gap between men and women is real. It's a thing that exists. Mm -hmm. And though its size varies from job to job, it's present in all but a relative few occupations. Yeah, but in most of these jobs, the wage gap is something like... 96 cents to the dollar and when you actually look at the variables that account for why the wage gap exists in some industries it's usually things like women don't uh women aren't as career oriented as men they they try to balance uh home life and career and there's nothing wrong with doing that but of course if you do that, you're not going to be as successful in your career as someone who is completely 100% career-oriented, and uh, family is a second consideration, if at all. Another thing is, of course, that women can get pregnant and be incapacitated for months and months. Men don't usually get pregnant, except for in uh, bad movies like Junior, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Baby, come out to my dick. Yeah, they never did explain how he had that baby. I, I, I think it was a C-section, but they never I was afraid to see it. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of want to see Arnold Schwarzenegger shit a baby out of his cock. Oh, my God. It'd be kind of funny. More than that, it exists in male-dominated, female-dominated, and gender-balanced fields. 
in business, in education, in computers, mm -hmm. in sales, in healthcare, in the arts, in virtually any line of work you can think of, women are paid less than men. The most commonly cited statistic here in the U.S. is that women make 78% as much as men in terms of annual median yeah, earnings. Yeah, here's but the problem. The wage... That's a pretty shitty statistic because all of that does, all that figure does is take the average income of men in general and the average income of women in general and compare the two of them. It doesn't look at every field individually. Although wage gaps do exist in several fields, uh, all, that, all that statistic does is say, here's what men make on average, here's what women make on average, here's the difference. And that's not really a good way to go about things because women gravitate towards certain other careers that men are not as likely to gravitate towards that are not as high paying. You know, and women are... Uh, all, all but completely absent in, in a lot of STEM fields. Uh, that's uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. And the excuse that feminists uh, so often use is that, well, those are like... B um, the only thing that makes it a boys' club is that women have thus far refused to uh, include themselves. They're the ones who have selected against those fields, not men gap is not as simple as that. It's worse for older women. The wage gap is actually quite a bit smaller for young women. Women under the age of 35 earn about 90% of what men earn, which still is an ideal, but is a lot better than 78%. Then men enrolling in college, a woman with... Older people in general um, have trouble with employment. I don't know, uh, I mean, like, I obviously don't have access to the statistics that he is referencing here. Uh, I'm just responding off the fly, but I can tell you that elderly people in general have a hard time finding jobs. Not just elderly, I guess, but older people in general. Um, you know, people want the vivacious, young, uh, hungry, 20 or 30-something for their new position in their company. They don't necessarily want someone who's in their 50s or 60s who, you know, I mean, you know, they're going to be dead or retired far sooner than the, the 20 or 30 something. A bachelor's degree can expect to earn just 71% of what a man with a bachelor's degree earns. And women with graduate degrees earn 69% of what men with graduate degrees earn. We have to look at this strictly in terms of specific career fields. You know, if you're talking about a specific field and uh, the same job and a man is making more than a woman, then you have a grievance. But if you're just looking at men with bachelor's degrees versus women with bachelor's degrees, that could be a very faulty statistic because maybe the woman's bachelor degree is in fucking, you know, uh, women's studies or uh, just a simple business degree. Whereas maybe more of the men have uh, bachelor's degrees in, I don't know, chemistry or something like that. You know, so just saying this is a bachelor's degree and this is a bachelor's degree, that doesn't mean they're equal degrees. That doesn't mean that they have the same money-making potential. And you can't just only have gender as a factor. You have to look at the other factors as well. That one surprised me when I read it for the first time. But not all the data about the wage gap is so unexpected. Some of it seems depressingly familiar. Mm -hmm. It's worse for women of color. The disparities between the earnings of women of color and white men... Well, women of color tend to... By the way, women of color is a stupid term. We're going to say black women, okay? Um, I guess that women of color probably includes more than just black women. But people of color is a stupid term in general because people of color is supposedly an inoffensive and proper term, but colored people is a racist offensive term and they mean exactly the same thing and in fact contain almost the exact same words that's it's retarded 
I'm going to call them black people and Asian people and whatever else. Um, but black women tend to occupy economically um, disadvantaged areas with greater frequency than do white women. Um, in fact, the average income of black people in general dwarfs the average income of white people in general. And then that's not to say there's no rich black people or poor white people, because of course there are. But yeah, I mean, you have to look at race as a factor. It's not just because they're a black woman. A lot of it's just to do with them being black. A lot of it's just to do with the areas where black people live, where it's harder to get employed, and also the jobs are not as good because those areas just don't have the same amount of revenue flowing through you them. You know, I, I actually worked for a company that would tout themselves as the one of the top 10 companies in the nation for women to to advance at and for minorities to advance at and they actually made it a point to like show that that they were a company that enforced that well sure and you know we should encourage more companies to have that sort of attitude yeah. honestly yeah but you know, I still don't like this overly simplistic view where everything is looked at through the lens of women. It's women. It's because they're women. And no, there's other factors. There are factors beyond just they have a vagina. Are simultaneously shocking and the sorts of things to which many of us have grown dismally accustomed. Black women earn 64% of what white men earn. Hispanic women have it even worse. They earn just 54% of what white men earn. White guilt. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of those Hispanic women are here illegally also. <laughs> I mean, they are. It's true. Uh, you know, and when people are, are not uh, legal citizens, they oftentimes accept jobs that are paying minimum wage or even less than what is supposed to be minimum wage. There's plenty of immigrants living in this country working for wages that, um, I mean, even minimum wage in this country cannot sustain anybody, but, you know, these people work for uh, less than minimum wage, and, you know, that's, that's quite sickening, and that's a problem in and of itself, but once again, it's not strictly women. Look, they're women, so this is why. And those statistics and all of the statistics I've referred to so far in this video refer to the wage gap as it exists in the United States, sure. by the way. But the wage gap is no respecter of political boundaries. Mm -hmm. It exists worldwide. When the World Economic Forum released its report last year on the global gender gap, it found just one country, Denmark, where women earn more than men on average. Nuke Denmark! They're sexist against men. Average. It found no country where women earn the same as men for doing the same job. You know, the same job thing, once again, you know, I don't think you're interpreting the statistics correctly because I've yet to find a single wage gap study or breakdown that looked at here are two people or not even just two people, but here's what men in this position, in this geographic area, in this particular job make, and here's what women in this same geographic area, in this same exact job make. Uh, and until I see that, I mean, I'm not going to take this, this wage gap thing seriously from the perspective of, oh, women are being discriminated against in the workplace. The U.S. finished in the middle of the pack, 65th out of 142 countries. Among the countries that finished ahead of us were Canada, the U.K., and Burundi, which actually... The fuck is Burundi? Have you ever heard of that? I've never heard of that. ...had the smallest wage gap. Among the countries that finished behind us in the survey were China, Italy, and Israel. And those latter two have women earning less than 50% of what men earn. You probably noticed by this Italians. point that this is one of the videos in this series where I'm all serious and earnest. And I know that a lot of you prefer the funny ones. Know what ones. I mean, Vern? Hell, I like the funny ones better too, to be honest. But <laughs> I could only think of one joke regarding right. the wage gap, and it's not very funny either.
Well, you could you could kind of like play off of, you know, like pussy gap, you know, like a gap in the pussy wage gap, pussy gap. I'm hoping it's based around that. I hope it's a play on that. Let's see if it is. Even so, it is the biggest joke that I know of right. about the wage gap. Lay it on it's us. It's the fact that its existence is still denied by some. <laughs> oh, wait. That's not He's fun. talking about you. Yeah. Hey. 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 The wage gap is a fact. I don't know how to say it any clearer than that. If you doubt that claim, the major sources I've used to write this video are linked in the description box. Okay. Check them out. All right, I will. Or better yet, do your own research. You'll right. find... I did my own research, and I actually discovered that what you're saying is bullshit. So what now? What do we do now? We're at an impasse. Hey, we should invite him on the... Sh oh, wait, that's right. <laughs> <sighs> Darn. Darn! Steve Shives, you're formally invited to the show. I'm going to give you the pleasure of declining us. As I did, that the wage gap exists for virtually all women all around the world. Though it varies in size, it exists for women of all ages, of all races, in virtually all... What about all butt sizes? Hey, you know, by the way, uh, interesting fact, one of the uh, industries where the wage gap is actually reversed is porn. Yeah, so actually female porn stars make uh, considerably more than male porn stars. So if we're going to address the wage gap, we need to address it there first. Because, you know, that's affecting men. That's affecting people who fucking matter, not this women shit. You know what I'm saying? Who matter fucking. Yeah, you know, women are, women are stupid. You ever notice that? Women are fucking stupid. Yep. I said it. I had the courage to say it. I'm sexist and I'm proud. Hail misogyny. What? Hail misogyny. I can't stand by that comment. Ben stands by it. Nope. He told me privately earlier. He's like, oh, yeah. sexism is the shit, brah. And I'm like, fuck yeah, dog. <laughs> occupations. It exists for married women and single women. It exists for women without children and women with children. I suppose we could argue about what causes it, how much of it is directly attributable to sex discrimination. Versus uh, we could do that. Don't you mean we should do that, honestly? Don't you mean that we should do that instead of just could? Versus other factors. But the thing we cannot do is deny it. And the thing we must not do is ignore it. Okay. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to extend an olive branch of peace towards Steve Shives here. Oh, yeah? Because uh, Bernie Sanders, the guy that I plan to support for president... Uh, has made the wage gap thing a major cornerstone of his platform. It's pretty much the only thing on his platform that I don't agree with, that I've heard so far, anyway. But I'm supporting him, so you know what? He's going to fix the wage gap, so let's support Bernie Sanders together, Steve Shives. You and me, I don't agree with him on that issue, but you obviously do, so let's fix it. Let's fucking elect Bernie Sanders president. Are we moving on? Or is it more important to elect Hillary Clinton president? I heard we could pay her less than other presidents. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that uh, we can just pay her 78% of what we pay a normal president. So that'll save our country a little money if we do elect Hillary. Evan, are you familiar with Steve Shives? No, I've never heard of Steve Shives before. Steve Shives is a feminist. How do, oh. what, what are your views on feminism? Well, I, I can't stand career feminists like Anita Sarkeesian who use feminism as a way to make money and to basically give innocent people a hard time. I don't I actually, I have to thank you guys because I used to have a lot of feminists on my Facebook page that unfriended me because whenever I talked about you guys. So you guys saved me a lot of hassle because... A lot of feminists, you know, I agree, women, women deserve more rights. They deserve, you know, it's, 
it's only recently they've been given the rights they have today. And, <clears throat> like, basically, but that doesn't mean they can bully everybody into being politically correct all the time. You know what I mean? And a lot, I hate to say it, but a lot of feminists like to bully people into being politically correct, and it's just not cool. Sweet. So All right, well, let's they, take a look at Steve. Hi, everybody. Here. It's Tuesday here at the Breakfast Club. I'm Steve. How's it going? Already <laughs> drinking. Ah, that's right. Beer Alcoholic instead of coffee. piece of shit. The downward spiral begins. Um, I had some yeah, thoughts about uh, a picture that a friend of mine shared on Facebook the other day. I'll show you the picture. It's this picture right here. It's taken from, uh, apparently taken from a sign <laughs> on the L.A. Metro and it reads, uh, respect to our women passengers, please refrain from the following. Staring, masturbating, following, unwanted touching, unwanted conversation, what are you supposed to do on asking bus, women then? where they're from. And then the little fine print down there says, these actions Most create impossible. an unsafe space and contribute no, to violence doesn't. against That's women. That's nice. All right, so let's, let's talk about these. I mean, staring, sure. I mean, if you're just like... Outright staring at someone. The unblinking gaze. You know, I mean, sure. If you glance at someone, I don't think that's really an issue. Masturbating, I mean, I think yeah. we all agree it's inappropriate for public. You know, I don't think we need a sign to tell us. Anyone who's masturbating on a train, uh, chances are the they're, they're, sign is not going to fucking what if, stop What if, they're, if they're, they want to abuse women, but they're illiterate? Like what happens then? Does someone have to like read the sign to them or something? Like, someone hey, has don't to point it out. Like, hey, don't masturbate. Me. Don't follow. No unwanted touching or un unwanted conversation. Well, how do you know until you actually try to have a conversation with someone if they don't want to have a conversation? So yeah, I mean, if you say hi and you know that might be an un they might not want to talk to you. But unwanted you know conversation. Say anything. Unwanted conversation, TJ. I don't understand this asking women where they're from and then from is in like quotation marks as if it's not a real. Concept You're trying to find out where they. live. Live, stalker. Where are you from? It's like what? What's the what's the quote? What what is the what do the quotations signify? I mean, that they're not really from somewhere. I, I don't get it. Yeah, one does conversation to get determined as unwanted conversation. You know, pain from harassing other passengers. Please change seats and notify the bus operator. So that's the image. It was shared by my friend Neely on uh, Facebook. And the first comment under the picture when she shared it was some dude asking, why does it say respect women passengers? Why doesn't it say respect all passengers? Uh, and it ties in very closely with uh, another commonly heard stupid question, uh, which is why do they call it feminism? If it's for gender equality, why do they call it feminism? Why doesn't it just refer to itself as Valid humanism? Valid questions are the stupid. I say that this is they, it's so <laughs> hard. Those questions are so dumb, because, you know, imagine if there was a sign there that said, respect all passengers. I mean, that sign would be disgusting. That excludes women somehow, because it doesn't bring them up specifically, you know? It's real well, sick. They, they always argue, well, the, the reason is that male passengers never get harassed, or they're not really being harassed as much. It's, it's, it's mainly female passengers. You know, if I was on a train or a bus and there was a woman that wanted to stare at me and masturbate, I wouldn't have a problem with that, <laughs> you know? I'm yeah. sure you wouldn't, Evan. I'm sure you wouldn't. It's a stupid question. It's because it ignores the obviously apparent reality that you can see just by opening your eyes so and obvious. observing okay. the behavior and the traditions and the values okay. and the customs of the culture that you are a fucking part of. Okay. The reason why it's called feminism while advocating for gender equality is because females are the gender that are the underprivileged, underserved gender. No, that, that's nonsense. That's I mean, maybe in some parts of the world, but in America I would not say that's true. Yeah, I mean, like... I mean, I've asked feminists several times, in America, what what gender inequality still exists between men and women that are um, institutional in nature? I've never you heard never a good answer to that question. You never hear any of these feminists actually contributing anything to feminism in other countries. Like you said, there's women that get raped. There's women that get stoned to death. There's women that are really genital mutilation, serious human rights violations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Female infanticide. About that shit. 
No, no video, video games. games. Oh. Yeah, Men exactly. take up too much space on the bus. Uh, <laughs> stop man spreading, TJ. Stop man spreading. Stop pole hogging too. Yeah, that's pole hogging. Right. That's another one. You're saying now. That well, you do pole hog, TJ. You have to admit. hog the pole. You really do a lot. No, I TJ. really. Come I on. love hogging the pole. You do. Man. You know. So. <laughs> You attain gender equality by advocating for the rights of the underprivileged gender. Do you see how this works? It's the no, same reason why no. we call it the gay rights everyone, movement. Everyone should have equal rights. It's not rights. because we think gay people deserve to be better than straight people. It's because no. gay people are... Gay people are already better than straight people. They're better at designing clothes, fucking designing sets, interior decoration. There's plenty of stuff gay people are just better at. Come on. Are in the inferior position and we want to raise them up to equality that's how you attain equality the reason why this okay but you haven't you haven't demonstrated that women are unequal in American society in any way or in Western society in general like what is the evidence that there is any inequality that needs to be addressed there at this point I can't think of anything as, an, as long as an American feminist has their rights they don't really give a fuck about the rights of women in other countries. You know what I mean? It's just like everybody else. Until it affects them, they don't care. You know? It seems to be to be an like a mainstream commercial movement. Like I, I see these feminist lists out there, and it's like a bunch of links to feminist products, and it's like, oh, okay. I see that what this is fast becoming. Get your feminist T-shirt. No, don't. Smash the Patreon. Get a drunken peasant's T-shirt instead, for fuck's sake. Exactly. Sign on the bus on the metro says, "Don't masturbate to female passengers." So it's okay to masturbate to male passengers still. Like, if I see a dude I like, it's okay. For that's me what's to... not happening, TJ. Well, I know, but that's that's okay, right? Quit mansplaining, TJ. No, no, I'm I'm fine with what the sign says. Right. I'm just I'm just clarifying You're the rules. You're mansplaining. You know? You're mansplaining. I know I can't masturbate to female You're passengers. You're mansplaining. I know. You're a misogynist. I'm, I respect that. Shut up, misogynist. Shh. Sometimes white people just need to get out of the way. Fuck you. I just respect get out of the way. I just want to know. Just get out of the way. Is or is it not? No one cares. Okay, to masturbate to the male passengers on that train. White male privilege, TJ. And what if there is a trans male passenger? Do I go, do I listen to the sign in terms of their biological sex? or their, do so, the, I so the first thing you notice is someone's gender? transsexual, TJ. I'm just asking questions The first thing you notice. Rules, man. You're very clearly biased against you know, them. It's, it's kind you're of a misogynist. <laughs> you're a transphobe. You're everything bad, TJ. You're, 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 you're what's wrong with America, TJ. Sure. Is because female passengers are the ones who are made to feel unsafe yes. by that behavior. Nothing now, bad not ever happens to male that passengers. A female on the passenger bus. on a metro has never just openly started masturbating to a man. I don't want to say for sure that that's never happened, but I would but guess only if it was you. that the the ratio is pretty lopsided. It's well, dicks are more convenient though in terms of just whipping it out and jerking off. I mean. You know, that's a lot easier. Well, the thing here, too, is that society will always admonish men. Oh, men, stop doing this. Men, stop doing Oh, men are bad. And you, the list just goes on and on. You, you never see, like, them saying, women, stop taking up so much time in the bathroom and congregating around these areas. It's like anything that women do that's annoying in society, by society's view is like, no, let's never talk about that. We can never criticize that. You know, these feminists basically just want to control everything we do and censor everything, an idea, and opinion. You have to have this, you have to buy into this narrative. Scotty obviously wants to be able to masturbate in the bus. Yes, I do. Passengers. And what's wrong with that? Damn, you got some nice titties. I'm just going to whip out my dick and s spray some jizz well, you know around what? real quick. I should have that right as an American, TJ. You know, it's better I do this than rape you, right? Hey, if I was you in know, heaven, I could do it. That's what I would be doing as a hey, man. Hey, I'm going to do that in heaven. 2036, yeah. TJ, you just wait. Mostly yeah, men anybody doing that to mostly man. women. That is the nature of the problem that the sign is meant to address. That's why it fucking says respect our women passengers, not okay, respect so all passengers. Here's the problem right. with that, though. I mean, like, if it said, I mean, first of all, no one who's going to do any of this stuff is going to give a flying fuck about the stupid sign. The sign has no power to control anybody that doesn't want to be controlled by it. But let's say the sign said. All passengers refrain from doing these activities towards each other. What is lost in that? Because it doesn't specifically say don't yes. do it to women, You're not it loses some of its power. Problem. I mean, the sign has no power in the first place, but surely there's nothing wrong with it encompassing more people, right? No. The women are the oppressed group, TJ. 
Hmm, yeah, okay. You just don't you just don't get it. You just don't get it. You don't understand. I it. guess I just don't. I'm afraid you don't. I'm a stupid uh, fuck like that. You're a misogynist. I mean, it's hard for misogynists to put themselves in a woman's shoes. Yeah. Hey, have you got it? It's not an accusation that you personally are a rapist. So drop this hypersensitive defensive. No, that's, that, that's what wow. you guys just call the rape culture. You just call it. We live. We say we live in a rape culture, but no, we're not accusing anyone of being a potential rapist. We're accusing society of the being people, complicit in the act. The people who feel uh, the people who feel the need to put up a sign that says "Don't try to have a conversation with women." They're saying that the people who are offended by that sign are hypersensitive. Don't ask for a cup of coffee. Don't Never ask her know. where she's from. As if Don't she's even from look somewhere. at women. Just look at the ground. That's it. And if have no see, opinion. If you see a woman, you hang your head in submission to her at all times. Roll over and show your belly. The photons that bounce off her body, they are not allowed to enter your eyes. Because that's wrong. You're damn right. This and either grow up and learn to accept the fact that we live in a society where there is gender inequality and where it it's not a fact, you're a lying piece of shit. Disadvantages women, no, and that that no. is a problem that needs to be addressed or no. toddle off to the hey, men's TJ. rights movement subreddits. Hey, no, and bitch not gonna and do that either. Who, who lives longer, men or, men or are, women? Uh, huh. Who obtains a higher education in greater numbers every year? What's, who is that? What's that? Um, Post-secondary education, uh, like college degrees, university degrees? Oh. Men, right? No. no. Oh, no. You, you know, if you look at all the statistics, it's, it just seems women are doing better and better in Western society, and it seems like men are doing worse and worse, but... There's a serious problem with that. Like women just need. See, we have, we had a problem. We had a patri we had a patriarchy, and now we need a matriarchy. We've seen a society run entirely by women to correct the problem we we had in the past. Okay. So men just need to basically become second class citizens to feminists. I'll let women have all of these uh, rights they want, but they have to dress as dominatrices and like carry around whips and stuff. <laughs> then they can. All their other stuff is granted, but they have to do at least that. You know are upset at the unfair divorce settlement or because they never get to see their kids or because the girl they like won't go out with them. There's a place for you. It's called the men's rights movement. So m men who are upset because a child custody case didn't go their way and they can't see their kids are just pieces of shit. Whiners. Who don't even deserve any right to their kids because a court has declared that why women did, are just inherently well, better at taking care why of Why did the court rule that way then, TJ? I mean, I, I just can't believe that he's going to sit there and act like that's just some ridiculous concern. Like, yeah, fathers want to fucking spend time with their kids that they care about. What pieces of fucking so they can uh, brainwash misogynist them. shit, you know? They, well, they want it, the male children especially want to brainwash them and make them misogynist what from a young What a pathetic, age. castrated piece of shit. You're, Evan, don't let him in heaven, all right? Just keep him in hell. He has to go to hell. <laughs> hell for you! Can I be the yeah. new devil? Can I be the devil? You know, I mean... Yeah, you can help, you can help me. Can I torture what? the damned souls in hell? Because I want to give my personal attention to this motherfucker. And yeah, just, definitely. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I think I'm just going to have... Uh, I'm going to give him a set of balls, since he obviously doesn't have one. And then I'm going to have Rosie O'Donnell just tap dance on them for all eternity. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do, so... Uh, uh, yeah, Steve Shives... He's such a piece of shit. I can't believe he honestly just said that. It's a little bubble of misogyny on the internet Shut that up. you can go and be with your own. And when you ask them a question like, why does it say respect our women passengers instead of respect all passengers? Oh, you will have such a warm, welcoming response. Because I love how anyone who criticizes feminism <laughs> automatically is an MRA. You are with us or you are against us. We are not MRAs. I don't give a fuck yes, about you are. MRAs. Yes, you are. Yeah, you're right. Only I a am. Sith deals in absolutes, man. Yeah, exactly yep. right, Evan. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. You don't have to fucking live in this <coughs> false dichotomy where either you're a feminist or you're some men's rights asshole. Because both of them are assholes, but honestly, the feminists are much bigger assholes than the MRAs are. And taken way more seriously. Yeah. They will not mistreat you and abuse you verbally the way I have just done. They will love you and support you for everything that you are. A, a deeply oppressed holder of a penis space. whose life has been ruined by these mean, nasty women. So I would suggest...
I don't think men are oppressed. I don't think women are oppressed. I think everything's equal, and I think that both of these gender-based movements are equally misguided. There's where I stand, motherfucker. Fuck you, bitch. All right, here's the next video. Uh. Oh shit, it's Cockzilla. Get my autistic screeching ready. Everybody, it is you had to ask the show where I answer your questions. Laura Smith, dear Steve, I'm a feminist female and now I feel conflicted. Last week, my <coughs> boyfriend and I went out and this junkie girl was trying to take my purse. My boyfriend stepped in trying to get her off me and then she started attacking my boyfriend with punches and kicks. My boyfriend was trying the best he could not to lay hands on her and to just hold her. People were watching and laughing while the junkie girl was hitting my boyfriend, but then when my boyfriend decided to retaliate and hit her back, a bunch of guys came rushing in and started defending her, yelling at him, you should never ever hit a girl, pussy bitch ass, and things like this. I understand that men are stronger than women, but in this case, the girl was really strong and was trying to harm me and him, and when he retaliated, he only used enough force to defend himself. He didn't go as hard as he could either. This experience has really messed with my emotions and my view on feminism. I'm still a feminist, but something about this experience is making me question some things. I could use your thoughts or advice. Thank you, and I love your channel. Okay, so I pretty much don't believe anyone actually wrote to Steve, because one, how did they send him the message, and two, huh? this name seemed Laura Smith, and, and, and the ending, thank you, and I love your channel. Does anyone actually really like that's, Steve's that's channel? That's like, Laura Smith is like uh, John Doe. Yeah, like, I don't know, man. It's like... The most vanilla, like, white American name. Well, let's hear his answer. I think I'm the people who were, who were the bystanders nice were, were half right and half wrong. I think they were right to be upset uh, at the sight of a man hitting a woman, even though the way you describe it, you know, it's not as if he was being abusive to her. He was defending himself, and maybe he just sort of uh, reached the end of his rope, and he just figured, you know what, the hell with this. Uh, and that's sort of extreme emotional state it still doesn't excuse it it's never okay but it, it's a little more understandable um yeah oh, you're an idiot steve. it's 100 so percent okay so steve if a woman starts attacking you it's not okay to defend yourself that's what that's really what you believe okay i, I so I, I steve i would love for that to happen because we can just get any woman that'll agree to it if steve says it's, it's never it's never right he, i like, mean he's not gonna do right, so uh you. hold on no no i know how to handle this uh women of the world you want a fucking male punching bag that you can just you beat go. up on? Steve Shives. Uh, if you're a woman and you see Steve Shives in the street, go up to him and start beating the shit out of him. He won't fight back, yeah. he's a bitch. Under no circumstances are Because right. under I mean, no circumstances will he hit you back, so go ahead and beat his fucking ass in. I mean, there's a difference between, like, beating the ever-living shit out of a woman that's attacking you. Yeah. And then, like, just, like, you know, dealing a blow that will, like, make her think twice before assaulting you again. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. They're, they're, so, well, it's it's self-defense. Self-defense is I'm going to beat the shit out of you, which is, like, I want you to stop and, and get away from me. Yeah. Like, if some junkie bitch has done it to me, I would do the same thing. I, like, I'd probably be like, go away, go away. But if there's no chance, like, you got to knock someone out, you got to do it. Yeah, and it may not even come to knocking them yeah, out. It yeah. just may be like, "Look, I can hit you really hard. Get the fuck away yeah, from me." Yeah, exactly. But it's not like you're. It's not even a conflict they wanted. This person was trying to uh, assault and rob them. Like, what the fuck are you talking? And as about? far as these, as far as these guys who showed up on the scene, like, don't be hitting no woman. They're idiots. Every one of them is a piece of shit who should be castrated and removed from the gene pool permanently. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. They're useless to the fucking They're probably species. just looking for a reason to get involved. Well, I'm a, yeah. I'm going to white knight for some junky bitch. Maybe she'll give me head behind the dumpster. <laughs> then Fuck if he you. was just being an abusive jerk to a, to a woman. But the bystanders, I think, should have... If they were going to step in when he hit the woman who was attacking him, they should have done more than stand around and laugh when the woman was attacking him. Uh, it no wouldn't shit. have hurt for someone to step in and just sort of get between her and your boyfriend. Yeah, that's what just you kind of do. separate things and settle things down. I think because if I'm walking around and I see a junkie attacking some dude, first inclination I have is like, better get between those two. Oh, she yeah. seems reasonable. Yeah, see, when you see people fight on the street, your first thing is like, how can I insert myself in this clusterfuck? You know, no. I hope I get injured as yeah, well. You're gonna walk <laughs> around that or keep moving. You're not gonna go engage in that.
Suck a dick, Steve. God, your <laughs> advice is terrible. Thankfully, no one actually asked for it, except for Laura Smith. <laughs> that kind of early intervention would have prevented all of what happened next. Sure. Steve, um, I'm one of your seven fans. I don't think that the I instinct advice. to say that men should not hit women is a bad thing. Uh, even though it sounds like the junkie girl, as you call her, was really a handful and was and, and needed to be sort of... Why does he have a fucking pen? Like on the collar of his shirt, I don't know. Whatever, whatever. Is it? Does he plan on writing something during this video? I mean, like, couldn't he set the pen down and then later on when he wants to write, write something? Yeah, why? About, why when he's filming a video does he have a fucking pen on the collar of his shirt? Yeah, like you put. I'm like, okay, if you really, you could be like putting. If you got a fucking pocket on your shirt, I guess you could put it there, or you could just put it in the pocket in your pants, or since you're sitting down, you could just put it on the fucking table in front of you. Yeah, why is it there? It's just uncomfortable. Why would you want a pen there? <laughs> uh, separated, and someone needed to intervene and kind of calm her down and, and diffuse that situation. God and damn even it, man. I, I, I never would have noticed that. Out. Now it's driving yeah. me fucking yeah. insane. I mean, that would... Yeah, Steve, that'd be the ideal outcome. <laughs> In this fantasy world where you live in, where, you know, there's always a group of people willing to break up Look every fight. Look at it just hanging there. God. It's inside of his shirt. Uh, and it's touching his knows, skin and shit. Right along that collarbone yeah. area that makes me just fucking not want to think about anything. <laughs> your boyfriend's Steve, headspace. No. And yes, he's being attacked and you are being attacked and he wants to protect you. And, you know... Uh, he loses his temper, cooler heads do not prevail, and he does something that he's probably sorry that he did. You know, I know even if I felt Why? completely justified in the moment, if I hit a woman, uh, I would feel terrible. You're a fucking if you hit a woman, your hand would break, you pussy bitch. Yeah, uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, I would not feel bad. It doesn't fucking about who matter. it was. Yeah. I, don't care if, I don't care if it was a man or a woman. If like I had to defend myself, like I wouldn't feel later. If, oh, I feel real it bad. It shouldn't I did it. matter when you're being assaulted, whether it's a man or a woman. It should not fucking matter. And if you believe in equality, you should agree with that. Because if someone decides to assault you when you're totally innocent, you're not harming them at all. No. You you have every right to take whatever means necessary. Yeah, to say that a woman has the right to hit you, but you don't have the right to hit her back. You're condoning assault at yeah, and, that point. And aren't you fucking, like, saying that, like, oh, well, females are just a trifle not to be taken seriously as a threat. Isn't that a sexist idea? No, a woman could fuck your shit up. Plenty of guys are domestic abuse violence uh, victims of women. Oh, yeah. There's, you see their fucking pictures. I've seen pictures of, like, guys, like, yeah, I broke up with my girlfriend, and now I got this black eye, and my fucking lip is all fucked. Like, what? So you're going to act like women are just the, the, these fucking defenseless creatures who can't fucking stand up for themselves? Yeah, men are stronger. But if you're being attacked by a woman, that's still a serious situation. No one should feel like they can't retaliate when they're being fucking attacked. You, you, oh, just, I don't even want to, I don't even want to. Even if I felt like, you know, she had provoked me to do it. I just, I just don't think it's something that guys should do. You're an idiot, then. Um, and I, I mean, I don't think that people should hit anyone. I hope a woman beats your ass, and I hope it gets filmed. Yeah, I don't think anyone should I really ever want be to violent. See it. Yeah, I want to see a woman just beat the ever-loving shit out of Steve Shives as he fucking sits there refusing to retaliate. And you know what, Steve? I don't believe that for a second. I think if you were put in that situation, you would hit her, and you wouldn't feel the least bit guilty about it. Maybe you would say you were because you're the Mr. Fuck. Oh, it's wrong. What a fucking smug loser. Look at this guy. He just, he's such a, that, that's the thing I hate most about Steve, is what a fucking smug asshole fucking just take this screen cap is like, I'm right again. But, yeah, guys. You know, I don't want to say I'm that right it's okay again, if a woman hits a man or if a man hits another man. I don't think it's ever okay. I think Good. violence should be avoided at all costs. Okay, right, fine. right, right. Yeah, so if someone's go. being violent towards you and they won't stop, the way to avoid that is to fuck them up so they stop. Yep. <laughs> don't you understand that? You're ending the violence. <clears throat> You're ending the violence by retaliation, a little bit of retaliation, in, in a situation where there's no other choice. Yeah, I mean, like, no one's advocating just uh, wantonly attacking people. But, yeah, if someone's attacking you, and you're trying to reason with them, and they're still attacking you, 
Like, what are you supposed to do? You're just supposed to fucking take it? You're supposed to get your ass beat because, oh my god, it'd be wrong if I actually defended myself against this attack. No, I just need to be the one who gets damaged because uh, this person's existence is more important than mine, even though they're just wantonly attacking me right now. Yeah. Bullshit. You got it. Go fuck yourself, Steve. Go fuck yourself. Uh, but particularly, given all of the cultural baggage, plus the size and strength differential that is typical for men and women, huh. it's not... Not your case, Steve. I mean, just look in the mirror, dude. Not in every situation, but guys are usually bigger and stronger than, than women. Uh, given those factors, I just think it's, it's never a good idea. It's never a good idea for a... It might, I mean, not be, it might not be a good idea, Steve, but sometimes you have to make the best decision you can in a bad situation. You can't, not, not, not everything is ideal where it's like we can run away or get away. Yeah, obviously it's preferable to not even be in a conflict, to walk away, to get away, run away, whatever you have to do, sure. But at the same time, that's not always con convenient or possible. Like if someone is grabbing something of yours... And you're like, stop. I mean, what are you going to do, Steve? You're just going to let someone take your phone or do whatever? I hope Ronda Rousey puts Steve Shives in an arm bar or something, and Steve Shives just doesn't hit her back. So lets her break his arm. <laughs> I mean, awesome. like. <laughs> I want that to happen now. <laughs> Look, Steve, there's a lot of cultural baggage. Let her break your arm, dude. Yeah. Just there you go. Yeah, don't hit her. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I mean, like, where does he draw the line? What if it is a woman with, like, giant, like, like almost like a china size woman? Okay, what about someone with a knife? What about someone with a weapon? Yep. Nope. Just Steve's just going to be stabbed to death or shot to death because he can't do it. I'm, there's too much cultural baggage. I'm, I'm, you've been so oppressed. Oh, you're killing me? Oh, okay. We were oppressed, so it's okay. I'm dead. Man to hit a woman. Um, but... The people who were standing around who thought it was funny when the woman was going off on your boyfriend. If they were that concerned about it, I think they should have stepped in before it got to that point. Um, when it was clear that your boyfriend was not able to Why handle it. Why does someone want to get know, involved in this? Sort of yeah, and also they were clowns and they're going by your philosophy that no one should ever hit a woman. So they're going to sit there and be like the enforcers over this situation where innocent people are being attacked and they can't defend themselves because of retarded goons that follow your retarded mindset. Oh, and not to mention, does anyone think that this pussy Steve Shives would even step in if he saw some shit like this going down? This guy would be the last one that he'd be fucking walking out of the door. Like, it wasn't a restaurant or a fucking retail store. He'd be walking out of the, like, oh, we gotta, we gotta go. We gotta go. I don't blame him. Who the fuck wants to get involved? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But that's bullshit. the truth about Steve. Steve is not the kind of guy where he's going to be like, what's going on here? Well, I'm going to intervene. Don't attack this woman. What's going on? I'm Steve. Stay. Stay back. No. This white knighting faggot bullshit has got to stop. Doing his best to fend her off and it wasn't working. I think somebody else should have stepped in and, and, and helped him out a little bit to help. You can't always count on someone stepping in. I mean, sometimes you have to take matters into your own hands. You can't just stand there and let someone attack you and hope that someone's going to step in. Sometimes the world doesn't work that way. Sometimes, exactly. sometimes violence is, you know, I mean, like, no one should fucking look at violence as a first resort in any situation, obviously, but... If you're being attacked, you have absolutely the right to defend yourself using force. Yeah, that's only, it's only practical and logical. Restrain her without it leading to that kind of violence. Oh! 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 I thought that video was funny when I saw that, because that woman was punching that dude and he slapped the fuck out of her. <coughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, sometimes bitches gotta get punched. <coughs> Hold on, we'll watch know, it again. He was sort of doing his best to fend her off, and it wasn't working. I like I how he cuts. He conveniently cuts out the part where she's punching him, and just shows the part where he slaps her. They all should have stepped in and 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 helped him out a little bit to help restrain her without it leading to that kind of violence. Oh! Oh! Uh, she had punched him multiple times. <laughs> nope. Was, yeah. And then he just gave her a slap. You know what? Let's let's watch that whole video because that is so fucking dishonest, <laughs> right there. Yeah, let's take a look. He he just showed. <sighs> he shows Ly the, Lion Steve. Yeah, show the retaliation. Don't show what it's retaliating against. Let's take a look at this. It says World Star on it, so 
Yeah, but they they didn't originally take the video. Yeah, but if they if they've licensed it, yeah, they might. We, we might we might get a fucking flag. So I would say, what maybe we'll put it in the description or something. Just go look up a uh, man slaps the hell out of woman in subway. It's it's there. You can go watch it and see the full context. Yeah. All right, here's the next video. What is it? Hey, folks, Steve here. Oh my so, god! A couple of days ago, there was this poem that was shared around a lot on the internet and at first a lot of us thought because in the initial reports it was said that it was an official inaugural poem for Trump's inauguration turned out later that wasn't true it was just a poem that some dude wrote because he really really loves Donald Trump but whether it's an official poem or not it's the most like chilling propaganda hagiographic horseshit you've ever read in your life it paints Trump as so, Steve, let's do this straight. You don't engage in the exact same be uh, behavior. Your actions are totally contrary to that. Every time that we even discuss these issues, there's so many preconditions put on people like you about how the discussion t should take place, where it should take place, who you'll even have it with. So talking about propaganda, you're, like, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, your side is, the, is pretty much the master of propaganda. As far because every little thing can be construed in some way. Oh, you, oh Hollywood doesn't cast enough did, black people. Did you? It's see, racism. Did you see Steve Shives on Twitter the other day? Obviously, that you didn't because you're probably blocked. I don't know if you are actually. I have no idea. But um, he, he so. actually said on Twitter, like, people need to listen to each other and stop just you know closing themselves off in their little echo chambers and stuff. I don't know if he, he didn't use the exact term echo chamber, but that's what it boiled down to. Like, we need to all listen to each other and stop, you know, plugging our ears and going, la, la, la. It's like, meanwhile, you're the fucking most block-happy person on the internet. You actually just automatically block people who follow people you don't like. It's totally stupid. No, he wants to listen. Titan coming down from a tower, this conquering hero who is riding to the rescue of America to depose the tyrant Obama. And it's it's... It's just that, right? And I'm sorry. You know, it's really inappropriate for Donald Trump because Donald Trump is not a hero. He may, he may in fact really be a would-be tyrant himself. Far from rescuing the people from a tyrant, that's that's rather self-serving. Um, and I thought there must be a much better poem, and not only that, a more appropriate. Oh, okay. Form what is appropriate? We can, can we? Can we? we has anybody ever huh? asked Steve? What appropriate means? I mean, appropriate means anything he approves yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. Steve Shives. Seven, he decides. Bong. Yeah. The bong. Bong, 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 bong. Yeah, I just, I, I hate, listen how much he uses it. Appropriate, appropriate. What, who gets to decide what's appropriate? Uh, Steve, Mac and me does, Steve dude. Steve and his ilk. To use poetry to mark the occasion of the Trump inauguration. So I decided that it would be, instead of, uh, an epic poem written about Donald Trump and his inauguration. It would be much more appropriate if we turned to a more humbler poetic form. One of my humbler? personal favorites. And that more is, humbler. That is, more uh, of course, humbler. The limerick. I limericks. love me a good limerick. And the thing about limericks that make them especially appropriate. Oh, never mind. He's doing that Minnesota Trump folksy is, well, number thing. Number one, they're they're traditionally clever, which that doesn't work. Trump is is uh, never within a million miles of clever. Yeah, Steve, because you know what's clever, right? You're so clever with your YouTube marketing. You're so clever with all of your videos that get millions of views. You're so clever. Oh, well, comparing you and Trump and with clever, I would say Trump's a lot more clever than you, buddy. Look where he's at and look where you are. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Trump's... You might not fucking find Trump clever on some, like, Oscar Wilde level, but he's got some fucking wiliness in him. He's president. You know, whether you like Trump or not is... That's, that's not really a point anyone can dispute at this point. If they want to, they're stupid. But they're also traditionally vulgar. And boy, does that apply to Donald Trump. He's got to be one of the most <laughs> vulgar people I have ever <laughs> really? known Who of cares? in existence. <laughs> no. in God, if, in all what? See, that's, that's totally related to appropriate. So, with your kind indulgence. My preamble has been vulgar. This is vulgar. What this is appropriate. This is appropriate. This is, this is, is vulgar. This is inappropriate. I'll, I'll talk about this one. When I was <laughs> grown up, okay, Kay. vulgar had a meaning. Vulgar was somebody that was like openly sexually explicit. Yeah, like like, like Andrew Dice Clay like, or my something like that. Wet, my pussy's wet, my cocky balls, my dick, merry merry, quite contrary. Yeah, say that's that pussy vulgar. is so damn hairy. Oh, that was vulgar. <laughs>
<laughs> Donald Trump <coughs> has said some bad words. Does that make him a vulgarian? And, it, and a lot of it was in private when he didn't know he was being recorded. <laughs> so, like, vulgarity is deliberate, I would say. I mean, I would say that Donald Trump has been vulgar, but is he just vulgar in and of himself? No, no. And, and he's done it in appropriate places, like on the Howard Stern show. You know, he talked about, like, things some people would but consider But even there, vulgar. it was reserved because he's a right. businessman. He was like, yeah, no broads. Yeah, I like dames or whatever. The stems on that girl. Great tits, great ass, whatever. That makes you vulgar now? Are you a dude? <laughs> no, he's not. I want to present to you a poem, okay. a series of limericks. Series uh, of limericks. Donald limericks Trump. are often vulgar, by the way. So be- watch a- out, everybody. These are vulgar. Donald, a man in a tower who bullshat his way into power. Shat- vulgar. Craves admiration, but makes most of the nation feel filthy and needing a shower. Inappropriate. That's, that limerick sucked. Yeah. Thing Formal. is, our Donald's a racist. I've got one. I'll try quite probably a rapist, a liar. What? You rhymed racist and rapist? That doesn't... I mean, that <coughs> doesn't really work. They just don't so, sound... How do you know he's a rapist? I mean, like... Also, most likely, a rapist. Well, Benny he made those comments that he grabs him by the pussy. Grab him he, by the... I don't well, even wait. I grab him by the pussy. A fraud, an ignorant clod, whose morals are simply the basest. He's bl- Bluck. Yeah. Yeah, so racist, o- o for rapist, two. basest. O for two, Steve. That sucked. The rhyme Gross. scheme sucks. I know you suck. You know what? I, I see why he fucking preempted this by like, uh, these aren't going to be clever, but that's intentional because Donald Trump's not clever. Okay, that's why they're not clever. It's not because of your fucking limitations. Let's Fox just blacks breathe. from renting his houses, abused, dissed, and bullied his spouses, brought bigots to beat. You're not, this is not, you're not using the right fucking rhythm scheme for this shit. Can I do a limerick real yes, quick? Yes, do a proper limerick. Huh. I'll do one. There once was a man from Nantucket whose dick was so long he could suck it. And when the occasion came round, he'd bend it right down and wrap it around and fuck it. Oh, I had another one. And he said with a, a grin as he wiped off his chin, if my ear was a cunt, I would fuck it. There it is. That's there another one I've heard. <laughs> That's and, how it and goes. And often a vulgar, too. So your use of this, sir, a traditionally vulgar medium to describe vulgarity... I find vulgar. The rhyme schemes are off. Each heads gained platforms for skinheads. Uh, there's something off no, of Steve you, in general, dude. Why see, you a heads with heads? A limerick is about syllable usage. Okay, yeah, you you're can't using just the wrong sh- amount of fucking you syllables. You can't just shoehorn a word in because you want to make a cute little wry joke. You got to be clever to make a limerick, retard. Is it him about Steve strike who was clever? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, there you go. Unartful up the West Wing with louses. Truly he a wasn't rude. a popular pick, though the SVR finds him quite This man slick. alloweth a winch to it tell him what to do. might sound contradictory, but a tainted half-victory <laughs> seems <laughs> plenty for this preening Thine dick. face is not worth sunburning, right. Steve, you I, sallow punchback toad. I want to see... Ah, he's a toad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's a toad. <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Don't forget, as his presidency passes and he fosters and feeds on the fears of the masses, he campaigned on race. You don't, you don't have to do that fucking, what is it called, alliteration in limericks. Fosters and feeds and fo- That's more like uh, the night before Christmas or some shit. I want to see some people write up some, uh, some Steve Shives Yeah, limericks. limericks. Yeah, that would be cool. I want to see cool. Steve Shives limericks. Tag me too, because I'd yeah. love to see it. Tag, tag drunken. If peasants. you can fit it in a tweet, tweet it to me. Tag, tag if me. Not, tag just, me. You know, yeah, tag Paul. Tag me. Tag I want to see it. Oh shit, dude! Look at well, this. Well, they're definitely they're definitely like I have not enough room to write a limerick if they're tagging dude, that many if people. If Steve ever made this face at his wife, she would claw his fucking eyes out of his head. Yeah. Oh, she beats his ass down when he, looks, when he acts like this. Dude, what are you talking Cheat about? In a cheapskate, he'll never assimilate what makes America great. Again, let me restate. Resist this is not this a limerick. Elect- Does that sound like a limerick this to you at limerick. all? This is not. Steve, what the fuck are you doing? Today, you couldn't, you couldn't write a limerick. And let's use all our weight to frustrate this low-rate magnate with no mandate. Let's remind him how... Okay, this, is, this isn't even trying to be a limerick at this point. This is like something else. ...how vital the voting class is and throw Trump and his troop the fuck out on their asses. Yeah. I got one. I got one. What? I got one. I got one. Before you take a bow, Steve, hold on. I'm going to let you finish, but... uh. There once was a man named Steve Shives. So nervous, he broke out in hives. He laid in his bed, realized that he's wed, 
and gave up the rest of his lives. <laughs> Already better. I mean, that's, that's off the top of Paul's yeah, Paul, dome that's better. Paul off the top of his fucking head is better than you, Steve. And you did, did take a bow? Dude, I wish I had a fucking tomato to throw at your fucking face right now. What'd you think? Did you like it? No. no. Terrible. Boo! Boo, sir! I did not like it. I came for limericks, Steve. And you gave me some stupid anti-Trump slam some poem. Some half-baked poetry, dude. Ugh. Please don't resist his edicts. Trump is a dick. He will come quick for your paycheck. Shut up. That's not a limerick. <clears throat> you disgraceful man. That's not a limerick. Go home you to thou henpecking wife, thou disgraceful milk faced loon. Be gone from my face. I'm done with thee. Rapscallion, I call you. Dude, every time a rogue. He, every time he talks, Paul, it's just a lot of driggle and draggle. Hinpecked little man alloweth his wife to hold the purse strings. <laughs> <laughs> alloweth his wife what a name. piggledy piggledy to decide what, what he watcheth, what wench he enjoyeth, is. what wench he sleepeth with. Oh no, Paul, he is not the man in the relationship, he I, is the wench. I, I, I hate to say this, but truly a cuckold. <laughs> A cuckold of the highest order. If it was but anything to cuck! <laughs> this is true. Because how does one cuck a puddle of ooze? <laughs> By showing it a puddle of ooze far grander and filled with algae. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy the content on this channel, then if you haven't already, please subscribe and become a Patreon individual for the original Drunken Peasants Podcast channel situation. here to record a video about you know, the nice you're a faggot so wow nice. way to dial down the <laughs> intellectualism to right go for a walk because it's been so long since i was out here in or outside at all so i took a hike <laughs> and it's the first time that i've taken a hike here for quite a while and i, I know the trails around here pretty good so i'm not in really any danger but then again i have been watching a lot oh of we're so worried about you like, being in danger steve yeah it would suck it's if something great happened <laughs> I will say this, and I just want to be fair to Steve. He looks better in the outdoor light. He does. Light. He does. No, he no, better. he looks better. Period. There's his really? face is filling in. Was he sick and just didn't want to tell anyone? Like maybe he dumped his wife and he hasn't told anybody yet. Well, uh, I don't I know. Doubt that. I, I, I maybe don't know. Maybe he shed like, the vampire. I, I will say though, like yeah, dude, let's go to Reason Rally, man. There's gonna be like a big party there. Oh, what? No, it's just like Steve Shives sitting in a lawn chair. <laughs> He's sad. Saddle no. Steve Shives. I, I know that there are a lot of stories on Unsolved Mysteries that begin just this way. He was last seen hiking alone into the Steve, woods. Steve, we can only hope. We can only hope. He's seen since. So just in case, you know, I disappeared and this is recovered footage. This is the last known footage of me. Oh my uh, God. What is this? <laughs> this is a video about the content. <laughs> this is a stupid joke that Steve thought if was If someone land. found this footage, they'd throw it away. Yeah, I know. What is this boring bullshit? Next! <laughs> Toss it in the fucking Wow, river, somebody dude. littered and threw this boring bullshit dude, out here in this pristine Steve, wilderness. If you were found dead and, like, stabbed <laughs> multiple times, and this fucking video was on you, even the police wouldn't bother watching it. <laughs> oh, it's they'd so get fucking five boring. seconds in and be like, you know what, we don't eh, need to watch this. You know what, I don't care. This guy died, it. blah, 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 blah. Whoever blah, blah. did it, you know, they, they were in the right. Yep. Chief stop. Wild animal got him. Next. Please take note of what I'm wearing. I'm, I'm wearing a Hagerstown Suns ball cap. And a That's what that fucking uh, hat is. And and it's, a, a, it's a minor I'm also wearing a cock team. cage and a butt plug. <laughs> Paul, Paul, <laughs> Paul, I, I like how you said he was, that Steve was found stabbed, and, you, and then you said an animal did it. It's like, what animal stabbed this guy? <laughs> uh, a deer, know. dude. A deer with stabbed his antlers. Deer. deer got a fucking knife and just stabbed yeah. Steve Shives to death. Okay. No, no, he used his antlers. <laughs> oh, it's antlers, it's okay. Sharpened it for years for this yeah. moment. Old black Henley over a gray t-shirt. And All right, Steve, this still isn't funny. Oh, sorry, Steve. Oh, who cares, Steve? Are you going to go through your whole work? What kind of underwear are you wearing? Remember those details. It might help someone. I don't want Underwear? To. I'm wearing some silk We're not going to be able highs. to positively ID you if you don't tell us what, whether it's boxers or briefs. I know the answer, no, no, Steve. No, 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 no. Just, just, okay, look. The I'm description, wearing some crotches All you have to panties. do is describe Steve as the most boring, <laughs> banal uh, YouTuber, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, Steve Shives. We know not exactly who you're talking about. Tidy dude. I've got, like, some, like... Little garter belt. He's just like gear up. To them. And like, 
I've got like crotchless panties and assless chaps and oh my god I've got like trousers on where it's just like corduroys my tight ass corduroys <laughs> Flaunt your <laughs> ass them tight ass corduroys I fell off the trail you know, I saw that big, beautiful, and bouncy and booty. Been wandering around for <laughs> tight ass, and and tight ass, ass revealing corduroys. Sorry, I'm just trying to make Steve Chives better, Nobody's like Tim Black is.